Good morning, ladies and viewers. Um, welcome to the tw day two of the 2023 New South Wales Primary School Sports Association Primary Athletics Championship. We are here at Sydney Olympic Park at Homebush. The weather today is a little bit uh, different to yesterday. I acknowledge the that this event where we are on the lands of the Wongal people and pay respect to elders past and present and extend that respect to Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander people viewing this broadcast. Yesterday I had a very successful day. It was a bit warmer. It was about uh, 30 degrees out here yesterday. Today is overcast, unfortunately, and uh, they're predicting a little bit of inclement weather later through the day. So we'll just see how the athletes perform. We are going to start off with uh, the finals of the 200 metres this morning is our first event. We've got a number of field events going on also. And those people who are interested in field events, if you go to the New South Wales Primary School Sports Association uh, webpage and you look on the School Sport Unit Tube channel, uh, sorry, which is on the main page of the uh, School Sport Unit website, you'll be able to pick w uh, which events you'd like to watch. We have two field event channels and our main channel will be focusing on the track today. If you weren't with us yesterday, um, we gave you the figures like yesterday over the next of these, of these two days. In excess of 2,300 students will compete at this event and there's representing approximately 1,000 schools. The students have come through from the school to the zone to the region to be in this championship. So we have the very best ath primary athletes in New South Wales here today. We look forward to some exciting competition. I think believe we, there were three or four new records established yesterday and we've got some quality, quality competitors out here. In fact, we did have four uh, records sent yesterday in event two, Alexander Miller from Mortlake in the boys' 1,500 metres ran a time of 4.41.67. 4.41.67, which is an incredible run from an 8- to 10-year-old athlete. In the girls' 8 to 10, 200 metres, Putty Harlow from Wilton in Sydney South West and I'll hand you over to Nathan so underway here the first event on the track girls age of 10 200 metre final Haley York on the inside to, to Philo Lara Hooper Havana Gray Lala Bozic Harlow Pate Maya Tanko and Imogen Wynn and Ava Jupp and there's a Sydney South West competitor here Harlow Putty coming through the outside Maya Tanko trying to challenge here but Harlow Putty has just held on there. She got a couple of records yesterday and she's taking the first state title of the morning. 29.09 for Harlow Putty.
100 metres and I think they're just approaching the uh, start line. I'll take you through the, the uh, start list and we've got Rachel Gilmore from Mudgee Western in lane one, Holly Braddock from Milton on the south coast. In lane three, Miranda Yu from St Ives North, Sydney North. In lane four, Alice Burgess and Catherine, CIS. Lane five, Maggie Trainer, Caring Bar, Sydney East. Lane six, Marnie Lawrence, Claremont, CIS. Ellery Barnes, St Phillips, CIS. Lane eight, Valerie Pickup, Manly West, Sydney North. Sandra Deary from Kings Langley, Sydney West. The record here is held by Chelsea Ezekiel from Ballarang Public School on the south coast. It was set in 2017 with a time of 25.96. So we've got a good spread of uh, representatives across, from across the state. So whilst we've got a bit of a moment here while the girls set up their blocks, we do have a point score update, Neil. And looks pretty convincing up, up to the top three. And then it's quite close from fourth through to about seventh position there. Thank you. Um, currently in, in seventh position Introducing the is the Sydney the South West and Hunter one on, Gilmore, West. on uh, 76 points. We have Sydney, Coast, and, uh, Coast, Sydney Coast, West on 80, Coast, Sydney East 106, Coast, CIS 168, McKillop 170, and Sydney North, 218. So, all the athletes are, are running to achieve their personal best, but they're also running to to see if they can be the champion of the region. Yeah, there's champion schools point score as well. Just remember, CIS won the point score last year. Sydney North have had a pretty strong performance, and McKillop had a very... I think they won six or, se six or so in a row and from... Pre-2010, so another strong region here. A few not far, that fourth through to seventh, very, very close. But we know it's early days, Neil, because that final, or well, a lot of the track finals, none of the track finals were held yesterday. So That's right. definitely plenty of time to make up any deficit and for our, those in front to try and pick up even more. Girls 11 years, 200 metre final. So again, you can see that teardrop flag there. The wind is blowing quite mm, considerably. It's picked up. It looks like, at least it looks like it's a... I can't tell, it's swirling a bit. Mm. We're coming in from the south a bit later on in the day. In this race, we've got Valerie Pickup from Sydney North, who's the granddaughter of a very famous Australian rugby league footballer, Tim Pip Pickup. Uh, so, underway here, girls 11 years, 200 metre championship in New South Wales. Gilmore, Braddock, you, Burgess, trainer, Lawrence Barnes, Pickup, Deary on the outside. Marnie Lawrence of CIS, a pretty impressive bend here. She set it up really well into the top of the straight. So close to the battle for second. Maggie Trainer of Carring Bar Public School, Sydney East, on her inside, Alice Burgess of Sydney East, trying to edge ahead, but it's all Marnie Lawrence here. Put your hands together, ladies and gentlemen, for Claremont Public School athlete CIS. She's taken an incredible win, 26.97. In the girls' 11 years, 200-metre championship. The New South Wales here on the track has been impressive sprinting so far, not necessarily the best conditions for our sprinters, but you've got to deal with what is uh, what cards you're dealt with here on the day, and Marnie Lawrence doing exactly that. 26.97. Maggie trained uh, fought hard to ensure second place. So they've all worked very hard. They sure have. We come next to the boys, 11 year olds, 200 metres. Again, this record is held by Alex Jello of Belmore North, who was an incredible athlete. In 2006, he ran 25.29. Um, Introducing our 11 year old and in our final today, we have Lucas Hill from the Oxley College CIS in lane one, Max Israel from St Aidan and Maroubra Junction in lane two, and he's from McKillop. In lane three, Jackson Solomon, Mimosa, Sydney North. Lane four, Isaac Robinson, Balgala North, Sydney North. 
Lane five, Ethan Warner, Sydney North. Lane six, George Lambusas, Ramsgate, Sydney East. Lane seven, Ryan Jose from the Lutheran Public uh, Primary School, CIS. William Bailey, St. Ignatius, CIS. And in lane nine, Nolan Grantham, Sydney East. So we have two of the three medalists last year here. Neil, Ethan Warner starts in lane five. He was second last year with a 27-6-7. William Bailey starts in lane eight. Second from the left, the CIS. He won the bronze last year in the eight to ten years with 28.74. Again, three Sydney North in this field. Three CIS. Two, and two Sydney East and a McKillop in lane two with Max Israel. So they call to their marks here. On form yesterday, George Lambus has had a very strong day. And uh, he's running out of lane six today. And uh, some very dominant wins in his heats. So away from the inside, Hill, Israel, Solomon, Robinson, Warner, Lambusis, Jose Bailey, Grantham here. And very close between the Sydney East and Sydney North competitor, George Lambusis. Ethan Warner, the silver medalist last year, might just have a narrow margin on Lambusis. It's a great race down the front of the straight. Terrific battle for third as well with CIS and City North battling it out here. But the silver medalist last year, he's going to go one bear and take the state title. 26-66. What a great race. A great race. An incredible race. And it's really hard to keep your form when you know you're under that sort of pressure here. But to be able to just lean forward and not tense up when it does reach that pressure point when the fatigue just starts there. You don't get a hell of a lot of fatigue in a 200 compared to a 400 or an 800, but you still get it in the back end and to hold your form because it doesn't take much for you to tighten up and really slow down when you know you've got someone right right on your hammer. And we now move to the girls, 12 to 13, 200 metres final. In lane one, we have Quinn Nyland from St Catherine Singleton. Lane two, Melina Greenup from Centaur on the north coast. Lane three, Olivia Bailey from Lane Calpert and Riverina. Lane four, Mia Wood, Yowie Bay, Sydney East. Lane four, Sophie Halson, Cronulla, Sydney East. Lane six, uh, Isla Scully from Russell Lee, Sydney East. Lane seven, Madison McWilliams, Flinders, South Coast. Lane eight, Sienna Vasellas, Nyes North, Sydney North. And in lane nine, Louisa Meta, C4, Sydney North, the record held by Rachel Juna, who attended Pen Penrith Christian School, the CIS, and was set in 1995 and with a time of 25.50. So the only medalist in this field from the junior event last year is uh, Mia Wood. With a silver of 27.86 seconds. She did last year. Two tenths of a second off the win. So Mia Wood starting here in lane four. And she's had a very impressive uh, string of runs through the heats and the semifinals. In the 100 as well yesterday. Looked very, very strong. And she is the fastest through. We've got a couple in the 26 second range. And we've got uh, Sydney East have got a very strong contingent here in lane four, five, and six, is it? Um, yep. Four, five, and six, the three uh, runners there. Oh, way too early in lane nine. I think there's only been run race where they haven't yeah. jumped the gun yet. Being the finals, they're all very anxious and they're keen to get that extra delay. Well, you know, you've got to be on points. So sometimes a risk it, particularly when you know you've got a chance in the back of their mind. You don't see it at the senior level because they don't get that that false start dispensation. Yep. Three Sydney East. Interesting. They've drawn the middle lanes all together. They've raced each other at this track just two weeks ago at their regional championship. Sydney North as well. A couple of days after. Their two representatives on at the outside. Good to see South Coast represent Madison McWilliams. Fifth last year. Good start. So away here in the senior girls. Nayland, Greenup, Bailey, Wood, Housen, Scully, McWilliams, Vasilla. 
and Meta on the outside. McWilliams got away to a quick start, but at the moment, just getting the edge on her is Sienna Vasella, and also on the inside, Mia Wood. Sophie Housen trying to make up the ground here. It's a good contest at the moment. Mia Wood may be narrowly ahead of Sienna Vasella here. It's going to come right down to who times the tip right, and it's going to be oh. Sydney North, I think. Yeah. I think Sienna Vasella got there very, very narrowly, though, over Mia Wood, who back up from her silver last year. 28, 26, sorry, 3-8 in a terrific run. And confirmation there, Sydney North, Sydney East and South Coast. Madison McWilliams, fifth last year, gets herself on the podium unofficially here in the final of the girls, 12 to 13. 200 metres. We now move to the boys, uh, 200 metres for 12 and 13. And uh, the record was set in 2012, a terrific run of 23.83. And in this event, in lane one, we have Jeremy Boifa from Bird Oldfield, Sydney West. Lane two, Maceo Wagner Jordan, Burke Street, Sydney East. Lane three, KB Ryan, Mupel Bar, Hunter. Lane four, Luca Giametti from Wallara, Sydney East. Lane five, Jake Wood, St. Augustine, Brookvale. Polding. Lane six, John Espinetti from Kingswood South, Sydney West. Lane seven, Cortis. Cortez Monson, Marion Horsman, Park and Killip. In lane 8, Sean Matapulli from Mingleburn, Sydney South West. And in lane 9, Sebastian Duddle from King's School, CIS. On the screen now we have the presentation for the girls, 8 to 10. Uh, 200 metre girls from very first race in the morning. Let's see the time here. See if she broke the record again. Was that exceptional? And PWSA champion for 2023 from Wilton Public School in Sydney South West. Please congratulate Harlow Pate. Well done to Harlow Putty, the champion of New South Wales. Very happy and. Got a bit of a career in front of her at the moment. She's 99 years old and she's taken out that game of girls. So maybe the start of a, a career in athletics. Who knows? She might choose to go another way. I selfishly hope she stays in athletics. I knew you'd be that way, Nathan. <laughs> I'm sure there'll be other sports knocking on the door as well. Boys senior race. 200 metres. Very good, spread, a good, very good spread of uh, competing areas. We've got two from Sydney West, two from uh, Sydney East. Hunter. I don't think we've got any of our medalists here from last year in this field, so we know how much things can change in 12 months. Boys, 12 to 13, 200 metre final. Just about, oh, they're being called up. Again, it's a fine line, isn't it, between trying to activate and keep everything switched on and warm and not yeah. exerting too much energy before the start. You can see an athlete here, he's made the final without a block start. Well, two of them. Yeah. This is pretty good, particularly for the for the boys' 12 years. Boys, senior 200 underway, both on the inside. Wagner, Jordan, Ryan, Gemetti, Wood, Espendina, <coughs> Monzon, Matapuli, and Duddle on the outside. The Sydney West competitor, John Espendina, is moving well, holding on the inside. That's Jake Wood. Wood and Espendina at the moment. Between the two of them, Jake Wood just starts to push ahead, accelerate even more. He's picked it up two or three times. He's taken the gold medal. 25-33 for the polling competitor there. 25-7-6 in the semi. Takes another four tenths off in the final to be the New South Wales Pitbull State champion for the boys 12 to 13, 200 metres. Great job by John Espendina, keeping him honest from Kingswood South the whole way through. And that brings us to our next set of events which will be multi-class events and will be the finals of the girls 8 to 10 800 metre multi-class so that was a, a very quick start to the day we've had the uh, results of the first six events the 200 metres have, have ladies and gentlemen enjoy your attention to the presentation area where we are about to make presentations yeah, incredible. another presentation here so to McKillop and Sydney North, the second race of the day, the junior boys to a final.
know, multi-class competitors. We know how busy a day they had yesterday. And they're up again this morning. This is junior 800 metre multi-class final. They're not far away from the start. Got a couple of athletes with their guides here ready. This is the presentation for the junior boys 200 metres. So Lachlan Chapel with his terrific run. It's himself a gold medal. Very, very strong and composed along the straight. And a clean pair of heels there. So the gold medal back to his school. And for the McKillop region, add to their point score. And they are sitting second at the moment. But I can imagine Sydney North, with the lead they've got at the moment, they've definitely consolidated on that, considering how strong they've been. A lot of those finals, Grant, they had about three three in the final for a lot of those 200 metres. Pretty exceptional from one way, one, one at region. So we've had a good day of uh, competition so far, Nathan. A little colder today, 14 degrees. It is even up here. You know? We shouldn't be complaining up here because the officials have been out there battling all weather conditions, been on their feet, probably done about 20,000 steps a day. So we have nothing to complain about really, but we feel it for the athletes. We empathise for them. Yeah, so hopefully uh, they'll all get through injury-free. Now we're going to move <laughs> on to the finals, I believe, yep. of the 800 metres multi-class. And as we mentioned yesterday, had a record number of Ladies entries in the multi-class. 168 across all the divisions. A fantastic the effort by our multi-class competitors and the people involved at the school the level position, and obviously the, the people involved with their training and transporting to this event. Now we do have medal presentations for the finals or the winners of the 200 metres. We'll just stand by while we watch those. Our silver medalist is George Lambusis. And our gold medalist and PWSA champion for 2023 from Avalon Public School representing Sydney North. Please congratulate Ethan Warner. Well, it might not be ideal conditions for our sprinters, but the 800 metres coming up, they'll definitely be enjoying that. So just running through the program, quickly, Grant, who, what do we got next up? Obviously the 800 metre time finals, but what do we got to look forward to after that? OK, once we finish the 800 metres timed finals for the multi-class athletes, we'll then move into the 800 metres finals for the junior boys and girls, the 11 years girls and boys, and the 12, 13 girls and boys. That'll get us through to around 10 o'clock and then we'll have the relay heats which is one of the really exciting parts of the championships and that'll basically complete our morning's events Nathan. So exciting day this year particularly with the relays. It is and obviously two perpetual trophies up for grabs in the relay events the Nigel Bagley Trophy and Norm and Elizabeth Austin Small Schools uh, trophy. So talk us through that initiative. How long has that been going for and, and um, really good opportunity to give some of the the uh, smaller schools who really do a great job considering the numbers of pupils they've got um, to compete here at the state level, but an opportunity to take some silverware home with them as well. Yeah, those trophies named after two long, st or three long standing uh, New South Wales PWSA officials. Nigel Bagley was the Peter was a convener for many, many years. He was also the regional sports organiser at Western for many years. And his contribution to athletics at PWSA and also Pacific School Games has been recognised with the, the trophy being named in his honour. Norm, Norm and Elizabeth Austin were also very heavily involved in PWSA and their contribution particularly with their Our efforts in the small girl, schools Catherine, were recognised with the small schools school trophy being named CIS, after them as well. So well done to Norm and Elizabeth and uh, obviously Nigel. 
Our silver medalists from Caring Bar Public School representing Sydney East, please congratulate Maggie Trenor. And we acknowledge our gold medalists from Claremont Public School representing CIS. Our champion is Marnie Lawrence. who is not on the dais because she is currently participating in the high jump event. We will make her gold medal presentation later in the day when she's available. Congratulations, girls. Underway here, the girls 8 to 10, 800 metre multi class. We said an incredibly busy program of events yesterday, and a lot of these athletes, because they're so young, they're not specialising in events, so they're doing a lot of them. So, Sienna Compton, the T01 classification, wearing hip number one here. My, Mia James wearing hip number two from Black Hill Hunter region. Hip number three, Violet Fuller, T35 from City North. Number four, Lexi Cornwall, T13 from Marana Heights, Western region. Number five, Lily Rose Willingham. Marta Day, Camden, McKillop region. Number six, Daisy Falconer, also T20 from Newcastle Grammar School, CIS. And hip number eight, Alison Manane from Buninyong Western region. And it's Sienna Compton from Polding. But off to the early lead in this championship race for the junior 800 metre multi class. And long distance for these girls. So Sienna Compton. They're trying to their way. So T01, she's the only one in her classification. T20, it's the intellectual impairment. We've got one, two, three, four of those. T13, Alexi Cornwall, and T35, Violet Fuller. And a strong country representation here. Holding the Northern Catholic Schools region of New South Wales as they go through. Coming through to collect the bell here, the Junior Girls 800 metre multi class Sienna Compton from St. Aloysius Primary School in Polding Region. Clear margin at the moment. Obviously, their times will be compared to the multi class tables for their classification. We've got a lot of T20 in this field. We've got five of them. Next to come through, all the way from Western Region, Lexi Cornwall will collect the bell. She's having a good battle here with Mia James on the T20 classification. And then we go back. To the CIS competitor here. We got Daisy Faulkner, T20 athlete. Sydney North again, Violet Fuller coming through. She's well under her C time split. She keeps this pace going here. So great job all our para athletes next to come through. Alison Manane and also Lily Rose Willingham of Marta Day Canton McKillop. And on the back straight here, it's Sienna Compton. Looking pretty strong, isn't she? She's looking terrific, isn't she? So she's opened up quite a considerable lead, but as Nathan mentioned. The pace getters for the multi class are determined by a complex system of calculations. Yep. So, what all the athletes will be striving to do is do their personal best and see then how that compares with the Australian baseline standard, which is incorporated with the world records. So, what well under all the girls? Doing a great job. Sure, I do an incredible job. Let's put your hands together here, Sienna Compton of Polding. 310 she came into the event with. Looks like she's going to better that here. Be first across the line. She's got a great margin on the field, but she's got to fight for every second she can get here to try and better her time. A couple of nine year olds in this field as well in the junior girls event. Let's show you support for all our para athletes. So we're the way around the track, junior girls 800 meter multi class. And the Western Region competitor putting on the afterburners here. Doing a great job. So Lexi Cornwall of Western Region.
putting on the afterburners here. She saw the finish line along the home straight, and she's just put the foot down. Well done to Lexi Cornwall. T13 classification, crossing the line. Very, very strong last 100 metres in particular. Great battle for third here. A lot of these athletes of the New South Wales PWSA Championships for the very first time, and we love to see the enjoyment on their faces here. Mia James, Black Hill Primary School, Hunter Region, just ahead of Daisy Falconer, CIS from Newcastle Grammar School. Well done, girls. Violet Fuller, the only T35 athlete from Lake Munmora in Sydney, North Region. And then another Western Region competitor coming through the line as well, Alison Manane. So still got a McKillop competitor coming through to the line. She's really driving the arms here. She's gone into full sprint mode. Great to see the energy and the turn of speed here. Lily Rose Willingham at Marta Day Canton, McKillop Region. As we said, great to see some stronger numbers we had up to five heats so lily rose willingham and great to see the girls supporting one another and staying at the finish line beautiful sportsmanship for all our para athletes here in the junior girls 800 meter multi-class so it's a replay there with mia james buckhill hunter just ahead the cis representative some close finishes there we'll be out we'll be close percentages once the numbers are crunched we'll get the mathematicians involved Above my head, the calculations. But it's uh, it's got to be complex to make it fair. And that's been one of the beauties of the multi-class system where all students get the opportunity to race and they race against a whole different range of classifications. So we're moving on now to the boys' 8 to 10, 800 metres multi-class final. In lane one, Kobe Johnson from Carryong, Sydney North. And Kobe is a T1 in lane three, Noah Zabaris from Nengame in Sydney West. And Noah is a T20. In lane four, Maker Matrol from Bert Oldfield. We had a number of students from Bert Oldfield competing today, or yes, and yesterday. And Maker is a T13. And in lane six, in the racing wheelchair, we have Lachlan Reed. T54 from our Lady of the Rosary, Waitara. So I think we're nearly ready to go, Nathan. I think we are, and again, good to see that it's not just one region dominated here. The development of multi-class athletics and school sport in general across all the regions and associations here. So underway in the boys, 8 to 10, multi-class 800 metres. Kobe Johnson, carry on Sydney North, and Sydney East competitor in two, as we said, Noah Zibris, the only T20 classification. Normally it is the most popular in numbers maker match shot. But Oldfield, as you mentioned, we've had a few of them. And Lachlan Reid in the wheelchair, the T54 classification for our wheelchair competitors here as they work their way through. And I hope this man from Sydney West realises that he can run a bit of a shorter distance. He moves his way into lane one. He's looking left and going, what are you doing there? So hopefully he comes across or someone tells him, but it's our Sydney North competitor, Kobe Johnson, who's leading the field through. Yeah, this is all an education process, obviously, Nathan. Yeah. Probably the first time these boys have run at this level. And part of that education process is learning to run the bends in the 800 metres and he's the He's doing a pretty good job considering he's in lane four. The fact he's still somewhere near the front of this group. Make up match up. He's definitely competed a couple of times this, this program as well. But it's a man from Sydney North. Let's have a look at how he tracks in terms of his uh, split here. Well, he's 3.30, so that's a 1.45 split to be on that seed time pace and he's absolutely under that by a long shot 132 I reckon and Barry Picard yes telling him to go into lane one 
And then another official telling him as well. And finally, yes, he's back in. So good to see Baker match shot. Bird Oldfield. I reckon this will be a close battle, Neil. Now that he's back in lane one, could maybe make some ground on Kobe Johnson. Separate classifications, of course. So first cross line, not necessarily first overall. Sydney East competitor there. And Noah Sibiris. So all the competitors now, Nathan, have been moved into the inside lane. Possibly a bit of miscommunication at the start. But they're all now tracking for their... to do a good time. They sure are, and... It's probably holding that gap. He probably went out, probably exerted... A f both of them exerted a bit more energy. We know that he's under three-minute pace. Kobe Johnson, carry on public school representative, Sydney North. And Sydney North, of course... Doing a great job in the overall point score at the moment. A very strong region in most sports. And Sydney West also right up there at the moment. Well, after the first day of competition, fifth in the point score. Just ahead of Hunter and Sydney South West. It was super close between those those regions there. See how wheelchair athlete is making up a bit of ground here. This is Lachlan Reid in the back. He's p really picked up the rating. Which is, he's done a great job. And we'll have to move wide here to go around, so... He might be communicating to the athlete in front, letting him know he is coming. So, we have two athletes here making their way through. Kobe Johnson, he's put on the afterburners, he's surging ahead. And he is absolutely, when just when uh, Maker Matchot got a little bit of a sniff, I think he might be, get a little bit closer. Kobe Johnson has taken the win here. 3.23, so seven seconds better than the seed time we got here on paper. Make a match up, Bert Oldfield, as we said, City West represented here. And he will be well up. 3.52 on paper. He's got really good stuff. The City East athlete in third. And as we said, make up a lot of ground here. Lachlan Reed made up one position. Almost got himself up to the City East athlete as well. So a brilliant last 300 metres from him. He's representing Poldy. Noah Zibris of Nangamay, Sydney West. The lead to get to the finish line there, as we said. We won't see the last of a lot of these athletes. Good slow motion replay. Thank you to the crew at Bar TV, doing a great job helping us in making sure that wherever you are around New South Wales, Australia, maybe even overseas, I wonder if we've got any overseas viewers here. No, if I was teaching at school today, I'd be I'd be putting the live stream on in the classroom. Assuming there's someone from our school, of course. But these athletes, as we said, 2,300 of them doing an absolutely amazing job here. Almost a 1,000 schools. So moving on, Nathan. Now, these are timed finals. So we have the second heat of the boys' 8 to 10, 800 metres multi-class. And in lane one, we have Luca Bolgebasic from St. Gabriel's Castle Hill. In lane two, Jacob Zeng from St. Gabriel's Castle Hill as well. So a bit of a uh, challenge between the two boys from the same school. Sebastian Stace from St. Joseph's East Maitland. And Brandon Polito from St. Lucy's Warunga. Now, Luca is a T20 it's Jacob's a T20. So it's that, a full Catholic field. It is. Uh, Sebastian's a T38 and Brandon is a T20. So good race here for the T20s, three of them in this event. Look, he's gone out quick. Luca Belgebasic, he has gone out real quick. He's really trying to put the sting in the legs of these other athletes out and I think the only one to really try and chase him at the moment the rest are just sort of buying their time at Brandon Polito only 8 years old so I think this is the first 8 year old we've seen so far in the juniors we rarely see an 8 year old don't we in the, in the junior events multi-class all able bodied no, great effort by uh, Brandon so the athletes have now moved, are starting to move towards the inside lane uh, good job there by the officials. We still need to bring one over. Um, I think he's starting to have a look, but possibly not. But he's coming around now, I think. So, great job. As we said, two McKillop, two Polding. McKillop, the southern region of New South Wales. 
um, and polling the northern region of New South Wales. Coming through. So some of these boys have raced each other before, as we said. It was amazing. It was very impressive at Eastern Creek, wasn't it? The, the flood of athletes, because they all merge into the one race, how many we had in the primary and secondary events for the boys and girls multi-class. Again, it's been... Um, the growth in the multi-class events has been absolutely fantastic, and I think that uh, the efforts of Peter Carty, who is the PWSA athlete convener, Peter also works at the sport unit as one of the multi disability officers and along with Anthony Moyes so their work is certainly coming to the fruition at this championship So collecting the bell lap here is Luca Baljabasi of St Gabriel's Castle Hill 2 McKillop and 2 Polding in this field he's well under 4 minute pace here our race leader Jacob Zeng so McKillop holding 1st and 2nd Polding holding 3rd and 4th Brandon Polito that is in 3rd and then just coming through with 400 metres to go here is the St Joseph's East Maitland, representative from Polding. Uh, Sebastian stays in the T38 classification. So numbers one, two and four, all in the T20 classification. Sebastian stays the only one in a different classification here, T38, as they head along the back straight. It's a pretty tough event for an eight-year-old, and um, these boys are toughing it out here. We've had a little bit of a uh, little bit of a fall with our second, third competitor, but he's up and running again, which is great to see. Sure is, and it is a long way as well. We know how hard, even the the best of the best, how hard it is to pace in 800 metres. We know um, that it's sort of that. As a junior, you feel like it's a distance event. For some of these kids, it'll feel like a long-distance race. But as you get older and older, it just becomes that uncomfortable zone between a sprint and aerobic distance event, the lactic acid system, we call it. And uh, obviously training for any of those events in the lactic acid system, 400, 400 hurdles, an absolute painful, painstaking event. And the 800 metres as well, just so hard. If you don't quite pace it right, you're in for a world of hurt. You're in for a world of hurt regardless, but... It's um, not, not the most glamorous one, put it that way. Well, there's a good job here by our first competitor here, uh, Nathan. I believe that might be Jacob. No, it's uh, Luca. All under Luca, he'll come across. So, Luca. Belgian Basic here, the T20 classification taking line on us in the second time final for the junior boys 800 metre multi-class. St Gabriel's Castle Hill, two from the one school in this race. And the second, his schoolmate and his McKillop teammate, Jacob Zeng now, coming towards the line with about 50 metres to run. And he's put a bit of a spurt on as well along the home straight. So well done to the St Gabriel's Castle Hill. Obviously they're doing something right in athletics and the, particularly in the multi-class space. And our two polling competitors also coming through to the line. Brandon Polito and then Sebastian Stace. He picked it up a bit, uh, Sebastian Stace as well. He closed quite quickly that last 200 metres and Brandon Polito is <laughs> just laid down <laughs> on the ground going, what did you make me do that for? Surely there's something easier than this. So well done to those, those four boys. Excellent job, guys. That's how everyone feels after an 800. We just try and hide it sometimes. He didn't hide it. And now it all credit to him. He left it all out on the track, doing their schools and regions proud. Themselves and their families, as you mentioned, a big commitment from the whole family as we look at the replay. He just leans back. He looks around and goes, that'll do me. <laughs> Macca's drive through on the way home. I think he deserves it. Unless he's probably got some more events. He possibly has. Okay, so let's move on now to the girls. 11 to 13 years, 800 metres multi-class. And there is one heat, so this will be a straight-out final. So in lane one, we have Chloe Hunter from Panania. Chloe is a T1. 
In lane two, we have Morgan Jordan from Kensington in Sydney East. Morgan, Margaret, Margaret sorry, is a T13. In lane four, we have Alexia Codling, a T20 from Foster in the Hunter region. Lane five, Molly Spatiri, who is also a T20, and she is from Kincumba in the Sydney North region. Lane six is Mia Hogan, a T13 from St Patrick's Albury, representing MacKillop. In lane seven, we have Isabella Windsor O'Keefe, a T38, representing Maitland Christian School, and she is representing CIS. In lane eight, we have Angela Ayres, a T20 from Nangus Public School in the Riverina, and in lane nine, Jade Reeves, a T37, representing Redhead Public School from the Hunter. So away. away here in Sydney South West Panania Public School Chloe Hunter away very very quickly so is the MacKillop athlete Mia Hogan it is in the blue maroon of MacKillop St Patrick's Albury Primary School representative T13 classification so T13 we've got two in Margaret Jordan and Mia Hogan T38 we've got one we've got a T37 Jade Reeves in that classification in nine, and then one, two, three T20 athletes in this field. Sydney Southwest to McKillop leading this field through the 200 metre mark in about 37 or so seconds. <coughs> Holding very good form here. That's a great move by Mia Hogan around from St. Patrick's, Albury in McKillop region. Great shot of the, the uh, crowd starting to build up here. It's almost relays time, so we know when it comes to relays that Every seat will be full here at the Sydney Olympic Park Athletic Centre. And we'll see if the Sydney South West athlete Chloe Hunter can respond and try and work herself up to the heels of our race leader. There on screen is Molly Spateri of Kingcumber Public School, Sydney North. So as they come to collect the bell here, it is Mia Hogan, T13 athlete from Patrick's Albury, McKillop region, just ahead of Chloe Hunter. We'll see if she can able to try and push up here and surge around the track one more time. So for a lot of these girls and boys in this age group and also the younger age group, many of them haven't run the 800 metres before. So again, this is a terrific learning experience for our athletes. And it's, sometimes it's a hard thing as well. We talk about the regional athletes who've come here to Homebush for the first time. Um... And it's it's something that could be quite daunting for them. So Margaret, as we see Margaret Jordan go through with 400 metres to go, your race leader on screen, she looks super relaxed. Like in terms of form, textbook, textbook the way she's running forward lean, nice relaxed arm carrier, not driving too much, just there for balance at the moment. No doubt she'll pick it up a little bit when she gets to the top of the finishing straight, which she's just about to get to now. And it's Jade Reeves here, redhead Hunter region, just ahead of Hot Molly Spateri, getting a good draft off the back of her. As we see two more athletes here collect the bell, this is Molly Spateri of Sydney North, who's put in a bit of a surge. Jade Reeves, keep the sport coming for her as she goes around the track one more time, and our race winner taking line on us in this event. Mia Hogan, the only time final for the Senior Girls 800 metre multi-class. St. Patrick's Albury represented very, very strong form. Perfect technique as she worked towards the line. Sydney South West, this is Chloe Hunter, T01 athlete from Panania. A public school. And it's on screen there, Margaret Jordan. Coming through 200 to go. Also tracking quite well. Trying to fight the mental demons as well that the 800 provides. You can try and put that voice at the back of your head. It's half the battle sometimes. So let's keep the support coming here. Margaret Jordan, T13 athlete from Kensington Public School, Sydney East. We'll come through third across the line here in the Senior Girls 800 metre multi-class. One of two 11-year-olds in this field.
the screen there, Molly Spiteri, T20. King Cumber, Sydney North, 13-year-old. One of the few 13-year-olds we've got here. And uh, just making her way around the bend here, putting on a bit of a spurt. Here's the Hunter Region competitor. This might be Alexia Codling. It is T20 athlete. So Molly Spiteri, who's about 100 metres behind her, so she's in the same classification here. She works towards the line. See if she can break into a jog here for the last 50 metres. The crowd with a bit of applause. And that's Molly Spiteri there, the Sydney North athlete from King Cumber Public School. 5.52, she's coming to the memory. A good uh, finish here from Alexia Codling from Foster High School, Hunter Region. Lost to public school. My apologies. I'm in high school mode again. Jade Reeves coming through from Redhead Public School. And uh, Molly Spateri here making her way towards the line with 50 metres to go. How yeah, good are these athletes, ladies and gentlemen? Molly Spateri coming through to the line. King Cumber Public School from Sydney North Region. Winning the point score at the moment, Sydney North, and she's contributing to that overall tally, doing a great job. Keep support for all our multi-class athletes who've had a super busy program so far. No doubt we'll continue on day two in New South Wales PWSA Championships. And then Jade Reeves here from Redhead it was. Coming through to the line. Only time final here for the 800 metre multi-class. That's a region in sixth place overall, or equal six with Sydney Southwest. And Jade Reeves, well done, Jade from Redhead Public School in the Hunter region, finishing off the senior girls multi-class 800 metre final. And, um, I think that will be it with the senior boys three-time finals. And we're talking three-time finals in the senior boys. So again, very similar numbers to our what we saw the able-bodied heats in the over the 800 meter distance before. As we see the replay of the brilliant whoever a coach is is doing a great job. Mia Hogan, St. Patrick's Albury. Maybe she's self-coached. Who knows? But very, very. Fluent mover over the 800 metre distance, making it look much easier than what it no doubt felt. Okay, we'll move on now to the boys' 11 to 13 years 800 metres multi class final. We have three heats, as Nathan mentioned, and that's a terrific um, effort for the boys. In lane one, Zane Graham, TF1 from Lizaro, Sydney North. Lane two, Xavier Wilson. A T12 from Shell Cove, South Coast. Lane 4, Archie Whalen. T37 from Schofield, Sydney West. Lane 5, Jeremiah Middleton. A T13 from Covenant Christian School, CIS. Lane 6, Caleb Hislop. A T43 from St. Aloysius Chisholm, Polding. Lane 7, Jamison Sheether. A T60 from Balgala North Public School, Sydney North. Lane 8, Ethan Odell. Odell, a T20 from St Gabriel's Castle Hill, representing McKillop. And in Lane 9, Robert Phillips, T35 from Wirreanda Public School, representing the Hunter region. This is a great battle here. We've got four in a very tightly bunched front pack. Xavier Wilson, who we've seen plenty of, the able-bodied 1500 for his own age group as well as some of our multi-class events. This is a great contest between these four. So they work their way around. This is only the first of three time finals. Remember as we see the CIS athlete. That would be Jeremiah, I think, uh, Nathan. Jeremiah Middleton. Jeremiah Middleton from Covenant Christian School. 
A tightly bunched race the front of this first time final for the Senior Boys 800 metre multi-class. Jeremiah Middleton, the only one to go with him so far is Archie Whalen. Separate classifications, but they'll look to try and keep together and work to try and post the fastest time possible. The next pair to go through is at Jamison Shee. They're ahead of Xavier Wilson here, McKillop athlete. Ethan Odell, and it's back to Zane Graham of Lizaro Sydney North. The polling competitor is an Aloysius athlete. We've seen a couple from that school as well. Caleb Hislop in the T43 classification. And on screen there, Ruben Phillips of Wirreanda, Hunter Region. T35 athlete who's working his way through the 250 metre mark now as our CIS athlete. Jeremiah Middleton, he's got a sub three minutes to his name. I reckon he will destroy that. I reckon he's going to demolish it. Xavier Wilson's coming back. Great finish here. Shaping up to be. I reckon Xavier's going to get close to this CIS. I, I'm calling it early, but there's 30 metres in between them right now. You watch this man fly home. So we've had a couple with 200 metres to go, really pick up the speed here. And it's Jeremiah Middleton's early surge, who's paying dividends for him at the moment. He looks over the right shoulder and sees the man in the yellow flash, Xavier Wilson from Shell Cove, South Coast, trying to come back. Also great effort by Jamison Sheather, who's also finishing like a steam train here. Jeremiah Middleton takes line on his beautiful finish. Jamison Sheather ahead of Xavier Wilson of Shell Cove, and then it's back to Archie Whalen, Schofield's putting themselves in a position to get the best possible outcome here for the multi-class 800 metres. Two-time finals to come. Zane Graham from Lizaro crossing the line here. As we see, the McKillop athlete coming through Ethan Odell of St. Gabriel's Castle Hill and collecting the bell now is Ruben Phillips from Hunter Region. Caleb Hislop is an Aloysius Polding. Leaving it all out on the track as well. Well done, boys. Keep the support going for Ruben as he worked his way around the track. And um, here you go, that's 800 metre running for you. I reckon 800 is the most exciting event on the track. Because of the tactics involved, in a primary school level, at a junior level, at high school and at elite level, 800 metres, there's just something about it. Well, as you said, Nathan, it's the intermediary between the sprint and the start of the long distance. So, mm. lots of tactics. And we've got some great company here as well. Mel Gainsford Taylor just here, just watching one of the previous athletes through this championship before, representing Narromine Public School, three time Olympian. Coaching duties here as we see on the back straight for the final time. Ruben Phillips, the first time final here. No mm -hmm. doubt he'll get a rouse, a uh, very big reception when he comes down the finishing straight. Long journey for this young man, but Hunter Region, as we said, equals six in the point score at the moment. Every single point counts. We know how close it can get. And he got lots of encouragement from the students that are waiting for their events on the eastern side of the track. So, well done to him.
He sees the finish line, 50 metres to go. Let's make some noise here. Ruben Phillips of Wurianda Hunter Region. 7.51 is coming to. It's all about trying to get your personal best. Smile across his face. It's all, it's all about here. It's school sport at the PWSA Championships. Enjoy every moment. He's done the Hunter Region proud. He's done his school proud. Ruben Phillips, ladies and gentlemen. Crossing the line in the first time final for the senior boys. Multi-class 800 metres here at the state championships. Well done. Great to see Xavier Wilson. What a legend he is. He runs in everything. All right, well done to Reuben and a great effort to get to finish that 800 metres. And again, those results are calculated through the multi-class calculation system. So... Anyone, we certainly don't know who can win, but everyone's in with a chance. I'm flat out with basic algebra, Grant. You give me those numbers and you've got no chance. I'm sure you could do it, Nathan. Okay, I can move, talk a lot of rubbish, but that's about it. Moving on to the second heat of our time finals for the boys, 11 to 13 years, 800 metres multi-class. In lane one, Sayed Madi Haderi. From Toongubbie West Public School, representing Sydney West. And Sayed is a T1. In lane two is Hunter Lentil, also a T1. And he's representing Picos Public School from the Sydney East region. In lane three, Hayden Reed, a T20, representing Bedgerabong Public School from Western region. In lane four, William Johnston, a T20 representing St Mary's Ugali, representing McKillop Region. Lane 5, Paul Scott, a T20, representing Bomaderry Public School from the South Coast. In Lane 6, Edward McPherson, also a T20, representing Henty Public School from the Riverina. And in Lane 7, Max Kutsadurkas, from representing Springwood Public school from Sydney West, and Max is a T12. So underway here, and we've got three classifications in this one, as we said. So three in the T20 classification, three, uh, sorry, two T01s, and one in the T12 classification. Sydney West going to the early lead here. And that man is Saeed Mehdi Haderi, Gabby West Public School. Doing a great job in the early stages here. And got getting good company. He's Paul Scott as well, ahead of Max Kutsakis, our T12 competitor. But pretty bunched here, similar to the first one. Well, we saw a pack of four in the first one, and then they started to split out about this point of the race. But now we've got second through, the, through to about seventh or eighth position there. All very congested, only 10 metres between them, but that's our race leader at the front. Holding really good form. And you'll notice, Nathan, that uh, Max has a guide. He's one of our vision impaired students. And that guide is actually a Australian Open 800 metre medalist, Ben Jagger, as well. So good to see the athletes, the current elite athletes, of athletics really giving back to the sport and contributing to the school sport pathway because that is where they came from. The wind is picking up and you can see the crowd starting to gather on the hill. It is nearly relay time here. The relay, well sorry, the 800 finals we've got first and then the relay heats for the 4 by one which are really, really exciting. We love the relays. We love the 800s as well. Back-to-back, -back 800 finals into relays. Does it get much better than that? I don't think it does. No, everyone loves the relays. Not necessarily the four fastest runners, but okay. Well, we've got, got a good battle here. Really good battle at the front of this field, ladies and gentlemen. Turn your attention to the top of the straight. It's a great finish. A man from City West, Saeed Mehdi Hadari, who went to the early lead, had about a 30-metre margin, 
Now being challenged by the man from McKillop here. He might just go to the lead again, Sadie Maderi. No, he's not. It's being responded. The McKillop athlete coming through to the line here. It's doing a brilliant job. I think it is. It's William Johnson, the T20 classification. What a perfectly timed race he just put together just outside three minutes on the clock. Said Maderi. Mehdi Hadari of Toongabi West, public school Cindy West, for a lead to get to the line there. Well done to him. Edward McPherson of Riverina crossing the line in third. Bit of Hayden Reed of Western Region. Coming through there is Max Kudzukas and his guide Ben Jagger. Good to see Ben out on the track. And uh, Hunter Lentil coming through there as well in time final number two for the Senior Boys 800 metre multi class. One to come. So we have the competitors coming onto the track now for the final heat of the boys 11 to 13 years 800 metres multi class. In lane one, we have Quante Glass, a T1 from representing Chatham Public School from the Hunter region. In lane three, Ivan Tonkin, a T20 representing Kareen Special School from Western Region. In lane four, Toby Morgan, a T43 representing Parks East Public School, also from Western. In lane five, Jaden Chinaka, a T20 representing Maitland Christian School from the Combined Independent Schools. In lane six, Massimo Casino, a T37 representing St. Barnet, St. Bernard's Botany, representing the McKillop Association. And in lane seven, we have Liam Damzeski, a T13 from Port Kemble Public School representing South Coast. And a final competitor in lane nine is Jason Grofsky, a T20 representing Middle, Pub Middle Dural Public School from the Sydney North Region. So underway here, the last time final again. So good to see three time finals here for the 800 metre senior boys. The CIS competitor, Jaden Chinaka, getting away quite well. The white singlet just setting a good tempo. Obviously backing his ability quite early here. They'll merge slowly into lane one, try and get themselves in a position where they feel comfortably uncomfortable. 800 metres, as they would know, know all too well when they've done this before. Pretty spread out, a lot more spread out than what we've seen the first two time finals. Try and get out. Man from the south coast, he moves his way to lane one. Um, Realises as well. So CIS athlete, Jaden Chinaka, is leading this field through. And uh, 20, 30 metres, it might be a pack of three starting to form in behind. And if they work quite well, they might be able to reel him in a little bit. looks like we found it. In fact, they will reel him in. It might be a pack of four. So his early start, he's put the hands on the head, trying to get the oxygen in here. And Jaden Grofsky, as soon as he did that, got a sniff. That was a very smart tactical move by the young man. T20 athlete from middle Dural Sydney North. Time that surge well. Coming through to collect the bell lap now, Jaden Grofsky, middle dural Sydney North. He's timed to surge quite well here and he's moved himself 20 metres ahead after being about 20 metres behind our race leader, Liam Demchevsky. Next through the bell, Jaden Chinaka in third, followed by Ivan Tonkin, T20 athlete from Korean Western Region. Then the McKillop athlete, Massimo Casino, with 400 metres to go. With the third time final. Pretty spread out now. It's our Western Region competitor trying to get the oxygen back in. See if he's able to find something. If they know they've only got a minute of running. Good to see. I think the benefit of having all those people on the hill and the field of inaction on the back straight is they're going to get some support probably more than what they would at some other times on the program.
So coming through to collect the bell as well, hip number four, Toby Morgan Parks, East Western Region, and the Hunter athlete there as well, Quante Glass from Chatham in the Hunter Region as well. Coming through, so strong effort as well. We've seen some impressive depth and quality in the multi class as we said 168 across all the events here at the New South Wales PWSA Championships for 2023. And this young man on screen is Ivan Tonkin of Korean Western Regions. We go back to our race leader with 100 metres to go. So the man who took the lead with about 500 to go is leading now with 50 metres to run. Jaden Grofsky, put your hands together. Middle Dural Primary School in the Sydney North Region. A close, close contest for second and third here. But it's Jaden Turovsky, middle dual, taking line honours in the third and final time final. Big burst of finishing speed. They weren't on Massimo Casino. He flew the last lap. And the South Coast athlete there, Liam Damchevsky, Port Kembler, followed by Jaden Shinaka. Shinaka there. We've also got Ivan Tomkin. Two more of the boys smoking their way around with 200 metres to go. Just getting another surge. Toby Morgan, this is. T43 athlete from Parks East. Shout out to anyone from Western Region watching the live stream. Anyone from where you're watching around New South Wales, Australia, or even overseas here. The Hunter Region athlete, Quante Glass. I think that is just moving to his right shoulder in the dark blue of the Hunter Region school. I reckon we'll have another go at it here. What do you reckon? Got him in his sights. And, uh, Who's, your pick? Who's your pick? Ooh, I think the boy from Hunter. Mark. He looks comfortable, oh, doesn't he? He does, yes. Although the boy from Western's making a terrific effort to get him. He is. Sure is. But a great run for these two boys. They've, um, they've provided us with a lot of entertainment, these two, and they've been terrific. So Quante Glass crossing the line there. Well done, Quante. Shave them. Rory School, Hunter Region, followed by Toby Morgan, all the way from Parks East Public School in Western Region. Well done, boys. That rounds out an incredibly strong field in terms of quality and numbers in the boys' senior multi-class 800 metres. Next up, the girls' 8 to 10, 800 final. Introducing the Radio, we have in the, start, in the starting box, we have the girl on the starting area. My apologies. The girls 8 to 10, 800 metres final. The record for this event, 2.22.44, set in 2004 by C. Pearson from Blue Mountains Grammar School, representing the combined independent schools. In lane one, Kelly Simpson from Malabar Public School, representing Sydney East. Lane two, Josephine Han from Manlyvale Public School, representing Sydney North. Main three, Stella Mace from St Joseph's Walgett, representing Polding Association. Main four, Jenna Hayden from St Catherine's Gymere, representing the McKillop Association. Main five, Emma Shirls from Tukley Public School, representing Sydney North. Main six, Annie Jabeski from Nowra, representing CIS. Main seven, Brooklyn McWilliams from Flinders Public School, representing South Coast. Main 8, Maeva Clifford, representing St Paul's Gateshead, representing Polding Association. And in Main 9, Srada Shalis, representing St Anthony's at Girraween, representing McKillop Association. So away in the 800 metre final, 
For the girls' juniors, the Ali Simpson in one, Josephine Hand in two, Stella Mace in three, Jenna Hayden four, Emma Shields in five. A terrific run in the 1500. Annie Zabinski six, Brooklyn McWilliams in seven, Maver Clifford in eight, Shradish Shalis on the outside. Pretty contends as you'd expect as they slowly try and time that angle of run and stay relaxed and own their own space. They've got to be assertive, but they've also got to play fair here. And they're doing that at the moment. No unpredictable moves. They're moving out into the edge of lane two, but it's Shields leading from Sydney North. CIS on the outside. Nanny Zabinski here. The 250-metre mark. Brooklyn McWilliams of Flinders Public School in South Coast. Has moved their way to the outside of this field. So Annie Sabinski in a good position. In third place, tucked in on the inside, but every single one on the rail. Well, as we approach the bell here in the girls' junior 800 metre championship of New South Wales, Emma Shields, terrific run in the 1500, leads this field through. South Coast competitor Brooklyn McWilliams in second, followed by Jenna Hayden. Then it's back to Andy Sabinski and trader Shalish of McKillop. They're all in single file here. Shields just ramps up the tempo from Sydney North, asking the questions of Brooklyn McWilliams again. She was the, wasn't the fastest qualifier coming through. The Tookley Public School athlete from Sydney North showing that she's got really good form and opening up the stride even more and stretching out. It looks to be four in this one with 250 to go unless someone from the other the back end of this field is able to really push up. One of the McKillop athletes is now starting to make a move. A little bit close to Emma Shields with 200 to go in 152. The record is 222.44 seconds. Incredible record by C. Pearson in 2004. It's all Emma Shields at the moment of Tookley Public School, Sydney North. 235 in the prelim. What could she do here in the final? From the 1500, terrific performance. There's some big surges coming in behind as well. Great guts, determination from these girls. Let's get a round of applause for them as they make their way down the finishing straight. This is the state final. The junior girls, 800 metres. And it's Shield leading for the most part of this race. And she will be the champion of New South Wales for the junior girls, 800 metres. 232-53. Followed by Brooklyn McWilliams in second. Back to Jenna Hayden. Have a look at the battle for fourth there. I reckon Josephine Ann might have just edged out. Annie Zabinski, close racing. We love 800 racing. The Junior Girls 800 final did not disappoint here. The New South Wales PWSA Championships. Emma Shields getting the better of it from Tookley Public School, Sydney North. So what a run. What so relaxed. Run. So relaxed and from the front. Okay, moving on now to the boys. 8 to 10 years, 800 metres final. And the competitors are moving into their starting positions. In lane one, we have Jesse Baker from Holy Cross, Helensburg, representing McKillop Association. Lane two, Archie Herb from Sylvania Heights Public School, representing Sydney East. Lane three, Elliot Webster from the Scots College, representing Combined Independent Schools. Lane four, Hunter Posuski from St Peter's, Port Macquarie, representing Polding Association. Lane five, Levi McKenzie from Mawara, representing Sydney South West. Lane 6, Archie Galvin from Winuna Public School, representing South Coast. Lane 7, Reed Martinez from New Wyvern, representing CIS. Lane 8, Kobe Short from Valentine Public School, representing Hunter. And in Lane 9, Xavier Bates from St. Vincent's Christopher's Panania, representing McKillop Association. Here we go. Junior girls in disappoint. Junior boys, 800 final. New South Wales PWSA Championship on the line. 219.84. The record by Josh O'Connell of Abbotsford, Sydney East Region, since 2017. He also had the 1500 record in the same year. We're just about set. Underway here. So who can show the assertion, the aggression early in this 800 metre final? It looks to be Kobe Short. It is of Hunter Region off away pretty well. CIS, that's Reed Martinez who's creeping up on the inside as well. In the white there and the yellow headband and Archie Galvin of South Coast is also pushing up nicely here. K 
couple of athletes who will be looking for some redemption of the 1500 after just finishing off the podium in a super competitive race that was the 200 meter split is quick it's 32 seconds it's Sydney Southwest at the front leading the train of athletes here Levi McKenzie is in a well placed position to try and consolidate on this one the Junior Boys 800 Championship for 2023 at PWSA hasn't the quality been terrific as they move wide and this is where positioning is crucial with 450 metres to go the Junior Boys 800 metre final collecting the bell now Levi McKenzie he's got a few metres Kobe Short is next to challenge moving wide is Archie Herb around the outside of Archie Galvin here in the battle for third at the moment, McKillop and two CIS are not too far off the pace. But it's Sydney Southwest, Levi McKenzie. Quickest through the heats, 223-460 did in the heats. 219 is the record, which is definitely not out of contention here. If he goes through at 145, the 600 metre mark, he is on pace for Josh O'Connell's 2017 PWSA state record. And he's going to be so, so close to that tempo. If he can close here in 34 seconds... He might put that record under threat. There's some big finishes coming. Man from McKillop coming through as well. Very strong performance by him as he we see the battle for those minor placings shaping up. And there's probably five still in contention. Reed Martinez as well coming back into the picture with 100 metres to go. Junior boys 800 final. Keep an eye on the clock. 2.10 at the moment. 2.19. 8.4 is the record. It's going to be a tough ask, but they've done a terrific job. Have a look at the finish. Reed Martinez coming through on the outside as well as Kobe Short. It's a man from Sydney Southwest. Levi McKenzie's the state champion. Reed Martinez in second, followed by Kobe Short. Big finish. Archie Galvin. Xavier Bates, followed by Archie Herb, who hanged tough the, hell, the whole way there. Jesse Baker as well. Across the line. Great stuff in the Junior Boys 800 metre final. Wow. That was a race and a You can half, see it? It's, yeah. it's, it even goes to show how posi it was crucial positioning is with along the back straight. Really, really quality stuff. And you can see the sports trainer here on the side just short going, I reckon there'd be a bit of carnage here. I might have to attend to some of these boys. But they are so fit from not just athletics, from a lot of their different sports. And it's their junior boys. First year for many of them. Levi McKenzie, he's a nine-year-old. He won and he's still got another year in this age group. That's an amazing run, isn't it? Archie Herb's nine as well. Three nine-year-olds in that field. Xavier Bates as well, St. Christopher's Panania. So up against, and as we know, at that age, one year, 12 months, is a big difference in growth and development. Right, we're going to move on now to the girls' 11-year-old 800 metres final. The record for this event, 219.55, set in 2018 by I Ivy Boothroy from Grays Point, representing Sydney East. In lane one, Eleanor Scott from Burra Murrah, Sydney Southwest. Lane two, Lily Dawson, representing Holy Family Kelso from Paulding. Lane three, Talia Hassan from Danebank, representing CIS. Lane four, Ella Plummer from St John Bosco, Engadu representing McKillop. Lane 5, Emily Hallam from Our Lady of the Sacred Heart, Randwick, representing McKillop. In lane 6, Miranda Yu from St Ives North Public School, representing Sydney North. Lane 7, Valerie Pickup from Manly West Public School, representing Sydney North. In lane 8, Charlotte James from Charlestown South Public School, representing the Hunter Region. And in lane 9, Hannah from Neutral Bay Public School representing the Sydney North Association. See so what we're seeing a lot backing up from the sprints here. Showing they can do the 800s as well. There's the 200 and 100. The girls 11 years 800 final underway here. Eleanor Scott in one. Lily Dawson two. Talia Hassan three. Ella Plummer four. Emily Hallam five. Miranda Yu in six. Valerie pick up seven. Charlotte James eight. Hannah Hori, neutral bay on the outside. Pretty close as they work their way through. Might be one of the McKillop girls there just pushing through to the lead position. I reckon it might be Ella Plummer working, working her way through to the front position. It is the 200 metre split. 30, 
30 high, 31 low, really, really quick running. Ivy Boothroy, we know how great an athlete she is and what form. She's had a bit of an injury, but she's come back. It's a form of the recent all schools championships for secondary schools. Now in the 16 years, I believe. So the whole field condensed. And bunched here with Ella Plummer leading them through. Then we go back to Charlotte James, the Hunter Region competitor. Followed by Talia Hassan of Dame Bank. And also there is Valerie Pickup of Manly West. As so they get ready to collect the bell here, Ella Plummer is leading the field but looking comfortable doing so. Charlotte James second, trailing them is Talia Hassan. Back to Valerie Pickup, the first of the Sydney North competitors in that lead group as well. So starting to move wide now and make the challenge with this McKillop competitor, Ella Plummer. St John Bosco Primary School, Catholic Primary School in Engadine is leading and stretching this lead group. Now there's, well there is five, they were condensed. Spread by about 5 metres. Now they're spread by about 15 metres along the back straight for the final time. It's Ella Plummer, 226 in the semi-final. The fastest qualifier through with 200 metres to go. She goes through in about 146. And again, not far off record pace. We know Ivy Boothroyd's record was super strong and she is in great form at the moment. Now 16 years of age, but... Into the top of the straight. Well, the Plumas and John Bosco Primary School in Engadine is driving hard. Not giving up the fight is Charlotte James though here from Charleston South in Hunter. Really starting to dig deep as well. Ella Plummer fighting hard. They're both holding a similar tempo as they work towards the line. But Ella Plummer's going to be the gold medalist. And Charlotte James is second in the battle for third as well. Miranda Yu getting there. Head of Talia Hassan of Dane Bank. What a great finish for third. Valley pick up there as well. Emily Hallam of Our Lady of Sacred Heart. And Hannah Horry there coming through Neutral Bay. Lily Dawson, Eleanor Scott to run out the field here. Great efforts to make the state final. 11 years girls, 800 metre state championship. Well done. And what a terrific finish that was, Nathan. And that'll lead us now into the final of the boys in 11 years. 800 metres. The competitors are moving into their starting positions. Record for this event, 213.20. Set in 2018 by Joshua O'Connell from Trinity Grammar School in Summerhill, representing CIS. In lane one, Archie Doyle from St Joseph's Merriweather, representing Paulding. Lane two, Davin Carty from Roselle Public School, representing Sydney East. Lane three, Lachlan Kidd from the King's School, representing CIS. Lane four, Isaac Zerika from St Joseph the Worker, Auburn, representing McKillop. Lane five, Isaac Robinson, representing Balgala North Public School, representing the Sydney North Association. Lane six, Matthew Faulkner from Bonnet Bay Public School, representing Sydney East. Lane 7, Nate Barrett from Narrowena Public School, representing Sydney North. Lane 8, Billy Herb from Sylvania Heights Public School, representing Sydney East. And in Lane 9, Cameron Beatty, representing Borkham Hills North Public School, representing Sydney West. Well, last year, just looking at the last year's results in... One one hundredth of a second. Billy Herb just ahead of Isaac Robinson. So mm. interesting to see Isaac Robinson as well was in the two hundred metre final. This is the eleven years boys New South Wales PWSA Championship and haven't they got away to a quick start? Sydney North Nate Barrett he is flying as well as Davin Carty. It is fifth last year. Roselle Public School Sydney East has gone away probably to the quickest lead and now it's Herb. We saw his brother just before very gutsy effort, but Billy Herb has absolutely turn the leg speed right on through the 200 metre mark 30 seconds through Josh O'Connell 2018 record of 213-20 they are not afraid of getting after the early tempo very bunched in behind as you'd expect they've made it through the heats already after progressing through school zone and regional competition Billy Herb's got 10 metres here it's a good buffer zone to have hopefully he's feeling all right 218-93 he came through with Davin Carty, fifth last year, just shifted back to third now. Lachlan Kidd coming through. So they collect the bell. It was a great move just before the 200 metre mark. Billy Herb, he's opened up five metres. Now Nate Barrett leads the train through to try and bridge the gap. Cameron Beatty was fourth last year, finds himself third at the moment. Lachlan Kidd in the white. 
of CIS, the Kings School in fourth place now. So they work their way around with 300 metres to go. There's two and then a slight gap. It's still Billy Herb at the front. He won last year by one one hundredth of a second over Isaac Robinson. The Valgola North, who's been busy as well in the 200 metres events. It's still anyone's race. The 2.50 to go. A man from Sydney North here. Pushing through. Nate Barrett of Narrowena, 200 to go. Opens up. The leg speed and the stride length now with 150 to go. It's going to take a mighty effort from some of these boys to get back up here, but it's definitely still anyone's race if they can really put the speed on with 100 to go. Have a look at this sprint. Have a look at this effort, Nate Barrett. Narrowena Public School, Sydney North, is absolutely flying here and will take a terrific victory. In the PWSA state title... He's relieved to get there. Billy Herb in second. Great effort as well. Isaac Robinson with a busy program comes through just ahead of Cameron Beatty. who will be fourth again this year, but will get on the podium, no doubt, with tenacious running like that. 11 years, boys. 800 metre final. Bowser. Well, another, Bowser. Great, another great finish there. and A great call, Nathan. We'll now move on to the girls. 12 to 13 years. 800 metres final. The record for this is 2.13.46. Oh, Jenny Blundell. Said in 2006. There you go. Jenny Blundell, 2016 Rio Olympic finalist. So I don't know what to make up to these girls, but I'm sure they'll have a good shot at it. So in lane one, we have Hannah Widges from Genali East Public School representing Sydney East. In lane two, Lily Molicino from St. Patrick's Colgra, representing McKillop. In lane three, Lana Crawford from Tarara Public School, representing South Coast. Lane four, Drew Cooney from St. Anthony's Picton, representing McKillop. Lane five, Sophie Squires from Queenwood, representing CIS. Lane six, Alessandra McWilliam, also representing Queenwood from CIS. In lane seven, Ava Jacob from Loretto Kirribilli, representing CIS. Lane 8, Gabrielle Moller, from St Brendan's Annandale, representing McKillop. And in Lane 9, Adali Martin, from Glenbrook Public School, representing Sydney West. Can I just say, it feels like we're at the football, the amount of people here. Honestly, you get more here than what you do at a Sharks game these days. Absolutely, the relays are about to start. The 800 finals are here. It's all happening at Sydney Olympic Park. It is. It's a terrific crowd today, Nathan. They're packed in at the uh, southern end of the ground, a bit of a traditional viewing point for a lot of footy games, and the grandstand's absolutely packed as well. It's still a bit an overcast day, but uh, good conditions for running. Certainly is. So off aggressively here, Lily Molicino away quite well, St Patrick's Cogra. The other McKillop athlete, Tudor outside, Drew Cooney as well. 2.24, she went through in one of the quickest, probably the second quickest, I think, through to this final. CIS well represented here as well. As they go through into the 200 metre mark. McKillop athlete leads and it's Drew Cooney with the 200 metre split at about 32 seconds leading through this train of athletes and as expected not much between them. She stretched them out a little bit more than probably what was seen in some of the other 800 metre finals here. But the CIS trio Sits second, third and fourth with Ava Jacob ahead of Alexander McWilliam who was third in this event last year. Sophia Squires sits next on the rail followed by Gabrielle Moller of McKillop Regent. And as they go through, it's a terrific run. As we see Ava Jacob just move through into the lead position. Doing a great job and these three have started to move clear for the rest of this field. Terrific battle between the three of them. It's going to take a mighty effort to come from this chase back back into the picture. So along the back straight for the final time for the girls senior 800 championship of New South Wales here and it is a terrific contest. Ava Jacob moved past the shoulder of Drew Cooney who was the early leader. 200 to go. 145 on the clock. 
Jenny Blundell, the Rio 2016 Olympic finalist, got the state record for this event in 2006 with 213.46. And there's three in contention for this title, I would say, at the moment. 20 metres separating our lead three. It's the CIS athlete. Ava Jacob, Loretto Kirabilli is fighting hard and trying to find something left in the legs. Drew Cooney still working hard as well towards the line here. The final year of primary school for these girls. And Ava Jacob has finished it off the best way possible with a state title. 221-10. Drew Cooney in second. Alessandra McQuillian was third last year. She backs it up with another bronze. Well done to Lily Molicino just off the podium there in fourth place. Great effort. Adelie Martin and well, the rest of the girls come across the line. Terrific stuff by all our 800 finals. We've got one to come and then it's relay time here at the New South Wales PWSA Championships. Moving on now to the boys, 12 years to 13 years, 800 metres final. The competitors are just moving into the starting area. The record for the, this event is 209.87. was set in 2022 by Harry Keats from Oxney College, representing CIS. I think he got the performance of the, the meter, I think I remember saying before performance of the championships last year, the outstanding athletes. So Harry Keats, if you're going to take that record down, you've got to do something pretty special. The pastries are here. Okay, so in lane one we have Owen Lovell Ward representing Laguna Street Public School from Sydney East. Lane two, Ethan Vanderworth from Tamworth Public School representing North West. Lane three, Bo Adams from Bowman Hills Public School, representing Sydney West. Lane four, York McManus from Offord Public School, representing South Coast. Lane five, Jeremy Lenfin from Sydney Grammar School, Edgecliff, representing CIS. Lane six, Philip Botanis from King Park Public School, representing Sydney Southwest. Lane seven, Cristiano Calcaro. From St. Pius X, representing CIS. Main 8, Xavier Zara from Barnia Public School, representing Sydney West. And in Main 9, Lachlan Doherty from St. Madeline's Kenthurst, representing MacKillop Association. So, quick start as expected. When we get to these age groups, they are a little bit more realistic with what temper they can go through, but these boys have got after it quickly. Xavier Zara is the first of them to go through from Barney at Public School, Sydney West Region. As he stretches this field out, making them work hard and try and stay away from the congestion, which is being smart in doing. The wind's picked up. The rain has started to pour down here at Sydney Olympic Park. Next through is a CIS competitor. Cristiano Calcaro in the terrific 1500 performance earlier early in the championships and then Jeremy Lenton has pushed up and then a big move by Philip Batonis here with 400 to go 6298 as they work their way through so 6298 was the bell split 209 is the record Harry Keith's got performance of the championships last year and he's got the record that he set last year CIS boys lead at the front of this field it was a big move by the Sydney South West competitor in Philip Batonis as well just before the bell sits in third place at the moment but at the front of this field is Jeremy Lenthan coming through from Sydney Grammar then starting to try and stretch out Cristiano Cacaro, St. Pius X in CIS after his 1,500 metre mighty performance on day one, the first event of the championships. And have a look at the match race we've got into the straight. For the Senior Boys 800 PWSA State Championship title, the wind's picked up. The rain is pouring down here at Sydney Olympic Park. But this man, Cristiano Cacaro, St. Pius X represented with a state gold medal as he... Pumps the air and goes 208.39. It's a new record. Jeremy Lenthan in second place. Ter terrific battle for third. 209.87. Harry Keats in 2022. 208.39. Put your hands together. An incredible senior boys 800 metre final. Wow. What a record. That was the performance of the championships last year, and he just broke that record by over a second. 
That was a great run. A and great they, run I, re I reckon they both might have got under it too. Yeah. Pretty close. So you see the replay on the board. On the uh, screen, sorry. Incredible. A great and finish uh, from all of the boys. The, the grandstand was full, Neil. But now they're trying to... Fly. There's going to be people in standing zones here, I think, because the rain is starting to fall. Helped down at Sydney Olympic Park. Absolutely pelts. But it's relay time, so yes. it's hard not to be excited. It certainly is relay time. And we're going to have our first of the heat, the girls' 8 to 10-year-old eight to 10 year old 4 by 100 metre relay. The record held here by St Catharines, CIS, uh, with a time of 57.32, and it was set last year. So the athletes are starting to move... Uh, to their starting starting areas, while the, while the officials race to get on their rain jackets and find cover when they can. This morning, Nathan, as uh, I had to go at the front, uh, the line because the relays today, the lines were back right back to the back gate. Uh, so we had a big crowd here yesterday, which I would describe today's crowd as massive. But the relays are always uh, one of the highlights of the New South Wales Primary School Sports Association Championships. And we're going to have the junior girls, junior boys, senior girls, senior boys. Then the Nigel Bagley Trophy, which is one of our small schools relays. And to be in the Nigel Bagley tr uh, Relay, you have to have a school population of between 25 and 54. 20, wow. 25 I didn't, didn't realise it was that small. Wow. Yeah. So 25 and 54. And that's a total school enrolment. How many teachers are at that, those schools? Probably two or, or three. The wow. And then the Norman Elizabeth Austin tra Small Schools Trophy is for schools between a 1 and 25 students. Wow. Norman uh, Norm Austin was a... A life member of the New South Wales PWSA and a stalwart of athletics. Well, I think we've seen about ten, oh, maybe not ten, but at least at least six service award recipients being presented with a recognition of their dedication of ten years. Doesn't have to be consecutive, is that right? That's but correct. But ten, ten years of service to the Athletics Championships of New South Wales for Primary School Sports Association. Obviously established, Peter established in 1889, so it's been going for some little time. Quite some time. And we're just watching the presentation of one of our events. The young girl from Western's obviously bought her um, hoodie for, to last for a few years, judging by the length of the arms. But she wears it very proudly. Certainly right. I reckon it'll fit her when she's in her 20s. <laughs> a very, very considered purchase. Some of the regional gear is very, very well designed, I must say. I do like... I do like the look of a lot of the regional gear. It's something you'd wear by choice. I would say, not just because you have to at these championships. And I, I do see people running around my area where I am with their regional stuff on by choice. So great. Um, great. A great, great lot of thought goes into the design does. of those. <clears throat> and to make it comfortable for... Because athletics is one of those sports where it's not easy as well because obviously what the throwers would wear as opposed to the distance runners and sprinters, there's a lot of consideration that goes into those decisions. So... Well, it's all the regions associations, the team managers as well. We've got at least three or four team managers, sometimes more, from each region who have given their time away from school to be here. I think we have uh, 54 team managers here at this 54, event. 54, wow. And they come down for the, the two days. And uh, the job doesn't stop at uh, the end of the day. They then contact parents if they need to to let them know about what the, the students are in for the next day if they ha have missed them before they left. They check on the welfare of the students uh, and 
mostly the days finish around 8 o'clock at night for the, most of the team managers. Typical teacher day. Typical teacher day. When my friends tell me it's a 9 to 3 job, Neil, I go, no. that's what you see of us. Yes. They don't see the work that goes in after hours. <laughs> and we have another presentation down here, and this is one of the, it would be the uh, 12, uh, sorry, the Senior Girls Multidisability 800, where we had a wonderful run from Mia Hoffman from <coughs> McKillop, Chloe Hunter. Chloe Hunter from Panania Primary School. And our other competitor was from Sydney East. And our gold medalist, the 2023 champion from St. Patrick's in Albury. Please congratulate Mia Hogan. I believe Mia is also a very good cross-country runner and featured earlier this year at the New South Wales Cross-Country Championships at Eastern Creek. You know what we need, Neil? What's that? We've got an idea. Got an idea? This is dangerous over on. <laughs> <laughs> we uh, we need a PwC mascot, but uh, I think I think we need to put a survey out in terms of what it, what it should be. What is what what represents New South Wales PwC? What animal or what uh, what creature? What character represents the New South Wales Primary School Sports Association? Because then we can can design a mascot for next year. Oh, we did, did we have one? Hmm. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Ladies and gentlemen, I'll draw your attention to the presentation area where we are about to award medals to the place givers, the 11 year girls, 800 metre final. A platypus. There you go. For those people who couldn't hear my colleague in the background, he was giving us the history of the Pacific School Games mascot that was often worn at the Pacific School Games when they operated, and that was a platypus. There you go. As long as it doesn't resemble anything related to Queensland, I think we're safe. Yeah. I think we're safe. Um, and the platypus, and we also had uh, students dressed up as waratahs. How do you do that in a mascot, though? I, I can't imagine how you make a, war a plant into a costume. The Unless you're a shorter statured person, I couldn't imagine. A tall person. Well, as you would know, Nathan, being the uh, horticulturist that you are, the Waratah <laughs> itself grows quite tall. Oh, there uh, you go. I, uh, I learned something new today. I've learned uh, a lot of new things. Uh, and the Waratah, we, we dressed them in a, a brown bodysuit and they had a hat in the shape of Waratah. There you go. Of course, that created havoc when the wind blew up. Yes, I can imagine. Well, we have another presentation here. I'd say that's the uh, one of the 800 runners, or maybe the 200s. I'm not sure. So while we're waiting for the uh, relay officials to get out there, I think they've all been sent back inside to get their rain jackets. The rain isn't as heavy as Nathan described. I'm a little bit concerned when he said it was pelting down. A uh, number of people are out standing out there in the sprinkles that are occurring at the moment. It is it is easy for us to say in here. I was I was yeah. trying to exaggerate it for. Oh, is that? No, I wasn't sure. To, of that. to create a bit more drama, I it's, reckon. It's awful yeah. out there. It's it's definitely not ideal. Otherwise, you wouldn't get. I reckon there's at least four hundred more people in the grandstand now. Easy. they were. Easy. And here we go with another presentation. And this would be one of the eight hundreds. Just a reminder, everyone, that the field stream number one and two, if you're looking for the field action. So on day two of competition here, with uh, 10, 15, we've just started the senior boys multi-class long jump. We would have finished the uh, multi-class long put long jump in shot put so the multi senior boys multi class long jump will be underway at the moment in 10.45 up on the field junior boys high jump 10.50 you've got the senior boys long jump a junior girls multi class shot put 11am 11 years girls discus so they're the next events on the field and what's currently taking place field stream at number one and field stream at number two places to head all available on the school sport unit YouTube channel so we get ready for the junior girls relay. First heat is making their way out 
First of five heats, making their way out to the starting line now. And in lane one in this event, we'll have Jarangong from the south coast. Lane two, Avalon, Sydney North. Lane three, Tamworth, Northwest. Lane four, Morgan Street from Barry, Broken Hill. Lane five, Kareela, Sydney East. Lane six, Our Lady of the Fatima, Karingbar. And uh, Nathan will be very excited about that. She's our alma mater. Uh, lane seven, Kingscliff, North Coast. And lane eight, Maitland, Hunter. And the girls are moving, the number one runners are moving into position. Unfortunately, we've got uh, shade and shelter for the competitors at the various relay changes, so they'll be able to at least stay out of the drizzle at the moment. But it has got decidedly colder uh, here at Homebush today. Yesterday we were we were sweltering, um, and today we are. Uh, on the cold side, and I've just noticed one of the, the chief officials is going around to give all the officials a poncho. Um, uh, we've catered for all the weather, possibly. They're pretty prepared, aren't they? I wouldn't think of that. Uh, we've, over the years, we've learnt. Yes, you've been doing it for a number of years. We have. Jason Wildsmith, the Executive Officer, New South Wales Pedal Bassé, very much man on the ground as well. Leading by example out here, making sure all his workforce and staff working alongside Peter Carney now, conveners. How long has Peter been convener for? I think this is Peter's, would be Peter's uh, seventh, possibly eighth year. That's a lot of work. It's a lot of work, but one he does with an extreme passion and he loves it. And he will go away after the, 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 this year's championship and review every aspect of it. He's already made a note to himself about uh, having a look at how we can balance day one with day two after wow. our late night, late finish yesterday. But I think he may be being too critical. He got through the events. Uh, yeah. And all right, we were a little, little bit late, but we had a few technical difficulties throughout the day. I think the sheer numbers of the heats makes it makes it hard as well to balance yeah, it out. It does. I know Little A's use the warm up track as well for their competition, but uh, we have that, considered that over the years. But that Nathan. requires a lot of staff. A lot of staff and splitting the the event. And they're away. So underway here, Junior Girls, 4 by 100 metre relay, first of five heats. Really good start. The McKillop team, our Lady Fatima carrying by moving up to the inside shoulder of Kingscliff High School, north coast. And it's all about baton changes here. As we know, you could have the four fastest runners, but if you don't get those baton changes slick and you haven't rehearsed them, and remember that some of these athletes might have a little bit of fatigue in the legs, but it's a pretty good effort here. Jerry Gong South Coast are right up there as well. It's probably them and Our Lady of Fatima at the moment. The Sydney East team as well. Karela Public School up in the pointy end here for the 4 by 100 metre relay. Remember, we've got five heats to come through here into the anchor leg now. Slick changes. How good was that? Our Lady of Fatima carrying by and Jerry Gong Public School on the South Coast. They work towards the line here. Battling through, Jeringong Public putting the foot down, steering away from the field. Oh, that was I say that, Our Lady of Fatima makes the last year champion. I think Jeringong gets there. And Sydney North through in third. Avalon Public School in Sydney North. Well done. First five, five heats, 60.01. Very, very quick running for our junior girls. To and that was our girl from Morgan Street from Broken Hill, Barrier, uh, coming, bringing her team in to finish. As you can see, the girls are, are quite chilly out there at the moment. We'll move to Heat 2. And Heat 2 will feature St. Patrick of Swansea from Polding. In Lane 2, Griffith East from Riverina. A very strong school in school sport in the Riverina, Griffith East. New Lap and South Hunter. In Lane 4, Kalani Heights, Sydney North. Lane 5, Pimble Elf, uh, Ladies College, CIS. Lane 6, Helensburg, South Coast. Lane 7, Arana Heights, Western. Lane 8, Walker Central, Northwest. I'm hoping there are a number of schools out today, uh, Nathan, who are watching this event on the, on the live stream, enjoying the live stream, but cheering on their, their relay teams. 
We've got semi-finals for the relays. I forgot about that. Yeah. So it's, it is the top three semi-finals. Through, uh, sorry, heats of the semi-final. To first, second, and third place are automatically getting a spot through to the semi-final. And the next fastest times as well. So very busy. Very busy program for these competitors here. And uh, really important that they stay warm. And they're hype, some of them. They're high-fiving people from the crowd. They're... <laughs> feeling the energy and the atmosphere that's really starting to build here at Sydney Olympic Park. It almost feels like it's more of an atmosphere when it is rainy because everyone sort of sits in the grandstand in close congestion. Mm. So even even better. But the umbrellas are up. You can see it there on the hill. The high jump hill, call it. There's a lot of the high jump events at some of the major meets. Nicola Olaslagas broke the Australian record, broke two metres for the first time for the women's high jump at that location. And it's a popular place for the best in the business. Doing their thing and great view of some of our throws events too here. Heat two. Ready to go for the junior girls. Four by 100 metre relay. Top three automatic. Yeah, the next. It'll be the next fastest four times, I believe, to make a semi final of 18. Waiting the starters orders. And away. So away in heat two, St. Patrick Swansea, Griffith East, New Lambton South, Kalani Heights, Pimble, Ladies College, Helensburg and Arara Heights and Walker Central on the outside. So heat two pretty even at the moment. You can see moving very well the South Coast team in the centre, Helensburg Public School. The City North team, Kalani Heights, and in the centre of them, Pibble Ladies College with a monster second leg as they go towards the second change. She's looking quite well, and oh, I don't know, hope she gets it in in time. They're leaving it quite late. And the polling uh, team, St. Patrick Swansea, also pushing up pretty well on the inside and probably in third place at the moment, maybe even in second, but it's the City North team here. Kalani Heights Public School pushing through to the line. And it is Poldy, so Patrick Swansea really starting to motor as well. And Kalani Heights pushing ahead again. They're going to take the win here in Heat 2. A terrific run. And book themselves a place in the semi-final. And Poldy followed there as well. 10076. Not quite as quick as the first, but that's still a terrific team performance. Getting the bat around safely is half the battle, and they did so quite well. And the Pimble Ladies College, uh, just hope that second change all good as we have a look at the replay. The beautiful form here. Have a look at how much she opens up but still strikes under the under the hip there. The Oh, that was the first heat, my apologies. So yeah. that's the South Coast and uh, McKillop team, Aladdy Fatima Carring Bar and also Jeringong Public School. Jeringong just getting there. Perfect dip. Lady Fatima as well have won two. Um, won the best school award two times as well in recent history so one of the strong schools there in south coast have definitely been doing a great job at the moment south well after day one south coast not quite up there but as we know all the track finals happening on day two so plenty can change we have in our and our third heat uh nathan from uh, lane one westlaw north coast Lane 2, Woodport, Sydney North. Lane 3, Narrabri, Narrabri West, North West. Lane 4, Young, Riverina. Lane 5, Ellison, Sydney West. Lane 6, St Anthony's, Covelli. Lane 7, Orange from Western. Lane 8, Queenwood, CIS. Queenwood coming with a very quick seed time. This is what the last uh, event... Uh, Kalani Heights improved their, on their seed, seeding time by almost a second. It's 
Do I get a hot chocolate? <laughs> All right, so not far away from a start here, just getting another middle presentation finalised, and then we are all in the hands of the starter for heat number three. Junior girls, 4 by 100 metre relay. And the teachers would have been doing some lunchtime sessions to try and prepare their schools for this opportunity to compete here at the highest level. You can represent your school at this point onwards. They're competing in a New South Wales team. So West Lawn in one. Woodport in two, Narrabri West in three, Young in four, Ellison five, St Anthony's Clavelli six, Orange seven, Queenwood on the outside, Queenwood are motoring. McKillop team in the centre of the track, St Anthony's Clavelli also moving quite well on the outside as well, Orange and Western Region are tearing through, Orange are flying here, Orange Public School, but it will be close actually between them and Queenwood CIS, also the Sydney West team at Ellison Public School in the centre lane and she is floating around here in heat three. Top three automatic next uh, four fastest I believe through to the semi-final of 18 teams. 18 of the best schools in New South Wales is what they're trying to get into at the moment but have a look at the team from Sydney West Ellison Public School flying through on the inside Woodport Public also the Western Team Orange and Mike going to get through to the semi-final well done to them and Sydney West has taken the win, though. Ellison Public School, 61.42 seconds. Doing a great job here. Absolutely flying as we... Our technological... He's a man of many talents, Neil. Just trying to fix up our monitor here. But um, well done to all our competing teams in Heat 3 of the girls' junior 4 by 100 metre relay here at the New South Wales PWSA Championships. It's, it's a fickle event. It's a fickle event. But uh, the girls have done a great job here. We have now got uh, a picture to, to look at as we go to Heat 3. Oh, sorry. Heat 4 of the girls. 8 to 10 years, 100 metres. In lane 1, we've got Musselbrook from Hunter. Lane 2, Oran Park, Sydney South West. Lane 3, Our Lady of the Sacred Heart, Ramwick. Lane 4, Orange Small Schools, Western. Lane 5, St John Baptist, Freshwater. Lane 6, Parramatta East, Sydney West. Lane 7, Wilton, Sydney, South, Sydney West. And lane eight, Barony Bay, Sydney East. So St John Baptist Freshwater Holding has got away quite well. They really picked up the second half of that first leg. Sydney South West as well. That's Wilton Public School really ramping it up here, moving up the inside shoulder. The Sydney East team, Barony Bay Public School here, as well as the McKillop team, Our Lady of Sacred Heart, are pretty much in contention as well. Sydney South West, Oran Park on the inside. Two Sydney Southwest teams are moving quite well here. They, their region could get a couple through to this semi final if they play their cards right into the final change. How close is this one? And it will be Oran Park leading this field through. Back on the outside of them in the McKillop colours. Our Lady of Sacred Heart at Ramwick storming through on the outside. Barony Bay have made up a terrific amount of ground. They're going to almost get into second, I reckon, at the, at the line. But Oran Park takes the win. Followed by a lady of sacred hearts. And then Barony Bay Public School with a mighty comeback to get through in third place there. Nathan, there was an interesting entry in there. The Orange Small Schools from Western. Yep. That allows small schools to combine as long as oh, their combined good. enrolment doesn't exceed uh, 250 in the primary. So they can That's go across uh, three or four schools to get those numbers. And normally those teachers will get the kids together and train them. 
uh, from the different schools. So that's a, a great effort from those kids from the Orange Small Schools. Heat 5 will see Eldersley, Sydney South West, lane, out of lane 1. In lane 2, St Matthews Mudgee. Lane 3, Glenmore Park, Sydney West. Lane 4, Lillipilly, Sydney East. Lane 5, Shell Harbour, South Coast. Lane 6, Gag, CIS. Lane 7, Agona from Riverina. And in lane 8, Lennox Head, North Coast. So if you get close to that minute mark, that will definitely be in amongst the top teams. 60 point they're after here. 60.76 to see performance here from Lily Pilly Public School. As well, 1.0076 for Lily Pilly Public School on paper here. We've also got Skeggs, a very strong school. 1.0077, 1 100 behind. Uh, which I'm assuming is at their CIS, CIS championships. And number of teams around the 62, 63 second mark as well. This is heat five, the final prelim the junior girls 4x100 metre relay. to the live stream here the New South Wales PLSA Championships. If you're just joining us, you join us at the right time because it is relay time. We love the relays and there's heat, semis and finals. It's a full day of relays and if I had to do an estimated crowd figure, I would say, I would say, I would say five and a half thousand. I know this, this, this uh, grandstand fills five thousand. No. I reckon maybe even more. Maybe even more. Counting the people on the hill and over in the marshalling tent, and there's hundreds out the back warming up their competitors. Yeah, that's true. The warm-up track as well. So, yeah, we'll be, I think we'll be close to the 5,500, 6,000 people here today. And hopefully it might warm up a little bit because the athletes are feel, feeling it out there. No rain at the moment, but... Cool conditions. Yeah, 800 metre runs liked it. They did until they came for the presentation. That's true. So just making sure the changes are all clear. We've got a number of teacher officials judging each change to make sure they change within the 30 metre exchange zone. A rule that's recently changed. They used to have a take-off take uh, zone and then a, a change zone. But now they've just got to do the whole thing within a 30 metre zone, which gives a bit more flexibility about where they sit. 20 maybe, 20, okay. There you go. Very specialised skill, baton changes, not any other event where you need to have that skill but it is oh so important in these relay events and we're underway here in the fifth and final heat Eldersley on the inside have got away pretty well the CIS team of Skeggs are probably the best of the movers so far and also creeping up a Sydney West Glenmore Park pushing well the outside as well Lennox Head North Coast have got the benefit of the lead here, I reckon, but South Coast Shell Harbour absolutely storming through on the inside of Skeggs now. They've had the best of the second legs for sure. They've had to make up a bit of ground, but now they're probably in the lead position. Sydney East as well. Lily Pilly Public School right You're up right. there. So Lily Pilly and also Shell Harbour South Coast on the outside. Lennox Head will have to make sure they try and straighten up in 
amongst the lead position. There's probably about five in it, fighting for three spots. Sydney East, Lily Pilly Public School getting after it here. They've got a good 10 metre lead or maybe even more now as the anchor leg runner strides towards the line. So Matthews at Mudgee trying to hang tough here in Shell Harbour Public School. They'll both be through. All three of them will be through. And CIS Skeggs will have to wait on time, I think, 60.91 the time for Heat 5. Junior girls, 4 by 100 metre relay. The state's best teams. We've narrowed it down to the best 40 teams in New South Wales. Soon we'll get the top 18 and then the top 9 for the state final. And now we're going to move on to the boys. 8 to 10 years, 4 by 100. Again, we've got five uh, heats. The record was set in 1995, so almost 20 years ago, and that was a pretty quick time, 55.15, set by Epping West. In lane one, in heat one, we have Helensburg, South Coast. Lane two, the School of the Air Barrier. So those students would have come together for a special championship, and they've been selected. In lane three, Holy Family Menai. Lane 4, Shaw Preparatory with CIS. Lane 5, Beaumont Hill, Sydney West. Lane 6, Glazerville, Sydney North. Lane 7, Yowie Bay, Sydney East. Lane 8, Hamilton South, Hunter. And Lane 9, Corindai, North West. See to be the Helensburg as well. Yes, they've been in a number of events. As have Corindai, I've noticed. Uh, yep. They've done pretty well. So Corindai, north... West. Northwest region. A couple of long-distance runners. So the only only team from northwest to get points yesterday was Walker Central. Okay. With 12 points. So who else we got? McKillop, Holy Family, Menai. McKillop... Region. We've had a few teams and athletes represent here at this level just to get one here. As we said, because it's 2,300 athletes in nearly 1,000 schools, mm. it's incredible to really get anything more than one competitor, really, because that's an average of just over two events. And those. You're right. Well, I think there's. Uh no, I, I was going to say there's about 400,000 primary school students in New South Wales, but I think it's probably more than that. Um, so I'll, for next year, I'll have that I'll have that information for us. Well, I'm pretty sure there's about 35 to 40,000 students, or 70, about 70 or 80,000 who do the HSC every year. And obviously, oh. not everyone goes through to year 12. So yeah, the cohort if would you're, be bigger. If you're making a PWSA state final, you're you're basically in the top nine out of 40,000 plus. Mm, mm. Because exactly let's right. get real, there's how many... Every school has an athletics carnival. That's correct. Every student does 100 metres. Some of the other events might be optional, but when you put it, put it like that, it's pretty impressive what some of these athletes are able to achieve. That's why getting 20th or... 30th in New South Wales is something to be incredibly proud of. Something to build upon if you're motivated to do so, and we hope these athletes are. Not just in this sport, but in every sport they've represented here. They're yeah, just about set for Heat 1, Junior Boys. So underway, Hillensburg on the inside. School of the Air, Holy Family, Shaw Prep, Beaumont Hills, Gladesville, Yowie Bay, Hamilton South, and Corindai on the outside. So Corindai on the outside are pushing quite well, and also on the inside of them, City East, Yowie Bay, Public School, and it's the Hunter Regent team, Hamilton South, who's now got their big man charging through CIS Shaw Prep, and now starting to make up a bit of ground as well, and also the McKillop team, Holy Family, Ben I, it might be Jet Dennis, it looks like him, of Holy Family Menai in through the 200 metre mark. CIS there, Shaw Prep in a good place. Top three is all they need to do to get through to the semi final here. And Shaw Prep making a good job of it. Holy Family Menai maybe in second, and then it's back to Hamilton South in third place. Sydney West team as well coming through Beaumont Hills, having a good job. This battle for third is on. As we see the CIS team, he's just cruising through. He looks. 
doesn't just do a right hand look 90 no. degree. He did a whole 180 degree look no, behind him. Come through in 58 34. I've, I haven't seen that for a long time. 58 34. So, that was a yeah. very comfortable run. Cool as a cucumber if you had the view of him right now. A CIS man, good sportsmanship as well. Looking Lately. very comfortable. He's, he's like, f- he's like, I can go around again, boys. Let's do it again. <laughs> As we see him just switch off. Uh, Ooh, Beaumont so, Hills. so comfortable. Beaumont Hills from Sydney West in second place. And Holy Family Menai yep. third across the line. There your automatic qualifiers from Heat 1. Four heats still to come for the junior boys, four by one. And if we move to Heat 2, we have in lane one from the Hunter, Valentine Public School. In lane two, Our Lady of the Sacred Heart, Ramwick. Lane three, Winuna, South Coast. Lane four, Mudgee, Western. Lane 5, Wheeler Heights, Sydney North. Lane 6, Annandale North, Sydney East. Lane 7, Kingscliff, North Coast. Lane 8, St Mary's, Manly. Hello. Hello, hello. hello. And they're from Poland. Couple of good seed times in, in this event. Three sub 60. Yeah. And Dale North, 57.79 from City East. On paper, the favourites here in Heat 2. A lot can happen in a relay. It usually does. There's a lot of things to consider. I know when uh, relay teams prep as well, even things like takeoff zones and how much incoming and outgoing speed there is. If an athlete's got a lot of races in their legs and they might affect it or they might change that up ever so slightly to account for that extra fatigue. Although some of these primary athletes, I don't think it'll necessarily impact them too much. The results from Heat 1, short prep, 58-33 on the scoreboard here at the main venue. 59 to 0 for Beaumont Hills in second and Holy Family Menai at 59-37. Plenty of proud parents around here with the, the cameras and the you know, the medal ceremony as well. Photographers there. Got our instant photos, Australia, I believe, taking some action shots. Yes. Around the venue. And they are situated out the back. They've been doing that for a long time. They've been, it's been since I was eight years old. I think I remember them at PWSA events. Yes, Nathan, they've, they've been coming for a long time. Ooh, yeah, got a couple tip topple. Well, he blocks the pitch, I'm not sure. Yeah, Barry's, go, Barry's going to check it out. Ask, ask the young man what, what might be the matter. Oh, no, seems to be all good. Underway here from the inside. Valentine, Our Lady of Sacred Heart, Winuna, Mudgy, Wheeler Heights, Annandale North, Kingscliff, St Mary's at Manly as well. It's the outer lanes getting the best of it at the moment. So it's Wheeler Heights trying to mow down Annandale North, Kingscliff and St Mary's, Manly and Annandale North of Sydney East. We know they've got the fastest on paper. 57-7-9, 58-3-1 for the previous race is the quickest. And this is Heat 2 here. So a good move by the Sydney North team as well. Wheeler Heights have got themselves back into it. Might even be level here with the Annandale North team on the outside from Sydney East as they work their way around the McKillop team there as well. Got the benefit of the stagger. Our Lady of the Sacred Heart here in lane number two in contention for an automatic spot. But Sydney East, Annandale North pushing towards the line. Our Lady of Sacred Heart pushing through. Wheeler Heights coming up as well, but have a look at the margin. The hair is flowing. The speed is quick, and it's 58 0 5. Fast qualifiers so far through to the final great run by a lady of Sacred Heart as well. And the Western Region team coming through Mudgy Public School. So, well done. That was an impressive display. It as was. Well a replay. Some very good changes uh, through that event. Lane and Heat 3, we have St. Joseph's of Wee War from Polding in Lane 1. Cam- Camden South, Sydney Southwest. 
in lane two. From Western, we have Forbes in lane three. Lane four, Griffith East, Riverina. Lane five, Tacking Point, North Coast. Lane six, Barrel, South Coast. Lane seven, Morialda, North West. Lane eight, Balgala Heights, Sydney North. Interesting, we've had uh, the junior girls 8 to 10 years. We had a team from Riverina East in that, and we've got a, one in the boys. So they're obviously doing some good work down there with their relays and their athletics program. Sure are. We've seen in the CHS competition as well, sometimes it's people you drag from all other sports that create a dream team of four. That's the difficulty, is finding that. You normally runners. get normally get one or two, th third and fourth, are normally a bit more difficult to find to well, find that depth in one school. Yeah, well, I was never considered for any relay. Why not? Sure, sure you would have been swimming or running. Ladies and gentlemen, I draw your attention to the presentation area where we are about to present medals to the place girls in the 11 year girls high jump event. Medals today will be. In the middle presentation here to all the schools watching proudly I hope you're enjoying the live stream the field action is well and truly happening at all corners of this incredible venue the Sydney Olympic Park Athletic Centre which has been home to the best athletics the New South Wales has to offer since 1994 and of course this whole Sydney Olympic Park precinct and many athletes have come through this pathway and continued on to international representation we talk about Mel Gainsford Taylor who is here today coaching some athletes Eloise Wellings, Debbie Wells, Susie Walsh and John Thornall, Jane Saville as well Danny Stevens and other iconic as we get underway with the Heat 3 Three. Mm -hmm. It's a Joseph Weewa, Camden South, Forbes, Griffith East, Tacking Point, Barrel, Warriolda and Balgola Heights on the outside as well. So pretty good going here from the South Coast team. Oh, sorry, Riverina team, Griffith mm -hmm. East, absolutely moving really well. The black and white in the inside, Balgola Heights on the outside, holding their stagger quite well. But Riverina, Griffith East have probably got the lead at the moment. As I say that though, Balgola Heights are really trying to push up as well as Sydney South West Camden South in a good position probably will hit the line in second maybe even getting the battering in hand first there so really close oh. between these teams but it is three to automatically qualify your top three are in a the line they can continue to hold this form without having to necessarily do too much damage here but our man from Sydney North has taken this one out Balgola Heights and wanted to get the win obviously getting a more preferable lane draw as well. I think it's a, a random draw, the fastest qualifier between three lanes. But, of course, through the two semifinals, the fastest qualifier and second fastest qualifier will be split. Balgola Heights getting the job done there. City South West Camden South, a strong team performance here, getting the baton around cleanly in Heat 3. Two heats to come. The rain is still coming down here. And... Um, Parents very keenly supporting their maybe a few teacher team managers in there as well. Braving all the elements. I tell you that those parents we saw before, or spectators we saw before, are over the yeah, long jump pit on the eastern side of the venue. And I think that might be the junior boys. Um, multi-class long jump being carried out over there just waiting uh, on the make sure the lane changes are all clear before those competitors move off and they move off and we'll have our competitors come and line up for our next event, which is Heat 4. And I'm just waiting for those competitors to come out of the holding tent, which is down adjacent to the track. And 
here we go. We've got our changes ready at uh, lane change three, lane change two are ready. We haven't got our starting runners yet, we've got our at the change three. But in heat four or five, we'll have in lane one, Cranbrook Junior School, CIS. In lane two, Finley from Riverina. Lane three, Burrinier Bay, Sydney East. Lane four, St Joseph's Como, McKillop. Lane five, Harrington Park, Sydney South West. Lane six, St Mary's Casino from Polding. Lane seven, Lethbridge Park, Sydney West. And lane eight, New Lambton South, Hunter. Starter's hands. And going across. Starter is in his stand. I think I see the sun coming out. Yes. Slowly. Very slowly. So the boys. A couple of the Western boys there. In the discus area. tend to be a lot more conversational between attempts because there is sometimes a long wait our field event throwers particularly with the big fields in these field events with a lot of athletes being progressed through in the regions associations it's rare that the regions won't fill their available quota positions and it looks like we're almost ready to be called to the marks in heat four of the junior boys four by 100 meter relay So away here from the inside, it's Cranbrook, Finley, uh, Barony Bay, St. Joseph's Como, Harrington Park, St. Mary's Casino, Leatherbridge Park, and New Lambton South on the outside here as they work their way around. It is Sydney West, Leatherbridge Park, who's probably got the lead at the moment. Sydney South West, Harrington Park pushing through. Also on the inside, the Riverina team, Finley moving quite well, shadowing Cranbrook on the inside in lane one. Also trying to go with them is Barony Bay. And into the second change here, Sydney Southwest, very slick. Harrington Park moving quite well on the outside. The Hunter Region team, New Lambton South, bit of work to do, but definitely in contention. Cranbrook on the inside, pushing up. Riverina there too, but it's the CIS team of Cranbrook Junior School on the inside have got the better of it at the moment. This is close for this third automatic qualifying position. Sydney South West Harrington Park in a relatively clear second at the moment. It might be Barronier Bay who are going to... Oh, very close for this third spot. As we see, no, it's Sydney West. Lethbridge Park getting through for that automatic qualifying position. Barronier Bay will have to wait on time here. But it was a terrific job by Cranbrook up there as well to come through. We look... And their battle with Harrington Ladies Park and here, and, and they've just the edged them out as he looks to the side. It was a good run from Lethbridge Park because they had a little bit of difficulty on the second change. One double O, double O. Double O, double O. Normally gets rounded, or well, normally it gets confirmed one or two hundredths of a second quicker. There is some reason for that, I can't remember. The photo finish did explain it to me once, but I've forgotten. But, um, We're now moving to heat five of the heat, and the last heat of the boys eight to ten year four hundred metres relay, and we have in lane two from Western a Bathurst Public School, lane three a Lambie Heights Sydney North, lane four Tamora Riverina, lane five Penora Point North Coast. Lane 6, Milpera, Sydney South West. Lane 7, Parramatta West, Sydney West. Lane 7, Lane 8, Martin Gully, North West. Lane 9, Scotts College, CIS. Can I just say quickly, like, there's 36 
athletes on the track at one time. Would marshalling be the most difficult job right now, or what? 36 primary school hyper kids in one race. So there's five heats. What's that? 150, 180 kids. That's just in one age group. 180. That's a whole year group. Like, in that tiny little area up there. Well done. That's why... Kudos. That's why I've always stayed away from the job of marshalling. They work hard up there. They do. They start first. We work hard here too. We do. <laughs> we do. And they're the first to start in the day, but the same taken, they're the first to finish. It's true. They do look. They do look a bit frazzled by the end of the day. I must admit, the people mm. come in working in the marshal. At least it's a bit. Diff- they're all compliant. They all want to be here. That's true. And they do a fair bit of walking too, because they walk their groups around to each of the starts and various. Uh, they various do event, uh, various yep. events. But the large tent you can see at the southern end of the. Uh, on the screen at the top of the right hand side of your screen that's for the track marshalling they do the uh, field marshalling just behind the stand and there's another marshalling area for the multi class athletes Mm. All changes are ready for the boys' junior 4 by 100 metre relay. Heat number five. This is the final heat, top three, to automatically qualify through to the semi-final. The rest will have to wait on one of the very small number of non-automatic qualifying positions. Just about set here. technical issue. Have we got another fun fact while we're waiting, Neil? No, I was just thinking of the fun facts. And I've, Were you? I think I've run out. I think I've run out. Um, I learned a new word this morning. What was that? Pulchritudinous. Do you know what that means? No. Grant, I, Grant do you know what that means? No uh, idea. Pulchritudinous. Boys, do you know what that means? I learned a new word this morning. And what does it mean, Nathan? Beautiful. Well, being a man of few words, I think the word (laughs) beautiful would would probably be a much better solution. I just like to sound smarter than what I actually am. (laughs) Where did you learn that? I don't know. I'm on this Instagram page. It teaches you new words each day. As we're underway here in Heat 5, so Bathurst on the inside, Alambi Heights, Tamora, Benora Point, Milpera, Parramatta, Martins Gully and Scotts College on the outside. So the North Coast team have moved up the stack on the inside of Milpera quite well here. Benora Point moving swiftly. Scotts College on the outside on the wider CIS. They're moving strong. And Benora Point and Milpera side by side at the moment. A small figure, small figure of Milpera, but he's really hanging tough here along the back straight in the second leg. And Scotts College slick with their changes on the right of your screen now in focus as they work their way around with 150 to go. Just need to make sure this last change is clean. Sydney North, Alambi Heights moving well. North Coast still up there after their terrific start. Benora Point as well in for this third spot position. Battle between them and Parramatta as well on the outside. Martins Gully in the light blue and northwest, but it's a CIS team. Scotts College, terrific win. Close for second and third. Might be Benora Point coming through here. Maybe just getting into second, edging out the City North team of Alambi Heights, but will still go through to the final. 59-2-3, is that the quickest so far? No, uh, no, no, we've had no, some 58s, haven't we? We had 58. 50, uh, no. Yeah, we had 58.3. Yeah. 
Yeah, that was enough. Yep. So CIS team there, the replay, Scots College. Great time. Timing there, the dip by Panora Point, North Coast. 61.07 they came in with. They'll be close to that. Maybe just sneaking under their seed time coming into these championships for the 4x100 metre relay for junior boys here at the New South Wales PWSA Championships. Have a look at the crowd. It is massive. I'm excited. We're getting excited as we get closer to relay semi-final time. Before, but we, before that, we've got... We've got the uh, heats to the girls, 11s to 13s, or our senior relay, which is a 4x100 four, four metre relay. Then we've got our 100-metre semi-finals before wow. our 4x100 relay semi-finals. It's a busy day today. Very busy day, and a lot of these kids will be going from the track to the marketing tent, back to the track. Um, yeah, it's, it's one of those things as well. You're not 100% sure whether the, the warm-up, or well, sorry, the cool-down from your event might actually act as the warm-up warm for the next. next yeah. So sometimes it's normally cool-down, rest, warm-up again. Well, there's there's no, just that awkward sort of gap. But yeah, it certainly is going to be an awkward sort of gap, but I'm sure they'll, they'll lap it up when they get a chance. We've got uh, in lane one and heat one, Bargo, Sydney South West, Bathurst Western in lane two, Ulladulla South Coast, lane three, Lane 4 is St. Teresa's Mascot. Lane 5, Warrington County, Sydney West. Lane 6, Ramwick, Sydney East. Lane 7, St. Catharines, CIS. And the record for this event is all 26 years old or 25 years old. It was set by Aladulla, South Coast. 53-28. And I think if we go back to the girls' junior relay... Oh, no, St. Catharines. Sorry, I thought Arledale South Coast had held that one also. But I was wrong. So, Paul, how did you say it? Polkratudinous. Yeah, that's a bit of worthless information. <laughs> yeah, it is worthless. But. Here we go, heat one, senior girls. Underway, Barker on the inside, Bathurst, Aladella, St. Therese is at mascot, Warrington County and Ramwick and St. Catharines on the outside. St. Catharines away quite quickly, setting their race up quite well. Let's have a look at the baton change. It's very, very good as we see on the inside. The McKillop team, St. Therese's mascot, pushing up in the Sydney East team, probably the quickest of the leg speeds along the back straight. That's Ramwick Public School here, and they have probably got a little bit closer, I reckon, to St. Catharines in to the third leg right now. And it is between those two. Also pushing up now, Wearington County, Sydney West in the yellow, blue and white. So make their way around to the fourth and final change. CIS still in the lead. St. Catharines ahead of Sydney East. That's Ramwick Public School. Up on the inside, Wearington County. Those three relatively clear, but they'll still fight hard towards the line. Really, really showing some terrific turn of speed here. 54-77. Here we go. Speed is up. 54.77. They've got 53.87 of their seed. 54.77. Wow. And I believe... Quality is quick. Uh, aladulla has got the record from 1997 in this one. Yep. Yeah, I believe uh, St. Catherine's team was probably the team that set the record last year in the junior girls. Yes. So, yep. And obviously not all of them would have progressed through the seniors. I reckon some of them would still be in the juniors. Yep. So they've put yeah. a, a good team together there. They ran last year was a 57.32 in the juniors, so they are probably chasing back-to-back uh, -back records, that uh, St. Catharines. We move to Heat 2. Heat 2, and we'll see Lane 1, Our Lady Sacred Heart, Ramwick. In lane 2, Centaur, North Coast. In lane 3, Borkham Hills North, Sydney West. Lane 4, Ambervale, Sydney Southwest. Lane 3, Russell Lee, Sydney East. Lane 6, Wellington, Western. Lane 7, Soldiers Point, Hunter. Lane 8, Griffith North, Riverina. Mm. And the sky is starting to clear, so... We may be experiencing a little bit of Melbourne weather. The umbrellas are down, or most of the umbrellas are down. People are starting to venture back out from the stands.
and they're in the starter's hands. Way here in heat number two, a lady of Sacred Heart on the inside. Centaur North Coast, Balcom Hills North, Ambervale, Russell Lee, Wellington, Shoulders Point, Griffith North on the outside. So, on the outside, Riverina got away pretty quickly here. You know, Griffith North and coming through on the... It's a pretty much a straight line between the Sydney East, Western and uh, Hunter Region team as well as we see Sydney uh, West coming through here up on the inside, Balkan Hills, and trying to track them is Russell Lee. On the outside, on the right of your screen, the Riverino, Griffith North, really trying to hold themselves, and I reckon they'll be in a, with a great shot of automatically qualifying here, see how they go into the final change, but it is... The team from Balkan Hills North on the inside of them. A Lady Sacred Heart in McKillop region and Sydney East Russell Lee coming through and flying through, in fact. But it will be Sydney West taking the win. Balkan Hills North, 56-42. to quick time. Quicker than their two tenths of a second quicker than what they did at the regional championships coming into these state titles. But they'll qualify through and keep alive in the top 18 teams in New South Wales for the senior girls. 4 by 100 metre relay. Yep. Certainly, Nathan, you've had a, a, a big stint there. Thank you very much. Um, and Gra and uh, Grant will move into the chair. to heat three of five heats of the girls 11 to 13 years four by 100 metres relay lane one Gaira representing North West lane two St Augustine's Coffs Harbour representing Polding lane three Belmont Christian School representing CIS lane four Young Public School representing Riverina lane five Manly Vale Public School representing Sydney North Lane 6, Sylvania Heights Public School, representing Sydney East. Lane 7, Campbelltown North Public School, representing Sydney South West. And in Lane 8, Mudgee Public School, representing Western School Sports Association. They're our line-up now for this heat 3. Vacant Lane 9. I think we've got a vacant lane, possibly lane four, four now. Yeah, lane four. So, yeah. I think we've, uh, we've got young. We appear to be missing the... Uh, who's missing? We don't have an extra map there. Ah, uh, no, what they've done they always they have allocated. Okay, so we've got now the Riverina team in lane four, which is young, and we're awaiting Man. No, no, we've got Manly. Manly, Manly Sydney Bar. So what they've done is actually moved them out of lane five for some reason. The officials are at the Ah, uh, now we're now we're coming. Okay, so so in lane five we've got Manly Vale coming back to set up there, and uh, everyone's moving in one lane. So the, we will get we'll be running from lanes one through eight. <laughs> Requiring the blocks reset their blocks because they had been inadvertently gone to the wrong lane. We will wait for the starters' orders. So 
for the time to beat Nurl was the time set by the winners of the second heat. And that was the time 54.77. So keep our eyes out for that time. It was a pretty good time set there by St Catharines. About to get away. And off they go. Everyone will got away to a clean start. And in lane eight, we've got Mungie leading the way around the bend. But Sydney, uh, the team from Sydney East, Sylvania Heights, has made some inroads already. And they, in fact, will change second. And they're ca now motoring and trying to catch the elite girls from Guy, uh, from Mudgee. Team from Campbelltown, Sydney South, Campbelltown North is progressing quite well, but the girls on the inside, especially uh, from Belmont and St. Augustine's are making inroads. And Guy looks like they have maintained a, a slight lead, although the girls on the inside will come round the bend. That'll be Belmont CIS to change first. Then Polding, and now it's on a race between Polding, oh, sorry, St. Augustine's, Belmont, got uh, a mudgy for the top three places, and with Manly Vale coming in in fourth spot. So well done, girls, in time of 56.24. 56.24, which I think is probably our second fastest heat at the, at the moment. We're moving on now to heat four of the girls, 11 to 13 years, four by 100 metre relay. In lane one, Henske School from Wagga, representing McKillop. Lane two, St Mary's Manley, representing Polding. Lane three, Milton Public School, representing South Coast. Lane four, Ross Hill Public School, representing North West. Lane five, Manly West Public School, representing Sydney North. Lane 6, Lennox Head Public School representing North Coast. Lane 7, Edgeworth Public School representing Hunter. And in Lane 8, Beaumont Hills Public School representing Sydney West. Hmm. We've got everyone in our correct lanes for the start of this event, which is always a positive in a relay. And they're in the starter's hands. Changes, you ready? Now on the starter's hands. Penske from Wagga in lane one, St Mary's in lane two, Mil Milton lane three, Ross Hill lane four, which moved Manly West, Lennox Head, Edgeworth and Beaumont Hills. And they go into the first change and a very good change from the Hunter team, which is Edgeworth. And Edgeworth has moved up to take... Uh, 
to take over the lead, but they're also the South Coast. Milton has done a very good job through that t change. As they go around the bend, we've got South Coast Milton, Sydney North, but polling on the inside lane, they're going to make some from inroads, as is McKillop. And it's South Coast Milton in front, leading the way from polling and, and uh, from from St Mary's Manly and I think in the inside line Hensky Wagger may take oh very close to third but a time of 56.32 going to Milton from the south coast Uh, senior relay. As the finishing order was a Milton, St Mary's, and I believe Hensky on the inside lane, Grant, just ahead of Manly West. Moving on now, Neil, to Heat 5, final heat of the girls, 11 to 13 years, 4 by 100 metres relay. In lane two, St Ives North Public School from Sydney North. Lane three, Albury Public School from Riverina. Lane four, Kingscliff Public School from North Coast. Lane five, Shell Harbour Public School from South Coast. Lane six, Neminga Public School from North West. Lane seven, St Matthews Mudgee representing Polding. Lane 8, Cundletown Public School, representing Hunter. And in Lane 9, Queenwood School for Girls, representing CIS. Oh, that's very interesting because we've got a boys event up at the moment. Hmm. So, that but I don't think it's the boys 12 to 13. So... No okay, we're not sure what's happening here at the moment. Let's have a look and see oh, what the. Yeah. We definitely have a hunter, a school hunter school in lane one. We have northwest in two. We have. Holding in three, so for some reason, that's the uh, heat one of the boys senior relay. But by our rec reckoning, we haven't had a, one of the girls of it. The final heat of the girls. Now there is a slight change. A bit of movement at the station here. Viewers, I think we have. We. <laughs> Having a quick change of the um, event, it'll be the final heat of the girls, senior girls. And I'll hand it back to you, Grant, because I'll be bringing the girls out who are probably sitting in the back corner being very cold. Right, we believe we now have the start list for the girls, the final heat of the girls, heat five of the girls. 11 to 13 years, 4 by 100 metres relay. We'll just stand by while the girls are allocated their lanes, just to double check that our information is correct as per the lane allocations. Moving on now, so just Going through those lanes again, we have St Ives North Public School representing Sydney North. We have Albury Public School representing Riverina in lane three. In lane four, Kingscliff Public School representing North Coast. In lane five, Shell Harbour Public School representing South Coast. Lane six, Neminga Public School representing North West. Lane seven, St Matthews Mudgee representing Polding. And in lane eight, we have Cundletown Public School representing Hunter. And in lane nine, Queenwood representing combined independent schools. So 
So some of the girls choosing to use blocks, some of the girls use, choosing not to. So a bit of a mix with this start. At the final heat of the girls, 11 to 13 years, 4 by 100 metres relay. Starter's hands. Right. Okay, come down. And away. So it's an Eyes North. From Albridge to from Kingsliff to Shell Harbour. And then Garden to Matthews, Mudgee, Cundletown and Queenwood. As we approach the first change and Queenwood have done very well out in the outside lane. But we have the team from... Oh, team from Polding have made inroads. They've had South Coast once again. I think you'll find Sitz and Ives also knew has made a bit of a... It's an Ives that I was looking for, yes. Yeah. On the inside, yes. They've made a very strong move. In fact, they have come into the last change and change first I believe so it's got, going to be a sprint down the last 100 metres which it should be and we've got Sydney North with a f slight gap as well from Queenland is fighting back but Sydney North in from St Ives North have done a great job and gone through in 56-74 56-74 from Queenwood and mm -hmm. I think it was the Shell Harbour, was it? Or well, St Matthews Mudgee. We'll stay, stand by for those results now. Oh, yep. uh, I think it may have been St Matthews Mudgee, yes. Radio, moving on now to the first heat of the boys. 11 to 13 years, 4 by 100 metres relay. In lane one, Ellie Barner Public School representing the Hunter region. Lane two, Tamworth Public School representing North West. Lane three, St Catharines Singleton representing Polding. Lane four, Manly Village Public School representing Sydney North. Lane five, Leeton Public School representing Riverina. Lane six, Puntland Public School representing Sydney West. Lane seven, Scots College representing Combined Independent Schools. And in Lane 8, Wattle Grove Public School representing Sydney South West. It's a pretty quick time coming into this event. Start his hands. Just checking the changes. So, for those of you that uh, are involved in athletics, it's a fairly complex organisational structure for the relays. We have three changes, and each of those changes has to be checked to make sure that the officials are in the correct place, and they will make sure that the baton is passed within the passing zone. So far we've seen uh, no problems with baton change, which is a credit to the teachers and the coaches of the students' concern. And they're away. A good start from uh, Leeton in the centre lane. As they move around to the first change, and it's going to be... Uh, CIS, that's the Scots College have gone through in first place and the second runner is doing a great job. What a wonderful run from that's Plumpton. That's Plumpton team in Sydney, Plumpton. lane six now. Yeah, Plumpton's lane six, it was a great uh, leg run by that young athlete. And they've got the baton through and it's Sydney, uh, Plumpton leading the way from Scots College. 
and we'll see what happens in the last week. It's going to be cool. It's going to be a race down that last 100 metres, as it should be. And we've got three in contention at CIS, the Scots College, Plumpton, and and Alabama from the Hunter. So CIS, uh, Scots College has come through in 54.84, followed by Sydney West, Plumpton, and... I think it'll be St. Catherine's Singleton, Neil. Yeah, I agree with Just the third place. So they will there. wait for that to confirm when we get the re- replay. But Scots College, Plumpton... And lane three, which is St. Catherine Singleton. So a great finish for the minor placings there and a great win there to the Scots College in this heat one of the boys 11 to 13 years, 4 by 100 metres relay. The five heats in this event. So we're all going... Everyone's striving for first place. I think they're going straight through to a final, aren't they, Neil? No, 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 we go through to semis in the relay, so they're going the, first, semi. the first three places in each of the uh, automatic qualifiers, and then the next four fastest, um, three fastest times, I think it is, going. Beautiful. Okay, moving on now to Heat 2. In Lane 1, Hammondville Public School, representing Sydney South West. Lane 2, Mudgee Public School, representing Western. Lane 3, St Matthews Mud representing Polding. Lane 4, Our Lady of Fatima, Carringbar, representing McKillop. Lane 5, Illawarra Public School, Illawarra Road Public School, representing South Coast. Lane 6, St Ignatius College, representing CIS. Lane 7, School of the Air, representing Barrier. And in Lane 8, Wingham, representing Hunter. So it's great to see the School of the Air team representing the Barrier Association, which is the association located in and around the Broken Hill area of New South Wales in far western New South Wales. We've got a bit of a delay on that change one. There seems to be some sort of confusion on their lanes. So they'll work that out directly. So in this um, in these heats, we have 40 schools competing from all parts of New South Wales. So it's great to see the spread of schools here today, and it has been yesterday with the competitors at this the 2023 New South Wales Primary Schools Athletics Championships, which is commonly regarded as the nursery of the athletics program in New South Wales. That's an interesting comment, Grant. I, I, I'll deflect that. I want to talk about the School of the Air team from Barrier. <laughs> Students who attend the School of the Air are in very remote areas of New South Wales and the distances would preclude them from getting to a school on a regular basis. But they come together for an athletics championship out that way and they form their teams. And obviously this team has done well at the Barrier uh, Championships and they're off. And a good start there from uh, Hammondville in the inside lane. But as we look, the team from St Ignatius has already made inroads and will change first, just ahead of the uh, barrier. Uh, sorry, just ahead of uh, the School of the Air. And we have a challenge on the outs coming from Wingham, who will say with. Uh, St Ignatius, but St Ignatius are asserting their authority at the moment. We'll see who can come through in the middle lanes. And it looks like it'll be the St Ignatius Mudgies. College in yeah. front, Neil. And the Mudgies put in a very good show and they're coming up. And we've got uh, a team from the South Coast, which is Illawarra Road, who've made a great lead. J- jump, but the lo- boy from Poling, St Mudgies, Poling, has really put in a great effort. And that's a very quick time at 53 60. 53.60 in our second heat. First place went to St Ignatius. It's followed by um, St Matthews of Mudgee. And in third place, Grant? Was well, Illaroo Public School. Illaroo Road Public Coast. School. South Coast. Illaroo Road Public School, my apologies. Yeah. Illaroo Public School. Illaroo Road Public School from the South Coast. 
Right, moving on now to Heat 3 of the boys 11 to 13 years 4x100 metres relay. Lane 1, Narrabri West Public School representing North West. Lane 2, Hastings Public School representing North Coast. Lane 3, Aubrey Public School representing Riverina. Lane 4, Winston Hills Public School representing Sydney West. Lane 5, Stanmore Public School representing Sydney East. Lane 6, Gilgandra Public School representing Western. Lane 7, Eastwood Public School representing Sydney North. And in Lane 8, St Pius X representing Combined Independent Schools. Should be a very competitive race, although St Pius X CIS is coming with a time of 52.86, but they are in the outside lane in this event, so that could have some impact. Everyone's chasing them. So our top two qualifiers on times now will be Eastwood Public School, mm -hmm. and they'll be the second fastest qualifier based on results sent through from the regional championships. And St Pius Public School will be our fastest qualifiers. That's correct. And interesting enough, Eastwood and St Pius uh, been, have been drawn in the adjacent lanes. Just watching the competitors moving around for the... Uh, uh, I'm not sure what that's for. <laughs> a mixture of ages and genders. Uh, Maybe one of the field events. Although, no, we are getting ready for the Norman, Norman Nigel Bagley and the Norman Elizabeth Austin trophies. So they can be of mixed gender and mixed ages. And we're waiting here for the start of the third um, heat of the boys' Uh, uh, senior Championship. Yes, Neil, and those uh, two small schools relays named after icons of the New South Wales PWSA. Uh, they're certainly, with the small schools in New South Wales, very much sought after trophies. So look forward to those events, starting off with the heats. They are... Um Two of the highlights, from, well, two highlights, or many highlights that occur at the PWSA Championship. Uh, Nigel Bagley, which you refer to as the athletics convener for 27 years. Uh, unfortunately, Nigel isn't here with us today, but he normally is. I think he's probably touring around Australia. And they're off. And Norm Austin, of course, was a life member of the New South Wales Primary School Sports Amateur Athletics Association. And was a doyon of um, athletics, and the CIS and Pies have gone through in a very quick time. Eastwood was a chase, but uh, the, girl, uh, the team from Sydney East, Stanmore, have made up some inroads too. As they come to the third change, and it's going to be close here. And they take the change, but St. Pius is setting a cracking pace out in front. But Stanmore is now challenging for second place. And we'll watch who comes through in the middle lane. And some pies into the last leg. And Sydney East have come through. So that is Stanmore that are coming into second. And a good run there. And Sydney North are fighting back with their runner from Eastwood. But it is St. Pius the 10th going to go through in a time of 53.38. 53.38. 88, sorry. From Sydney uh, Stanmore. Uh, I think it'll be the Sydney North team oh, now. Eastwood. And it'll be Eastwood Public School from Stanmore. Thanks. Thank you, Grant. I was saying about Norm Austin, who was a, 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 a stalwart of both track and field and all sports in um, PWSA activity and PS3A activity. But Norm spent a great deal of his teaching career in small schools around New South Wales. Um, and he developed a great passion for the, the abilities of the kids out there. And he introduced the Norm Austin Elizabeth Austin Trophy um, at the Athletics. And uh, as Grant said, it's the most sought after trophy. But I'll give you the size of the schools that can compete in those uh, as we approach those events. 
Okay, moving on now to heat four of the boys 11 to 13 years, 4 by 100 metres relay. Lane one, Carrillo Public School representing Sydney East. Lane two, Oriola Public School representing North West. Lane three, Warhope Public School representing North Coast. Lane four, Our Lady of Angels, Rouse Hill representing McKillop. Lane six, St Augustine's representing Brookvale representing Polding. Lane 6, Camden Public School, representing Sydney South West. Lane 7, Arana Heights Public School, representing Western. And in Lane 8, Horns- Helensburg Public School, representing South Coast. The runners are just awaiting the instructions of the starter. I believe everything's... He's been given the all clear to commence the starting procedure. Just while we're waiting for this race to start, the weather seems to be clearing. Uh, it's still a little cold, 14 degrees. So it's not the warmest day we've had for an athletics championship, but a uh, good day for running now that the weather has cleared and the sun's trying to break through the cloud cover. done extremely well. He's got his team up, but the good runner from uh, St. Augustine, Brookvale, they have done extremely well and they've opened up a sizable lead. And they go into the third, second change. And it's, it's St. Augustine's been now chased by Our Lady of uh, Angels, Rose, Rouse Hill. And St. Augustine's have come through in the first and been chased, as I said, by the Our Lady of the Angels, Rouse Hill. It's going to be a tough fight there for third, but it looks like it's going to be Carilla and Sydney East as they come through to the finish line in a time of 54.20. It is St. Augustine's from uh, Our Lady of the Angels, Rouse Hill. And in third place, Carilla, Sydney East. So I leave the track and we'll move on to Heat 5. So the start list for Heat 5, which is the final heat of the boys 11 to 13 years, 4 by 100 metres relay. In lane 1, we have New Lambton Public School representing the Hunter. In lane 2, Bennett Road Public School representing Sydney West. In lane 3, St Columbines from Coromel representing McKillop. Lane 4, McLean Public School representing North Coast. Lane 5, Lake Albert Public School representing Riverina. Lane 6, Pleasant Heights Public School representing South Coast. 
Main 7, the local school, Newington Public School, representing Sydney East. And in Main 8, another local school, Baronia Park Public School, representing Sydney North. And the fastest qualifier on times now, looks like it's St Columbines from Coromel in a time of 54.33. Very closely followed by Baronia Park Public School with a time of 54.37. So I'll keep our eyes on those two schools. Yeah, I think this will be a, a, a rather close event. <laughs> the athletes are failing it down on the start line and the, the changes is rubbing their arms and jumping them down, trying to keep the warmth. The excitement would be helping too. It would be a great privilege to represent your school at this event, in, especially in this way in the team room at, of a relay. As an example. And we're in the starter's hands. Settle over their marks. And off they go. So we're looking at the runners in. Uh, St. Columbine's from Coromel in lane three. Lane eight, Baronia Park. Baronia Park has gone through. And the Sydney East runner from Newington College. Uh, Newington has just jumped out to a, a fairly strong lead here. Well, that's the local school. Yeah, you know, that is. New Newington Newington Public School. This will be their training ground, I suppose, Grant. It would be. And as we come to the final change, we'll see what happens inside. We've got a couple of runners who are going to challenge. And it's we now <coughs> coming down the front. The There's a runner a from St. Colin by Kills Coromel, who's done Newington. a great job. The runner from Barania Park. And Newington are going neck and neck for, for, for second and third. And we have some column, by, um, some column kills from Coromel in first. And I think, Grant, it was uh, Newington Sydney East. Yes, I think New, uh, Newington Sydney East provisionally in second place. Uh, just ahead of Baronia Park. In Baronia Park, yes. So they look like our top three pace getters. And at the final heat of the boys... You, 11 to 13 years, 4 by 100 metres relay. So we'll wait for the uh, semi-finals to be announced, uh, remembering that it was the top three place getters in each of the uh, heats, plus the next fastest times to make a field of 19 for the semi-finals across those events. We now come to the Nigel Bagley relay. The, and this is a mixed event from 8 to 13 years of age. Uh, a 4 by 100 and the rules of this event you must have a school enrolment of between 25 and 54 25 and 54 and uh, I'll just check from here through the rules uh, 25 but not exceeding 54 and they can be both girls and boys they can be years from th years 3 to 6 and that is the classification and that is the enrolment as of the February staffing return date. So, as we mentioned before, highly sought after. Uh, these schools are, are normally from quite remote areas um, with a small enrolment. And uh, it is a very exciting event. Nigel Bagley, New mm. South Wales Primary School Sports Association Athletics Convener for 27 years uh, and really lifted the, the presentation of the track and field event to a very professional level. And each of our conveners since that point of time has only enhanced the program. Right now we have in the start list for this 
the uh, just trying to see how many heats we've got for. We've got four heats, one of four, yes, of course. Okay, we have in lane one, Delegate Public School from South Coast. Lane two, Summersby Public School from Sydney North. Lane three, St Joseph's Colcan, representing MacKillop. Lane four, Wiseman's Ferry Public School, representing Sydney West. Lane five, Gundagai South Public School, representing Riverina. Lane six, Goolagong Public School, representing Western. And in lane seven, St Joseph's Barabar, representing Polding. And now when this race finishes, you might like to give us a bit more information about Nigel Bagley and the impact he had on the education of students, particularly with sport, in not only New South, in PWSA, but also the western region of New South Wales. Certainly, Grant. Is our runner from St. Joseph Barber. Home of one of Australia's great rugby union players. And then we've got uh, so St. Joseph is doing a wonderful job out there. Gulagon from Western is also up there. Good run there from the uh, St. Joseph Colcan McKillop as they come through the change, but they're going to have to work hard to get St. Joseph Barber who are powering around the bend. With a jump of As we watch, and we've got Western's Kulagong uh, doing all so well. In the middle, uh, in the inside lanes, we have some Joseph's Cole Can, Cole Can will change second in second place. Now we've got a run between uh, some Joseph Barra riding all win this event. We've got Kulagong and some Joseph Cole Can fighting out for second place. A good run there from some Joseph Barra of 59-74. Kulagong from Western and... St. Joseph's Colcan in third place, 59.74. 59.74. And there they are. These boys have come from all around, all teams have come from all around the rural areas and remote areas of New South Wales coming together to, at this, in this event. So the time to beat Nell, the time set by the first heat was 59.74. As we have we welcome to the start line the competitors in Heat 2. So we'll have the first two place getters at automatic. Um, oh, they do too, yes, of course. Uh, first two. And we've had a bit of a issue with one of our um, recording tables. <laughs> the West, the, and all the, mar- all the officials are now chasing the paper around New, uh, Sydney Olympic Park. And who's going to win this one? I don't I haven't got much money on Barry Pecker. He's a bit too, that one's getting away from him. Oh, we've been there. We've, we've got a winner in the middle, we believe. <laughs> Some kids are helping. <laughs> well, that was a bit of excitement. Um, the crowd appreciated it. <laughs> That's as fast as a lot of those people have moved for a long time. Well, that, that'll be a fun fact for future years. No? Fun fact? What year? What year? It was the paper <laughs> scramble. It was a paper scramble. A new event for New South Wales Primary School Sports Association. Athletics Championships. Always innovators. We are. We're ahead of the game. OK, moving on now to Thank the second heat of the <laughs> Nigel Bagley relay. In lane one, Central Tilbar Public School from the South Coast. Lane two, Murrin... Murrin Rundai from Public School from Hunter. Lane 3, St Peter's Colliambly from McKillop. Lane 4, Colo Heights Public School representing Sydney West. Lane 5, Broadwater Public Sorry, School representing North Coast. <laughs> Lane 6, Gulgawi Public School representing Riverina. Lane 7, Barker Darkinjung representing CIS. And in Lane 8, Bald Belair Public School representing North West. And we're ready. And as you'll notice, we've got both girls and boys in this event. It's a mixed event, mixed ages. Right, having a look at uh, lane uh, seven, the Barker Darkenjung School. I'd right, say so we've got a young eight-year-old there. So we'll see how we all progress. So we 
Now, have we got all teams competing? Because we seem to be missing lane four, possibly. Which is Colo Heights in the US. No, they, there's no Sydney West, so Colo Heights are obviously a withdrawal. Start as assistant. Uh, Mr. Mike Wayne Smith is going to be able to explain to <laughs> our runner from uh, uh, Broadwater uh, the, the rules. And it's all right, Mr. Smith walked away because he got the thumbs up from our competitor. And they're away. And we had a good jump there from, uh, from the runners uh, from Gilgawi, Riverina as they come in first into the first change. And they have taken the lead, Gilgawi, from uh, Ball Blair, but our team are from Broadwater. They had a little bit of an issue at the start, but they're coming now into second place. It's going to be a good... If we get some good changes, and we do, and it's Gilgawi, the Riverina, now being chased by Broadwater on the north coast. And I think Broadwater has made... will probably come round in the lead... After they jump from the bend, and it's going to be Broadwater. Careful with the change, boys, and they get the change on. And Gilgawi has set out now to chase down the Broadwater athlete, and I think the Gilgawi runner is going to do it, although the Broadwish boy has fought back. So it's going to be Gilgawi go through in first place from Broadwater and from Marundi. Marundi in third there, Neil. In one o one. Zero zero point four eight. Well, my colleague would probably say sixty point four eight, which is far easier than saying one minute and zero zero point four eight. So just uh, we will we'll, we'll reiterate that these are mixed relays. So yep. we have girls and boys competing, which is fantastic, mm. and they're all out to win the Nigel Bagley Trophy. And uh, you asked about Nigel's career, Grant. Yes, he's a life member of the Bathurst PWSA, a life member of uh, the Western Region PWSA, a life member of New South Wales PWSA. He was, in fact, uh, the regional sports organiser in Western Reason, Region in the late seventies. Uh, early, I'm sorry, early seventies, before he be, uh, took on the role of um, PWSA athletics convener. And then he did also spent some of his time at uh, a school called Bathurst West and Raglan, both in the Bathurst area. Heavily involved in the community out there and uh, was involved in... Uh, they had a very famous luncheon they used to oh, hold on the bridge at Bathurst every year. And uh, Nigel race, and his wife, Lee, were heavily involved with that. So, Neil, thank you for that. Uh, moving on now to Heat 3. Kara Bubbler, public school from North West in lane one. Lane two, St Pius X Windale, representing Polding. Lane three, Spring Hill Public School, representing Western. Lane four, Barrington Public School, representing Hunter. Lane five, Maruta Public School, representing Sydney West. Lane six, Tarago Public School, representing South Coast. Lane seven, Kenny Abba, public school, representing North Coast. And in lane eight, Trinity Murrumburra, representing McKillop. Thank you, Grant. Fastest qualifier is Barrington from the Hunter. And we'll see how they go. And the Hunter's in lane a four. I think the temperature's dropped a little bit, a little bit cooler because the uh, a couple of them are shivering out there on the start line. Yeah, I think now we've got a pretty cold southwesterly wind that's coming down through the tunnel where the athletes enter the track. And uh, that wind chill factor is probably dropping the temperature to about 12 degrees, which is winter conditions. Mm, ladies and gentlemen, Grant is very accurate with his wind description he, as a mariner. Uh, he knows all about the wind, which directions in they come in in Sydney. And we now have an issue at the start. Uh, we've just explained that, so we're all right. We're ready to go. And off they go. And we'll see who this good start from the uh, runner 
from Catabubula, a northwest in lane one. He's already taken the ground from St. Pius the tenth. And the first change has gone through and it's uh Carniba from North Coast who's done very well. We have a girl from Western running in in lane three, Spring Hill. I've traditionally been involved in those sports for over a number of years. It so looks um, like a runner in North Case now. Lane seven, Kaniaba. 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 They've done a very good job and they'll change and come down. They've got a good a size of lead over Spring Hill from Western. And in third place at the moment, I think it might be on the inside line. Uh, I think it's going to be Barrington Park Barrington. School. Yeah, right? Barrington, yeah. It was a strong run there from the last final runner. Oh, and they've, they've gone through in 108.87. And a great effort from all those schools. And a very good dip by the Barrington runner. He's leaving no, nothing left in the tank to finish that race and make sure he secured third place for his team. And they've gone through in 60.87. It's our move to... Moving on to heat four of the, in the final heat. Yes, that's correct. Mate. Of the Nigel Bagley relay for 2023. Lane one, Middle Dural Public School from Sydney North. Lane two, Dungowan Public School from North West. Lane three, Karengi Public School from North Coast. Lane four, Bilpin Public School from Sydney West. Lane five, Sir Joseph Merriwa representing Poldy. Lane 6, Laguna Public School representing Hunter. Lane 7, Trundle Public School representing Weston. And in Lane 8, Murringo Public School representing Riverina. So I hope if you're sitting in your school halls and your classroom and you're watching your colleagues and schoolmates run around here today, uh, you're enjoying the coverage that we're being able to provide. So well done to the officials organising the relays. They've, we've gotten this far so far without a, without a hitch and hats off to those officials. It's been very, very well organised and certainly the students appreciate it, as do the spectators. It's a little bit cold here today and it's nice to get the events through so that we might uh, hopefully have a finish around the advertised time. We were a little bit late yesterday. But we're hoping to keep on track today. Yeah. Yeah, she's one of the student officials. Yeah, but they're, they're tough, the students. Yeah, as Neil and Nathan did observe, we also have the students from Wyndham College helping out at our championships. And they also help out at the... PWSA Swimming Championships a well done to the students of Wyndham College They do a very good job too Grant. Don't, do they help with the, your CHS Athletics? No, CHS Athletics traditionally have had the students in Greystones High course, School of course. and that relationship has been going on since the mid 80s so fantastic initiative that was initiated through Donna Crowley and Janelle Eldridge and in latter years Kerry Barton has been the supervisor of those students so hats off to those people as well and now when we move into the the Austin Railways you might like to give us a bit of um, a rundown of the Austin family they've uh, contributed greatly to school sport in New South Wales particularly the small schools um, events it would be my pleasure, Grant. Uh, Norman and Elizabeth Austin are, uh, as I said, doyens, stalwarts of New South Wales Primary Schools Amateur Athletic Association in later years of New South Wales PWSA. And you'd regularly, regularly see Norm Austin and Elizabeth Austin come to the athletics championships at the ages of 80 and 80, almost 90, to present his trophy. Uh, Norm's career started in the small school, schools of New South Wales and that's where he developed his love for the rural life and uh, he always wanted to make sure that the small schools had the opportunities to have a special event because they do struggle when they come up against some of the schools 
and have populations of a hundred, over a couple of hundred or even a thousand students. It's pretty amazing now that we have student schools, 25 or less, yep. and, and schools of 50 or less. That's just amazing. That's total enrolment and uh, they one teacher schools. And these are... Some, some schools are quite remote, some are just tucked away. And as we see the school from Binya go through in the first change and they have been a perennial uh, winner of this event the kids from Binya so there's a rich tradition there and if we come out and the third, a second change and that is still Binya out in front and he's running the bend very nicely and he's been chased down by Yalabalong West another one who's traditionally done very well in this event and our north coast Corndale will change in, oh I think they may have come through and taken the lead in this event and definitely have that's a very good run from Corndale and the boy from Binya is still running in second place. And we're going to see the court from Corndale. A very good run of 59.92. 59.92. What a great run there for Corndale. Neil, would you like just to double check what race that was? I was close. <laughs> I'm sorry, ladies and gentlemen, I've called the wrong race, but I'm sure Binion's corner is going to do extremely well in the next race. So if you... <laughs> My apologies. That was Karangi who ran so well then. <laughs> they... oh dear. Uh, Karangi from the North Coast, yes, it was. It was. Um, unfortunately, that I have totally messed that up. Uh, 59.92. All right, we'll move on now to the first heat of the Austin Relay. And this is heat one of three. In lane one, we have Gravesend Public School from North West. Lane two, Hannonvale Public School from The Hunter. Lane three, Binya Public School from Riverina. Main 4, Corndale Public School from North Coast. Main 5, Yubalong West Public School from Western. And in Main 6, Nimitabel Public School from South Coast. From all those students and parents who are watching, and from Middle Dural, Dungal and Karangi, Bilton, St Joseph, Meriwa, Laguna, Trundle and Moringa, Moringo, I do apologise. I do apologise. It was a very good race, though, and uh, the young team from Karangi did a marvellous job. Uh, it would have been helpful if my colleague had probably reminded me of the fact a bit earlier. <laughs> so we're already for the first heat of the Re Norman Elizabeth Austin Re Small Schools Relay Trophy. And you might notice the boy at Graves in there was reffing the crowd up, so they must have a bit of a supporter base <laughs> for the Graves in public school team from North West. I'm not sure where Graves in actually is. Uh, I haven't driven part through that one. Many years ago, Yulabalong West brought their entire school to witness their kids running. And that happens a fair bit with those small schools relays. The whole community will make the trip to Sydney for either the swimming or the um, athletics. We have equivalent events in the swimming. And the Gravesend Public School is actually at Gravesend now. Thank you, Grant. As we watch them go through the first turn, uh, through the first change, and we have. Strange enough, Corndale doing very well from the north coast, uh, followed by Binya from um, Riverina. And the runner from Binya has made up a close the gap and they will change in, for, in first place. They're now being at Binya, being chased by Corndale. And I think it's Gravesend, maybe in third place on the inside. 
So we'll see how the final runners go. And Bing, the Binya has changed first and done a, a very clean change, but the young lad, lad from Corndale is putting on the pressure. And we've got the one uh, goal running in, in the for Gravesend in the inside lane. But Binya's going to go through in 61.07. So a good white win for Binya over Corndale and Gravesend. Okay, moving on now to heat two of the Austin Relays. In lane one, Yurungilly Public School from Riverina. Lane two, Mount George Public School from the Hunter. Lane three, Boomy Public School from Northwest. Lane four, Trunky Public School from Western. Lane five, Kangaloon Public School from South Coast. Lane six, Main 6, St Columbus, Yeovil, representing Polding, and in Main 7, Greenhill Public School, representing North Coast. I just noticed, Grant, there's only three heats in this event, so it'll be the top three place getters in each heat will go through to the final. And again, we've got a couple of uh, traditional contenders here in this event, that being uh, Urungili from the Riverina, Boomai from North West, and Trunky from Western. So our fastest collar tire on submitted times, Neil, is Kangaloon from South Coast. So a competitor just awaiting the instructions from the starter. I believe we have a full field here, Neil. Uh, we do. Starter. All the students are a little bit jumpy at the start, which is understandable. But it's, this is it's cold. Com well, coming from a small country, remote and rural region in Maine, um, there'd probably be nearly four thousand people in the grandstand, so it's pretty packed out today. Well, if you have a look around, we were trying to estimate the crowd a bit earlier, Grant, before while you were on uh, chasing up some other information for us. We got up to about we caught between five and a half and six thousand. And as they made their start, it was a good start. So we're, we're looking at uh, the fastest qualifier was Kangaloon from the south coast, and they've gone through and actually done very well with the change in the for the. Green Hill team on, in second place, but here come Trunky from Western in the in lane four. South Coast um, Kangaloon has gone gone round, and they are ch charging away now to the uh, final change, and with a quite a sizable lead. The, the runner from Trunky has been now chased down and by our runner from Boomai in the northwest, but here comes the south coast and uh, they have got a very good finisher here. One of the teams, south coast team athletes is doing extremely well as they go through and come through in 60.76 ahead of Trunky and Boomai from the northwest. So the first heat, second heat, sorry, is 60.076. So moving on now to heat three, the final heat of the Austin Relays. In lane one, we have Tirana Public School from the south coast. Lane two, Tharbogang Public School from Riverina. Lane three, Herons Creek Public School from north coast. Lane four, 
Ballymore Public School from Western, Lane 5 North Star Public School from Northwest, and in Lane 6 Ellison Public School from Hunter. With the Jubans outside the window here. Starting to have our uh, the Marston call for our next event, which will be the uh, multi-class 100 metres time finals. We've got our athletes moving up to the uh, starters starters end. So immediately after this event, we'll have the co commencement of the multi-class time finals for 100 metres. And Neil, they'll be followed by the semi-finals of the 100 metres for 8 years, 9 years, 10 years, 11 years, 12 years and 13 years competitors. So good program of events coming up after the relays, the 100 metres events. Notice on your screen there, I think it is getting a little colder, that wind. It's starting to pick up, yeah. A number of our officials have gone from the poncho or the jumper they've had on and now have uh, included a puffer jacket. Yeah, it's amazing the temperature change from yesterday now. Oh, nice. we're, we're looking at temperatures around 25, 26 degrees and today we're nearly half of that. Luckily we haven't got our air conditioner on in here because yesterday it was freezing in here. Well, I've noticed you've got your pole of fleece on, so you'll be right. Ladies and gentlemen, I'll just draw your attention to the presentation area where we're about to award the silver medalist in the girls' 8 to 10 discus throw. <laughs> the silver medalist in that event from Bennett Road Public School in Sydney West. Please congratulate Maata Bokopisi. And we are now going to the starters' hands. Mr. Barry Pickard will be starting at this event. One of our girls has got to the blocks a little bit too quickly. Now she's right. And I think it's probably the first time she may have used blocks. I'm not 100% sure. Well, she has used and they're away. And the uh, hunter runner from Elliston has made uh, a good lead, although North Star, Northwest, have got developed a strong lead now and a very nice runner from the North Star as she leads them down the back straight. A very powerful run. She'll take them into the next stage, next change. And they've done that very nicely. We've got Riverina on the inside. Tara Bogan by, by from the Riverina coming round. But as we look through the bend, we've got our runner from uh, North Star. This is Northwest as they go into the final change. Uh, but it's going to be a racing two between North Star and Tara Bogan. And they have come through in a very good effort. Uh, so Sarah Bogan ahead of North Star ahead of that'll be Herons Creek Herons Creek third place thank you and they've come through in 62.61 followed by Ballymore Elliston and Tirana so unofficially they're the six place getters in the final heat of the Austin Relays we now move to the 8 10 year old 8 to 10 year 100 metre multi class we have in our first eight to ten years girls, we have one of two time, we have two time finals. Remember these are based on the students' a f a time as compared to the Australian base baseline. And we have the multi-class calculator, the calculations that have been conducted by our officials downstairs. So these will be 
The people that will go across the line first, they may not be the gold, silver or bronze medalist. It's based on their times and their comparison. At the moment, we've got our officials at the start, at the northern end of the stadium, putting out the uh, coloured cones to assist our competitors. Because as I learnt yesterday, the confusion of the curve at the start of the 100 is somewhat off-putting for our athletes. We're going to have a number, a number of different uh, classifications in this event. We've got TF20, uh, one, two, three, four, five, five TF20s, a TF13, a TF38. And they are in different cl classification of disability. Now, you might just like to go through that classifications based on the numbers, just to let the people know what they're viewing. I will do that, Grant. Thank you very much. We are TF20 is uh, intellectually uh, disability. T11, T12, TF11, TF12, and TF13 are vision impaired. Uh, we had a TF38. A TF38 is a physical disability, and that could be range from hemiplegia. It could be amputation. It could be any number of. Um, Disability is not ambulant. In fact, I'm just having the, the start line, and we do have a wheelchair athlete, and I think she's in a race chair. Uh, so we may there may be uh, athletes today that compete with a prosthesis, um, and they will either fit into those the categories I've, went, I've mentioned. We have other categories. The TF01 is hearing impaired. A TF60 is a transplant athlete. And for those people unfamiliar with the disability organisation, we have an equivalent classifications across swimming and we also have cross um, classifications that can vary for cross country. All our athletes have been classified and must come to this event with that classification. And I think that's important, Neil, because from this event we will select the team to go to the School Sport Australia Championships and that is a requirement at the School Sport Australia Championships that the athletes are classified as per the classification process adopted by Athletics Australia through the Para-Athletes para Association. We've had a number of very successful uh, para-athletes or athletes with a disability start their career uh, at the New South Wales level, um, New South Wales primary school level, and one that comes to mind is Christy Pond, who has been a very successful uh, athlete over a number of years, which has represented Australia at uh, Paralympics. Uh, we also had Kurt Fernley, Neil, from Blaney. Kurt Fernley, Blaney Public Blaney, School. Blaney, Blaney, Blaney High School. Yep. Uh, have done remarkable things with their careers. Actually, we were talking about Nigel Bagley before Grant, and it was Nigel Bagley who I helped introduce with student, uh, events with students with disability at our state championships. Um, Nigel was very proactive in that field. I think Nigel had a good vision for athletics, didn't he? No? <laughs> so I've got Scott a little bit of a long here while the starting officials prepare the 100 metre start. As Neil mentioned, they do put cones out so that the athletes aren't confused by the circular track coming onto the 100 metre track. But while we're doing that, we'd just like to thank everyone for their um, all the officials who are here today. It has been 
a rather challenging day with the weather. And I thank those officials from the New South Wales Primary School Sports Association and the principals who have agreed to release them for the day. We'd also like to thank the officials from Athletics New South Wales who provide invaluable assistance, particularly on the technical side. All right, as we line up our first event, we've got in lane two, we've got Ella James, the TF13 from New Lambton. In lane three, Mia Wall, Barrington Hunter. Lane four, Lacey Johnson, Arana Heights. Lane five, Tyler Davis, Casino West. Lane six, Stella Pace from St Bernadette's Castle Hill. Lane seven, Alison O'Mernane from Bunyong Western. Lane eight, Ava Preston, North Nowra. Lane nine, Daisy Falcon. I just reproached with a young runner from North Coast, and that is Daly. Talia Davis from Casino West has come through to finish in the time of 19.39. But they, all these times will be recorded compared to their classification and the winner will be decided on the best time based on that ba- Australian baseline um, time. So it's not the first will be necessary to become and we have our two, uh, first um, bike race flame runner uh, I think that is probably a first of the court I would say and the number one of the runner of course she's been given by the, by the crowd and that I believe Neil is Emily Hayes from Lucas Heights Public School oh fantastic work yeah, Ellen, well done to Ellen, Ella James Emily oh and, Emily sorry. and as Neil said that yeah. could be the first so well done to Emily And remembering that the results of these events are determined by the time the athlete attains as compared to their classification, which is then compared to the Australian baseline scoring system. So good luck to all those competitors in our multi-class events today. So moving on now to Heat 2 of the finals. In lane one, Sienna Compton, who's a T1 from St. Aloysius Chisholm Polding. Lane two, Isabella Ivanovsky, who's a T11 from Kaima Public School, Sydney East. And let Neil finish the girls uh, off. That's, that, that has become true. We had our running from Polding, lane one, Sienna Compton, who's done a marvellous job. And she was followed in by uh, Paulina Alias from St. Gertrude's. And our other competitors included Isabella Ivanovsky from Kai Guy McLean Mark. Uh, we had a run on lane four from Sydney East. We had Eden Usher, lane five, St Anthony's Kingscliff, lane four, six, Pauline, as I called it, lane seven, Alexis Peters from Bomaberry, lane eight, Kialani Fathers from Foster, lane nine was Violet Fuller, lane Amora, lane ten, Stella Krauss to name sedans tomorrow. So we're all done to those girls and mail very quickly through that that event. We now move to the boys, eight to ten, I believe, is that correct, Grant? The yeah, heat one of three, Neil, for the boys eight to ten hundred metres in lane one, KB Johnson, T one from Carryong Public School. Lane two, Lock on Sharp, T forty seven from St Peter's, Lane three Capotti, sorry, Kino Gonzalez Capotti, T60 from St Thomas Aquinas. Lane 4, Jackson Mogan, T20 from Blacktown West. Lane 6, Hudson Wan, Our Lady Mount Carmel, Grant Pritchard, and he is a T63. Lane 7, Jack Hurd, T20 from Nabiak. Lane 8, Craig McDonald, a T20 from Chittaway Bay. Lane 9, Luca Buljavacic. For a T20 from St Gabriel's Castle Hill, and in lane 10, Owen Havenar, a T37 from Roos, representing Sydney West. Thank you, Brian. Yeah, 
three seals. So the T63, the T63 is an amputee, the Malay knee amputee. And he was running the use of the prosthesis. And as they come down the, the 100 metres, we have our runner in lane 7, 8, is uh, Craig McDonald from Chittaway Bay, and the throw over in lane 1, Kobe Johnson from Carry On, Sydney North. And in lane 4, Jackson Logan from a Black Town West, who's doing a great job. And we've got our two runners coming in now from Moose, Owen Havanagh. And from the hunter, Nabia Jack Heard. Well done, boys. So, well done to those boys in heat. One. One. Of three. Moving on now to heat two. In lane three, Stephen Carrozza. T41 from Strathfield North. Lane four. Five, Brayden Nettles, T20 from Bombardier in lane six, Bodie Papworth, T20 from Inaburra, lane seven, Riley Johnston, T20 from Arana Heights, lane eight, Owen King, T20 from Covenant Christian School, lane nine, Dylan Clark, T40 from Carry On, lane six, Sebastian Stace, T38 from St Joseph's East Maitland, and in lane 11, Cody Wheeler, T20 from Nangus Public School, representing Riverina. Just apologise to that background noise while my colleague adjusts his headsets. Always a pleasure working with you, Grant. And we're awaiting the start of this event. Just judging by the reaction of the people outside, it is uh, quite chilly. We might be expecting snow a bit later. And we're away. And we've got our runners from S Sydney East in lane four. And that is Sydney East, lane four. In lane three with Stephen Carosa. And our runner in polling from polling over here in lane uh, Sebastian Stacey. And a very good effort from all the boys as they come through. So that was Riverina City North Western. No, it was two Sydney East. Oh, well, those last few that came over, Grant, so and, I apologize. Uh, two athletes from CIS. So well done to those boys. And again, we must stress that these are only provisional. <laughs> Place. Placings, the ultimate determinant of the placings is through the multi-class classification system. So moving on now to P3 of the boys, 100 metres, 8 to 10 multi-class. Lane 2, Maker Machot, T13 from Bird Oldfield. Lane 3, Lane 4, sorry, Kobe Stewart from Port Macquarie. T20, Lane 5, Blake Styles, T20 from Port Macquarie also. Lane 6, Bailey Lloyd Small, T20 from Tottenham. Lane 7, Noah Zabaris, T20 from Nengame. And Lane 8, Brandon Polito, T20 from St. Louis's Warunga. And in Lane 11, we have Lockman Ming from Our Lady of the Rosary, Maitara. I think Lachlan will be also. Oh, he's a, wheel, uh, yes, a young wheelchair. He's, he's racing wheelchair, which yep. is fantastic. Yeah. 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 John Morris is doing a little bit of instruction up there. He's getting them all into position. Uh, they've got to stop. We've got a full start, boys. Come back. A little bit of excitement there. We carried away. And we lined them up again.
And away. They're off to a good start this time. And we've got our runner in lane five. And I think that is Blake Styles from Port Macquarie. Oh, no, sorry, lane two. Make him. My, my shot has gone through very well. And TF13, so he's a vision impaired student. And we had our runner in lane five from North Coast, which Blake Styles and Bailey Lloyd Small from, sorry, from West, uh, Sydney West, sorry, in lane seven, Noah Ziburis from Nangamay in Sydney West. And it was also a great um, effort there by Lock and Reed, Neil. He yeah, finished he's very, very strongly against the other competitors in that event. I believe we'll now be moving on to the first heat of the girls' 11 to 13 years 100 metres multi-class. That's correct. And we have in lane one, Chloe Hunter, T1 from Panania. Lane two, Margaret Jordan, T13 from Kensington. Lane three, Leilani Northey, a T20 from Cambridge Park. Lane four, Angela Rares, a T20 from Nangus. Lane five, Mackenzie Miller, a T37 from St Mary's Orange. Lane six, Maria Guthrie, a T20 from Mater Day Camden. And in lane seven, Marley Knox, a T20 from Chittaway Bay. And in lane nine, Mia Hogan, a T13 from St Patrick's Albury. Now, Grant, as you, as you know, we would have, we've already seen uh, Chloe Hunter and Mia Hogan today. They featured in the 800 metres um, earlier, and that was a very sh- good win to Mia Hogan over uh, Kylie Hunter, uh, Chloe Hunter, sorry, from Panania. We've had a lot of doubles up now, and yeah. it's quite a packed program for our multi-class athletes, and a lot of these Athletes show their versatility by competing in a range of events. Oh, yeah. So well done to the multi-class athletes. So we have a vision impaired student running in in, in lane two. I'm not sure she, she mustn't have a guide running next to her because they've got uh, runners on either side. She's a TF13, so she's pass, partially sighted. Chloe, the TF01 uh, Chloe Hunter from uh, Panania is a uh, hearing impa- impaired and she has got a, a tapper, a person who will let her tap her when the, when the gun, starter's gun goes off. Uh, Mia Hagen is also a uh, visually impaired athlete with a TF13. And she certainly found her way around the track in the 800, though. She made a, made a magnificent race. And they're away. And as expected, we've got Chloe Hunter in lane one uh, from Panania Primary School and Mia Hogan in lane nine from Spastic Aldbury showing the way. But it's Chloe Hunter, I think, who's going to power away with this one. That's a very strong run from young Chloe. She's gone through in 16.29, which is better than her seed time. Mia Hogan was in second across the line. And then the students came in in a blanket finish if he came across the line there but again it will rely rely on their comparison to the Australian baseline uh, and how that result is decided and well done to Maria Guthrie from Maida D Camden and Maria actually ran carrying her hat Uh, well done to her well I'm sure the the teacher down there uh, Maida D Campbelltown or oh, Camden, uh, Mrs. Rebecca Hanrahan will be very proud of it. Okay, moving on now to, I believe, heat two. Uh, three finals for the girls, um, 11 to 13 years, 100 metres multi class. In lane one, we have Bella Mia Baccarelli in it as a TF1, and she's from Stratford North. Lane two, Annalise Sherry, T13 from Pitt Town. Lane three, Lexi Brown, T47, T46 from Nambucca Heads. Sorry, she's a T47 and F46. My apologies. 
Main four, Melissa Fitzgerald. T20 from Chittaway Bay. Main five, Rosie Henderson. T21 from May to D. Main six, Charlie Sue West. T20 from Murrumburra. Main seven, Crystal Gill. T35 from Casino West. Main eight, Sienna Hag. A T21 from Holy Family Skinner's Point. And in lane nine, Sora Wong, T13 from Putney Public School, Sydney North. Thank you, Grant. And we're relying entirely now on the uh, monitor in our room here because our view of the start line has been totally blocked by the spectators who are trying to protect themselves from the weather. So I can't blame them. Ladies and gentlemen, I'll draw your attention to the presentation area where we are about to award medals to the place getters in the Junior Boys High Jump. Medals today will be presented by Deb Hanson, New South Wales PWSA Life Member. Our bronze medalist with a jump of 1.35 from Warrialda, Hugo Barwick. Our silver medalist, also with a height of 1.35 from Rose Lee, is Finn Leavesley. And our gold medalist, the New South Wales champion for 2023, with a winning jump of 1.38 metres from Jindabyne. Please congratulate Nicholas Whitehead. And we're ready at the start line for our... Oh, they're going to stand up again. This is heat one of the girls, 11 to 13, is it? Oh, no, it's heat two, Grant. Uh, this it's is heat two. Heat two, Neil, yes. Sorry, um, sorry about that. Yep. And what it is is simply having a tow over the line that we've got to be careful of. So here we I, go. I believe we have Sora, Wa Sora Wong from Putney in Sydney North in the... F Lane nine, Neil. So okay, and she got away to a very good start with the runner from North Coast, and then back heads Lexi Brown, who's an a below elbow amputee, has done a magnificent job, and she'll make Amy Winters, one of our para very good Paralympians, who was also from the North Coast, who had a similar disability, a below elbow amputation. Below, yeah. So well, well done to those girls now in heat three. Oh, sorry, heat two. We'll move now on now to heat three. In lane one is Isabella Walsh, who's a T1 from Kaima. Lane two, Kalani McMahon, a T1 from Bomaderry. Lane three, Isabella Windsor O'Keefe, a T38 from Maitland Christian School. Lane four, Jade Reeves, a T37 from Redhead. Main 5, Chloe Smith, a T35 from Windsor Park. Main 6, Eva Lisi Tupamhua from Kalinda, and she's a T20. Main 7, Isabella Feed, T21 from St Joseph's Norton. And in lane 8, Alexia Codling, T20 from Foster. Main 11, we have Ella Morris. Oh, my apologies. Lampton. Hunter. Yeah. Was a T72. <laughs> T72. Ah, uh, it's, it's another uh, frame runner. T72, and that's Ella Morris from Hunter in the Lamp, in Lamp, sorry, from Lampton in the Hunter.
just waiting for to get the, the runners ready for the start. Lane three is out, so that is Isabella Windsor O'Keefe who is not competing. Lexi Brown in the last uh, r- race uh, crossed the line in 14.66. Her seed time coming in was 14.87, so I'm hoping that was a personal best. And we're away, and we've got in lane one Isabella Walsh from uh, Kayama doing very nicely. She's ahead of also South Coast Kalani McMahon. And in third place, we had, I think it was... It's a Riverina competitor now. That's Kalinda, I'm oh, sorry, from Kalinda, Ethelisis Tapamuhu uh, has gone through in third. And we've got our Ella Morris from Hunt Lant- Lantern Public School and Hunter, our second frame runner for the day. And she's done a, a very, a very good job. I have all the girls. <laughs> so well done to those competitors in Heat 3 of the girls 11 to 13 years 100 metres multi-class. We'll now move on to, we believe it will be Heat 1 of the boys 11 to 13 years 100 metres multi-class. We have in lane one, Hunter Lentil, a T1 from Penshurst Public School. Lane two, Jamison Sheather, a T60 from Balgawa North Public School. Lane three, Xavier Wilson, a T12 from Shaw Cove Public School. Lane four is vacant. Lane five, Riley Paul, a T20 from Blacktown West Public School. Lane six, Massimo Casino, a T37 from St Bernard's Botany. Lane 7, Elijah Duckworth, T35 from Lucas Heights Public School. And in lane 8, Matthew Pender Grout, T20 from Bomaderry Public School. So they're our start list for the boys, heat 1 of the 11 to 13 years, 100 metres multi class. So we just have a bit of a delay here, I believe, Neil, while the boys are getting organised. We can see them in the starting area. And I believe they are are awaiting their final instructions as to what heat they'll be in, and then they'll move to the starting area behind their blocks or in front of their box, as the case may be, in athletics. If you're uh, wanting to watch the f- some of the field events, I remind you that you can go to the School Sport and Sports Unit YouTube site and 
select the channel for the field events. We're in a little bit of a hiatus at the moment. With, uh, we're just sorting out the starting lineups for the boys eight, uh, senior, oh, sorry, 11 to 13 multi class students. I'm not sure what the confusion is, but we seem to be having a little bit of action down there at the 100 metre start line. Following these uh, next three heats, or four heats, sorry. Uh, of the boys 11 to 13 100 metre multi class we will move straight into the semi-finals of the eight, uh, 100 metre semi-finals where we will have Mr Breen calling the races as only he can do all depends if he passes he's, he's doing a little bit of extra work here and if he passes Seems to be having a little bit of success at the start line. <coughs> Spot some are jumping. Um. You're right, Greg. You're all good to go? You're all good to go, my friend. <laughs> now, we have already given you the start list of Heat 1, but I will just go through it again for you. It has been a little bit of time since we did it out. We have Hunter Lintong in lane 1, Jamison Sheather in lane 2, Xavier Wilson in lane 3, lane 4 is vacant, lane 5, Riley Paul. Main 6, Massimo Casino. Main 7, Elijah Duckworth. And Main 8, Matthew Pender Grout. So that's our first heat, ready to go on the starting box. They're ready. No way. We have our runner from uh, Hunter in the outside lane, and that is Elijah. Uh, no, sorry, uh, I'm not sure. No. I think it's the Sydney <laughs> North boy might just be in no. front. No, Ooh. Sydney East. It was uh, Elijah Duckworth uh, just ahead of Matthew uh, Pender Grouch from South Coast, and I think the Sydney North boy. That's Jamison Sheeda. In uh, that's very close. Anyway, it was very close. Remembering that the, these are only provisional placings, the times, the final results will be determined through the multi-class classification system. That's correct. And again, Xavier Wilson did himself proud. He's been in just about every event that's over. Right, uh, moving on to Heat 2. Remember there's four finals, four time finals here. Main 2 is Riley Cross T13 from Holy Family Skinner's Point. Main 3, Eddie Clare, T37 from Holy Cross, Helensburg. Main 4, Ivan Tonkin, T20 from Kareen. Main 5, Paul Scott, T20 from Bomaderry. Main 6, Corrado Guthrie, T20 from Maida D. Camden. Main 7, Hayden Reed, T20 from Bedrabong, Western. And in lane 8, Gabriel Buckley, T13 from Scots All Saints.
My apologies, I was distracted for a moment. Uh, I haven't been asked a question by a colleague about the next events coming up. Um, I thought my other colleague might have done the, the, the race, but he didn't. So well, let's move on to Heat 3. Right, moving on now to Heat 3. We have had a few technical difficulties here this morning, but we will press on. OK, so Heat 3. Lane 1, Zane Graham, T1 from Mizero. Lane 2, Kai Davies, T1 from Mona Vale. Lane 3, Patrick Kelly, T43 from St Bridget's, Raymond Terrace. Lane 4, Flynn Sakefield, T20 from Warhope. Lane 5, Leyland Swift, T36 from The Rock Central School. Lane 6, Lachlan Rickard, T20 from Tamworth South. Lane 7, Mason Gardner. T46 from Foster. Lane 8, Tiger Hand. T21 from Frank Partridge, VC. And in lane 9, Skylar Gova. T21 from Annandale. So we have nine runners in this event. Mr Morris has got them organised. And they are now in the starters' hands. And they're away. Oh, the two Sydney boys, North boys have jumped out. They are Kai Davies uh, from Mona Vale and Zane Graham from Lizero. And it's Ty Davies in lane two. And a very good run. And we've got from North West, Lachlan Rickard. And a runner from Riverina comes across the line. And that is... Leyland Swift from The Rock Public School or rock, The Rock Central School. A very, very famous school in the uh, Riverina now. The it rock is. Central it is. School. It is. It's just outside of Cal Can, I think, isn't it, Grant? Uh, not sure, no. I'm not au fait with the Riverina, but I know looking at results over the years at the PWSA, they have featured very prominently in a number of sports. Yes, they, uh, from a number of years, uh, Mr John Ferguson was the principal of The Rock. So moving on now to the final heat, heat four of the boys 11 to 13 years, 100 metres multi-class. In lane one, Quante Glass, T1 from Chatham. Lane two, Sayed Mehdi Hadiri, T1 from Toongabi West. Lane 3, Archie Whalen, T37 from Schofields. Lane 4, Cooper Smith, T35 from Karen Tam, CIS. Lane 5, Caleb Hiscop, T43 from St. Aloysius Chisholm. Lane 6, Edward McPherson, T20 from Henty. Lane 7, Teal Philippic from Hastings Public School. And in lane 8, Jeremiah Middleton, T13 and from Covenant Central School. And we've got a race in three. We've got uh, Dillwire Middleton from the Covenant, but in lane two from Sydney West, Sayed Madiri Hit. Um, Sayed Madi Hayed. Yes, yeah, thank you very much, Grant, for that. Um, and in third position, I'll watch that come through again on the replay. And then give us a replay. Oh, we still got our runner coming. Isn't it? Yep, a uh, solid runner from the North Coast, and he's doing very well. Yeah, he is. He's doing extremely well, and that's Teal Philippek. He's done a great job. And I think Teal's run a whole bunch of races. He this has, week, and he's done extremely well. So all done to Teal. Ladies and gentlemen, that brings us to the f um, f conclusion of those timed finals. We now move to the eight years girls 100 metre semi final. We have two semis in this event. And I believe the Premier caller, Nathan Group Green, is going to take over and take us through these events. Okay.
So, semi-final number one here. The girls, eight years, 100 metres. The only event where they can compete against their own age here. The eight-year-olds ready to go. Semi-final time here on the track. Just a little bit unsteady. That's okay. The girls are nervous and ready for a second attempt here. Mary Sutherland in one, Ruby Lestetto two, Mia Brown three, Rachel Clark four, Faith at a larger five, Darcy Hitchcock six, Abri Tavuki, Shreya Iyer in eight, Amelia Oxley in nine, Addison Galloway on the outside in ten, Sydney West athlete Shreya Iyer off to a really quick start as they move their way through. Looks like the polling representing Mia Brown up there and the two CIS girls, Rachel Clark, Faith Adelaja. Adelaja just starting to push ahead here. Rachel Clark as well will get through to the final. Sydney East in third. That was Darcy Hitchcock there at Bonnet Bay Public School. Doing a great job, 15.58. And that was Rachel Clark's exact time from the prelim as we have a look at the replay. But it is Adelaja getting through. And windier conditions here makes it a bit tougher for our sprinters at the New South Wales PWSA Championship. And haven't they been doing a great job? We've seen our multi-class time finals, our 100-metre semis. We're up to the top 18 in New South Wales. And, uh, geez, I'm going to have some uh, special guests joining us very soon as we get through to these semifinals in for the eight-year-olds. Second semi. I think it's a top two automatic so the 100 metres for the semi-finals to the finals first, second and third sorry automatically through and the next fastest times after that So, underway here, semi-final number two. And on the inside, the Riverina athlete, Kaya Park, away well. Evelyn Widham as well pushing up. It's those two on the inside, Kaya Park. Evelyn Widham also coming through in the centre. The Hunter region athlete, in Sydney North there as well. So that was Ruby Hanley. She might have got there. A little bit slower than the first one, but still ter terrific running. Very close between our leading four competitors there. But only three to automatically qualify through to the finals. You have a look at the replay, and it was lane five. So Ruby Hanley of Maitland Public School in the Hunter region getting across the line. So away here in the first semi-final for the eight years boys in the Sydney West competitor Lewis Lee away well. Ryan Wygun as well. He had a great run yesterday, Ryan, and he's shadowing our race leader here. Looks like he'll still get himself in the spot, but into the final. But the Sydney West competitor, Louis Lee. Adam Vesley as well. Quite strong in the eight years boys 100 metre semi-final. Another one of the long-standing records with this event. As we have a look at the replay. Sydney West, Sydney North, Sydney East. In that order, with one semi still to come. The eight years, boys. And 
top three to automatically qualify through here. So top 18, New South Wales. We started with five heats in a lot of these races. So brilliant effort to be in the top half of the very best that New South Wales has to offer. And we've got plenty more still to come. So semi-final number two for the eight years boys are not mucking around. Nine years boys, sorry. So a really quick start by the Sydney Eastman in the centre there. I think that was Brooklyn Maka Maka there. And we're going through... And Thomas Leslie on the inside of Western Region flying through, but Sydney East will take another win here. Lane six it was. Oliver Lane, my apologies, from Birchgrove Public School. Sydney East. Speaking of Sydney East, we've got one of the team managers here, Mr. Curtis Smith. He's been looking after the Paris. And uh, 168 Paris here. Curtis, talk to us about uh, you had a busy, busy day yesterday. How have they all been going so far? Oh, yesterday was fantastic, Nathan. With, like you just said, 168 uh, multi-class athletes at this year's 2023 uh, New South Wales Athletics Championships. And the heat yesterday really, really brought uh, some of the athletes undone. Um, it's good today, but with the weather, having that overcast change, it's nice and cool. It's amazing to see all those, all those students and that uh, inclusivity of uh, having our multi-class athletes here this year. So it's been fantastic to see and being involved in. Yeah, fantastic stuff. And uh, so we move to our next semi-final. Good to see the semis as well. And with the with the strong para numbers, we've um, we've been able to really see how much it's grown year on year. I remember at Eastern Creek, we had a strong, and you were involved at Eastern Creek as well when they had big numbers there. Um, good to see, not just in the distance events, but we had four and five heats. So, um, what sort of talk to us about the role of a team manager here? Because obviously, I think we've got a fifty-five or something fifty-five team managers from all the regions and associations. What's what's your role? Obviously, before, during, and even after the competition, what are some of the stuff that you you guys have got to do at these uh, state championships? It is that role where you really need to step into it and and take it all in your stride. With like you said before, before the competition starts, it's it's getting those students classified. Um, that's the biggest thing, so they're able to compete at these championships uh, with those results. As you know, we run off percentages. It's not just the fastest time or the or the further distance. It's that classification and percentages. So we'll just jump into our first heat here for the girls' nine years, and we'll just come back to that uh, discussion with the multi-class. Just about set here. Top three automatically through. So away, probably first to rise there, Harlow Conning in the south coast colours, Sydney Southwest, Harlow Putty, and this is a name we've seen so far, and she's already got two records to her name here into the semi-finals, safely through to the finals, no surprise there, 14-2-4, quickest of the reaction is another Harlow, Harlow Conning um, from Jerringong South Coast, I'm sure you've seen, noticed Harlow Putty doing a great job here absolutely flying i reckon she'd have both of us over 100 what do you reckon yeah 14 two point <laughs> point two four in the semi-finals a very nice time heading into that final looking for that third uh, record to take to take home at this year's uh, new south wales athletics championship yeah, well, she did the record in the heats for the 100 so often it's good the kids they, they don't really fox too much but they've got they, she might have something left to give who knows it is well, the toughest race at semi-final, isn't it? You just want yeah. to be in. You want to be in that final, so you leave nothing in the tank for that semi-final. Yeah, it's that one where sort of some of these girls would be expecting, and it's it's sort of hard to know as well because I'm sure you can remember back to the glory days of the eight and nine year old, um, where you've been very competitive at state level competition. So it's one of those things where you don't actually know who you're up against as well. Like some of them would have started in the eights, but a lot of them this would be their first time here. Yeah, travelling all over New South Wales from the far north coast. Mm. Um, down to the south coast, they all come together and it, it brings that competition over the next few years uh, with these competitors heading into year six around that 12 and 13 year mark. So plenty of competition ahead for our eight-year-olds um, as we jump into heat two for our nine girls. A few city north in here.
Oh, really good reaction there. I think that was Efi Rafael of Terry Hills Public off to a quick start. She's holding the lead at the moment. Maybe just creeping through Eva Smith there in the yellow of South Coast on the outside. The CIS athlete, Serafin. Serafin just getting a little bit closer to Rafael there from Sydney North. But she'll safely progress through to the gold medal race in the final. I think it's starting to rain again, Curtis. You've been outside more than me. What have the conditions been like? It is that, that drizzle's been hanging around all morning when we saw our, um, our heats for our relay. It was quite wet on the track, our all, all purpose, um, track that the kids were running on, but that safety really kicks in going around that bend, yes. uh, with those relay baton changes. But yeah, slight drizzle, the wind's starting to pick up now, so challenging conditions out there for our competitors. Definitely the sprinters. I know they like a, a hot track as a fast track. I know the elite runners and the open level, they don't mind if it's 40 degrees plus. So, boys, nine years, and I'm sure you can see about half of them wearing, not wearing, using blocks, and about half not. I think we had a kid in the final before in the 200, in the 12 years, a few of them um, not wearing, uh, I keep saying wearing, using blocks. There's about two or three of them in the final, so I thought that was pretty impressive too, considering the advantage they provide. So, But there's no point trying it. For the first time at state, you've obviously got to use it at zone and region as well. And what is that? What is that advantage? Not coming from a running, <laughs> a running um, history. What is that advantage? Nathan? Oh, I'll try and be technical and pretend I know what I'm talking about. But the explosive power off the start, um, obviously, when you drive phase, normally the first 30 metres, you, you try to stay low anyway. Um, get that centre of gravity low and just being in a lower position at the start does help that that propulsion in the first so it's about the start but some athletes the taller athletes tend to not necessarily get as good a start there are exceptions obviously um, but once they start to find their rhythm Usain Bolt never got a good start really compared to some of the other athletes it took him to the 30 metre mark to really just build up momentum Champion from yeah, it's that split, that split instinct of hearing that, that gun go and you're off and straight into that race and getting that momentum moving because 100 metres does go very quickly. It <laughs> does. And uh, even if it is a longer distance race, like you come from a surf life-saving background, of course, but um, getting to that first can, similar sort of thing, it's that sets yourself up well, it sets your race up well, so that if you do make a mistake later on, then it doesn't matter as much or you're not completely out of it. Yeah, it's a confidence by, booster. Live by the old motto, get in front and stay in front. <laughs> it's always easier from the front rather than... Is that having, how you won your nine-year state title, mate? Yes, having, having, <laughs> to work from the, having to work from the back through the pack to, um, to get that win. Yes. As we're jumping into our first semi-final for our 10 years boys, our nine-year-old boys, nine apologies. Years boys. Nine years boys, first semi-final. <laughs> All right, so a little bit of movement there, but we got them underway. So the South Coast athlete, Jarrah Flack there in the yellow and the inside of him. Uh, Sydney North, Hudson McGregor flying through here. McGregor holding the lead, looking quite comfortable. Shadow there, just held the margin off on Jarrah Flack. They'll both go through some quick running here, 14-5-3. Not sure if it's a headwind or not, but they it tends to be, look like they... And leaning forward maybe a little bit more than what they would be. So it might be a little bit of a headwind. The girls gave them a run for their money there. And yeah. Their first semi-final was 14.54, yeah. so one one-hundredth of a second there. Well, uh, the girls are really, really hanging in there. I'm assuming at that, at, at nine-year-old age as well, you're not, there's not too much of a difference. Obviously, a bit of pride for the boys on the line to not get chicked, but it's... Um, at that age, they're sort of at the same stage of development. It's when they get older that you see this, start to see the differences. Just goes to show the level of athletic ability mm. here at the championships. Athletes, like we said, from far north coast down to the south coast, all coming together for two, two, two jam-packed days of competition. Yeah, how good's it been as well? I've, I've seen, I reckon I've seen more of Western region. I guess I normally involved in the high school stuff, and, and the, it'd be really good to see in the primaries that the Western region and barrier are well represented we had a few we've had a couple of broken hill school, schools here which i thought was pretty cool as well and shout out to anyone watching we're still in school hours aren't we yes still in school it's hours 114 so it's probably around lunchtime so if you but you're in a classroom watching your athletes i know there's been a few people sending through some photos of stopping uh stopping work and having it having a little bit of a 
watch of the live stream when one of his schoolmates is in action on the track or the field here. Hope you're enjoying it. And it's going to be exciting when these relays kick off. I'm sure there'll be a few, a few classrooms with Love the live stream up and going, yelling at the, maybe yelling the, at the screen. Maybe at the school hall, mate. Yeah, school hall. Get the whole school involved, especially yeah. for those, uh, like you said, the Western Region teams. It's like Melbourne Cup race day. That have travelled. Got a good mix of. Of, of regions here. I'll tell you what, Sydney West have been going quite well today. Uh, Sydney North have been the strongest region. Sydney North, McKillop and CIS tend to be the three uh, strong. And Sydney East, of course, but Sydney West have been definitely going well. Got another one here in the centre. He's got a way to pretty well, Oliver Dennis in the yellow there. But just ahead of him, Maximilian. Yao in lane number five, and he's battling out with his Sydney East teammate, Nika, on the inside. But it's Yao who's leading through. Two of the McKillop athletes close quickly, though. Lenny Haywood and Tom Fisher. The Annadale North boy, Sydney East representative. Yep. Max Yo. Just that drive, yeah. that arm drive then, didn't he? He's not the, he's not the biggest biggest structure out there in the in that race. Like you can see him walking off with the boy next to him, but... Yeah. Well, he's got some he's got some speed, and that's what you need here in the 100 metres. Sure do. Pure speed. Pure speed, nothing else. And you see all sorts of techniques, don't you? Sometimes at that young age, you see people who are not, who are, you know, textbook perfect. Just exactly a bit, of raw, what you just a bit of raw talent. Some people just muscle their way through like they're... A bit of raw talent this age. Usually the kids that are the quickest in the 100, the 200, the 400, the 800, they're just... Just well, built, built to run. Well, that's the thing with these, because we've got heat semis and finals of the one, two relay, and some of them, because they're so multi-talented, they'll they'll do the eight as well, or they'll do field events. So over two days, they'll be they'll be knackered by the end of it. A nice was, nice cruisy day at school tomorrow. Yeah. I'm sure a fair few of our our competitors that have travelled will spend the night and cruise home. You got any kids from your school here? No, uh, we had one yesterday. Yeah, in Novak. Uh, Pekoski in the senior boys shot put. How'd he go? He he made the he had his three, he had his three throws. I think a personal best from the oh, Sydney. Beautiful. So what else can you ask for? That's it. Just get better and better each time you undertake something. About Ten years girls We've got Florence Cheng, Daisy Ryan, Rain Ross, Madison Cohen, Maya Tanko. And we've seen Lana Bozic, strong semi. This one Ruby Keat, Matilda Cantrell, Leon Baruga, Brianna Black in their underway. So. CIS competitor Madison Cohen got away quite well. Now it's Maya Tanko. The impressive run in the 200 earlier, and you can see exactly why because of the margin she's opened up on the field. Very strong running. Western Region got through for second. Well done to Matilda Cantrell from Orange Public School, I think. 14-3. Uh, the Marina North Four. girl. Marina North. There we fellow, go. Fellow shy resident like yes. ourselves. Yes, oh, you gave it away, mate. I was I don't, I made a Cronulla Sharks reference earlier, but there you go. Miranda North, doing a great Over job. Jump. Crowd's pretty good here. This is the first time Peter to say. I think we've pretty much packed the house. What's the atmosphere been like out there? What's the? I know parents get right into it. We've got the grandparents here as well. The, I reckon they've dragged out. It's a day out, isn't it? Can't bring dogs, I don't think, into the venue. You can't no. bring your pets. Now, the, the atmosphere is fantastic. Just before I undertook um, the 100 metres with one of my uh, multi-class athletes, Isabel, and um, the classification. They really bring the energy they into do. it, don't they? But the concentration levels were, as I was <laughs> a running aide, there wasn't much concentration in the crowd, but you, you definitely could hear um, everyone getting behind, not only our multi-class athletes uh, when they're do undertaking their, their running races, but everyone's getting behind each other because they, they just want to see see the best that they can get in here at the New South Wales Championships. That's what we're really getting at these two days. Yeah, and they're at that age where you don't need to be a superstar. If you're, if you're enjoying yourself and you get a couple of mates out of it, some lifelong friends, it's sort of almost the more important thing. So semi-final two, Ava Long on the top of your screen there in lane one, Charlotte Harper in two. Taylor Tiafilo in three, Lara Hooper four, Ava Jupp in five, Havana Gray in six, Imogen Wynn seven, Nikesha Williams in eight, Chloe Pudd in nine, Phoebe Dobson in lane ten. So this is the
Yep. All right, just about set. Second semi final. Underway, really quick start from Sydney North of Anna Gray in the centre of the track up alongside her as well. Ava Jupp of Miranda North Public School here. These two are leading them through. Jupp just got the edge here on Gray. Gray trying to come back at her. They'll both qualify close for that third spot though. Image and win from Shelley Public School. Nikisha Williams of Riverina in the black and white to her right shoulder was. That's our fastest time so far in our, Is it? In our semi-finals. There you go. Starting from the eights. Uh, up into our 10 girls now. So another great run from a Sydney East competitor. So they'll qualify the two fastest for the final there. Um, Maya Tenko from Carrying by North Public School and Ava Jupp from Miranda North for our 10 girls 100 metres semi final. So moving on to the 10 year old boys. This is where it really starts to heat up here. Our record of 12.85. That is, that is travelling. <laughs> That is travelling in that 100 metres. 12.85 as a 10-year-old boy. I wish. I yes. wish. Oh, you'd match it, I reckon. You were quite the athlete back then. You still are, Curtis. If I was starting at the 30 metre mark, I think <laughs> I'd just have a chance of getting across there in that 12.85. Bring, bring the finish line forward. That's it. <laughs> so our first semi-final for our 10-year-old boys at 100 metres, we have Cameron Falconer from McKillop. Jalen Zariki, Tomasi Kesu, Kravitz Fatii, Lachlan Chapel, Patrick Bofo, Jack Kane, Benjamin Sparado, Teddy Sharp from Shore Prep, our CIS competitor, and Edward Carolyn from St. Joseph's Wewa, representing Polding. So there are 10 boys that will be taking on our semi final one. We're just getting the all clear from our starter as the boys take their positions either on their blocks, ready to race. Lachlan Chapel, 200 metre champion, starts in the middle. McKillop in the blue. I think Lachlan could really give this one a crack. Coming in with the seed time of 12.96. That's true. Just yeah. had a bit of a bit of a blunder from the boys. All it takes is a little mm. bit of a tailwind, and I reckon I reckon he could challenge that. 12.85. Bit of nervous energy yeah. on the start line. Never the most enjoyable thing, the, the energy on the start line. As we get the boys find their position, ready to go. It's all happening. Semi-final time, like we said before, it's it's the toughest race because you know you need to make that final. Once you're in that final, you just give it your best. Well, for some of them, the achievement will be making the final. Top 10 fastest they get a little, in New South Wales. They, get a, you just see they get a little pin thing. Oh, it's fantastic, isn't it? Well. That's pretty Especially cool. with our, the, uh, our multi-class students. I know this morning when we are doing the junior girls... Uh, shot put our eight finalists received that and their eyes just lit up and made they their put day it on their chest. Put straight on, on straight on the chest and then into the into their final three throws. So it's a good little initiative that uh, our New South Wales school sports brought in, honouring those students that have made that have made that final. It's, it's a big achievement. This is where you really start to get nervous if you're one of the other competitors. You need to settle those nerves down. A couple of big breaths. Well, it's the inexperience, which is why they give them the chance to have this one false start rule. So sometimes it's deemed unsteady. So when it's unsteady, it's not a false start. But just getting it talking to here, more of an education than anything else. I'm trying to enforce anything. Man from Riverina looking like he's preparing for a boxing match here. Trying a couple of uppercuts. Man from McKillop, very energetic. Make sure his body stays warm. So semi final one, 10 years boys. So away. We're away. Yeah, very quickly. In Sydney West, uh, Patrick Bofo got the reaction there. But Lachlan Chapel, once he get into his run, and we talked about Usain Bolt being a bit sluggish off the start, but then absolutely striding into his rhythm. How comfortable does that look? It's 13.72. Got some limbs for a 10-year-old boy. He does. Some Bernard's Botany Pub... Uh, not public school. Uh, Catholic primary school, McKillop Region. It's good to see the boys getting around each other after that 
after that race high five. And look at the strides there. He's captained by at least at least two to three metres by that finish. And we, our polling athlete, Edward Caroline, finished very strong leaning into that line. You can't you can't slow down until you pass that line, can't you? Certainly can't. So that's our first semi-final for our 10-year-old boys. Struggled to get away for a little bit there. It's about three three attempts, but we got all our all our competitors away uh, for that first semi-final with Lachlan Chapel um, running out there in first place and Edward Caroline in second. So they'll they'll most definitely qualify for our final, but it's all about those those last seven spots up for grabs uh, as we head into semi-final number two. We have William Shin from Cranbrook. Nicholas Whitehead, Ethan Foster in lane four. We have Oliver Shalui, lane five, Ethan Costa, Nate Russo, William Diminiso, Jensen Barrett, Dominic E, and Samuel Sue. Costa and Russo being good. Two names that have been very prominent. They are the two fastest from this. In the championship lanes, five, six, six. along with Oliver Shalui in lane four from St. Joseph's Merriweather. So the boys take their spot. Uh, in their starting blocks as we wait for the gun to go off. So away in the McKillop man in the centre, Ethan Costa. Away well, he's got plenty of league speed for a shorter stature man, Oliver Scullioli coming through from Poldy and Nate Russo on the outside. Costa, no! It won't be Costa, it'll be Oliver Schooley of St. Joseph's Merriweather. Poldy left it to the last little bit, didn't he? Just yeah. the end. It only takes it only takes that last centimetre at the end, that large disc effort. As Phil Gould always says, it's a game of inches. That's it. It's a game of inches. <laughs> this athletic track, it gets a workout from start to finish in that 100 metres. Every little bit counts that effort that the boys are putting in. So there's our two semi-finals, run and one for our 100 metres. So it'll be our top 10 athletes heading into the finals of our 100 metres this afternoon. That's where it really starts to heat up in that finals. Well, it sure does. That's when the crowd becomes electric. It's starting to starting to pack out. Nathan, just turning behind us here in the little commentary booth. There is people everywhere jam-packed in. I know it's relay day. Yes. Have you ever seen a school bring their whole students out here to get behind their four students that represent them in their relays. Mate, relay day is the highlight by a long shot. We have the GPS championships here and we fill it out, but I reckon there's 6,000 people here. Absolutely phenomenal here at PWSA. Great to have Curtis Smith in the commentary box with us here. Our guest uh, Sydney East team manager, para manager, doing a great job here as well. As we move into the next of our semi-finals for the 11 years girls. Lane one, we have Mackenzie Crouchman. Lane two, Chelsea Wright. Lane three, Eva Colvin. Lane four, our Sydney East athlete, Maggie Trina. Chloe Anthony in lane six. Olivia Toshak in lane seven. Ella Robertson, lane eight. Molly Tom, lane nine. And in lane ten from Sydney East, from McCallum's Hill, is Lindsay Ajiblono. So that's our first semi final now. When we had our multi class athletes participating yesterday in their shot put with these 200 metre heats. These 11-year-old girls were flying around the bend and down the straight in that 200, so it'd be very interesting here uh, to see which girls will qualify through for our 100-metre final later on this afternoon. So they're always the same athletes who do well in both, particularly as they get older in the juniors. It's less of a difference, but he's so fickle, and you've got to be right on the money here for on the gun. So away here, Marnie Lawrence, Maggie, Maggie Trainer as well, maybe just getting left behind there, but it is Marnie Lawrence of CIS and Chloe Anthony on her outside, holding narrowly second place, but what a performance there from Marnie Lawrence. Claremont representative had a very successful, super jam-packed program, as we've mentioned before, the sprint events, and she has just held her form really well. Talk about a night of recovery after a big day yesterday. She's obviously managed that well to be able to continue to look like it's her first race of where the does, day. Where does that fatigue start to set in with all those, all those races? We know that they ran three, two, uh, three 200 metres uh, yesterday to make that final this morning, participating in that final. Then we have our relays as well. 
uh, into our 100 semi-final and our final later this afternoon. So it's it's about a kilometre worth of running. No, for, it's for, for a only sprinter. For, for only, yeah, for a sprinter, that is a lot. You know, the sprinters don't necessarily love running a long way. For only 13 seconds in the final. Spoke to some kids at Endeavour Sports High School the other day. Some of the sprinters, and they had to do a 10-minute jog, and they thought it was hell. <laughs> As we see our presentation area here, it looks like the junior boys are the discus or shot put. That's been... Completed by our athletes here. So we're really starting to knuckle down and get through all our events on day two of the 2023 New South Wales Athletics Championships out here at SOPAC in Homebush. Jason Wall Smith, the Executive Officer, New South Wales PLSA, presenting medals there. Busy man. Very busy man. I wouldn't want his job. Very flat out. All of our secondary... All... Well, that's the other thing as well, like our regional sports coordination... As semi-final number two is away, we have our Sydney West uh, athlete out in lane seven, uh, Tilly Rupert. But we have our competitor from CIS uh, in the middle here. It looks like Holly Braddock just getting across the line there in lane five in a time of 14.12. So just a bit off the pace from our semi-final number one. But I think Holly's done just enough uh, to put her... Book her place in the final for our 11 years girls 100 metres. That's a close finish. Super close. The South girl school, South Coast girl had it for a long time there. Just the last 20 metres or so. CIS getting the upper hand. And uh, Marty Lawrence, the time on the board there from the previous race. Not that one, just completed. 13.37 her winning time. As we move on to the 11 years boys. George Lambusis being strong. The Ramsgate boy. The Ramsgate second, boy. Second, yes. Uh, second this morning in his 200 metres. Um, he was flying at our Sydney East Championships only two weeks ago, so it'll be interesting to see if George can book his spot in the final this afternoon with a nice, strong performance here in the semi final. One for our 11 year old boys with a record of 12.25 in a famous year of 1998. Why um, is it famous, Curtis? Oh, Curtis was born in 1998, (laughs) all those years ago. So it has been a while since that record's been broken, but I'm sure these boys have that thought in the back of their mind that they want to go out and break records to have their name up in lights and look back in many years and think 2023 was the year when I broke the under 11 years. Story to tell the grandkids. Story to tell the grandkids. Always a story behind something. Just about set here, it's the final one, 11 years boys. <laughs> Underway, and it is Lambusis who just got the jump there on his inside, Jack Spencer as well, pushing up, probably in second at the moment. CIS is Lucas Hill on the outside, also this is where it all counts. That last 20 metres drive through the line, there it is, 13.43. Our Sydney East competitor followed by our Sydney North competitor just on the inside of him, Ariki. Uh, sorry, I apologise. Jack Spencer on the inside there of George Lambusis from Ramsgate in a time of 13.43 to book his spot into the final later on this afternoon. Did a great job. 12.82 he did in the prelims, interesting. So that was a super quick prelim run. It'd be interesting so it to see what, headwind. what be headwind, headwind they are running into. It's getting quite breezy now. You see all the athletes... <laughs> Shivering on their way down to the start line. It's a long walk. Long, nervous walk. Particularly, as we have spoken about earlier, it's a big stadium. It's a big occasion for some of our country athletes who wouldn't have competed at this stage before. But, again, for this age group, it's their first or second time here anyway. So experience is uh, not that great. They're all sort of in the same boat from that perspective. It is that big experiencing earlier on in the year with our New South Wales Swimming Championships uh, over in the pool. Some of those kids haven't seen pools like that before. Just a local no. pool they're used well, to they're swimming and they dive in and it's about 13 metres deep and they're thinking to themselves, oh, I haven't had this experience before. It's a fast pool though. It is a very fast pool. And there's no there's no, head Three, in the, there's no headwind in the pool. 3% speed increase, studies have shown. Mm. <laughs> Semi-final number two for our 11-year-old boys 100 metres. We have Edward Burke. Steve Choho, 
Ethan Sulman, Ariki Wingy, Ethan Warner, Ryan Jose, William Bailey, Victor Obgana, Miura Nalapu'u, and Owen Tang. So there are 10 boys that make up our semi final number two field. I do know earlier on the year we have Ariki was at their under 11s rugby league championships, played out in the centres. Big tall, big tall thing, and he was he was extremely fast when he had some open space. So it'll be interesting to see how he goes here in, in his straight line running. Very interesting to see, obviously, Josh, Josh Addo Carr. We know how quick he is compared to rugby league players. How does he compare to sprinters here? So start off, he's got those big legs moving. You can see him there driving. That's a Ariki in the middle, I think. He's really starting to pull away now from his uh, fellow Sydney North competitor. So it is a Ariki. I called that one before the gun <laughs> went at 13.68. That crosses the line. So a fantastic run. Like I said, when he had that open space in the footy field, not many were catching him, and he's shown it just there. Well, you can't coach speed, can you? You can coach pretty much anything else in footy, but speed is the X factor. That's it. It makes a difference between the good and the great. It's pretty convincing in the, in the end there. So there's our two semi-finals are run and done. Just waiting to see the times from both semis to see which 10 students have booked themselves into the finals that will be run later this afternoon and trying to break that record held in 1998 of 12.25. Yep. Next one, Mia Wood, been very impressive so far in this competition. And... Uh, So, girls, 12 years now. Final year of primary school. Heat or well, semi-final number one. Quinn Nayland in one. Chloe Britton in two. Tilly Giaco Petit in three. Sophie Housen in four. Mia Wood in five. Larae Amu in six. Sarah Meta in seven. Louisa Meta. Sisters, maybe. Cousins, at least. So, fourth represent Same school. So... Gives it away a little bit. And Ava Pepper in nine, Olivia Bailey in ten. So we have our one and two from last year in the 11-year-old girls. Next to each other here, Sophie and Mia, representing Sydney East. So that rivalry each year when they come back, and I'm sure little athletics, but here it is, semi-final number one. They both went together, the Sydney North girls there. That was an interesting one. Jumped together. A few fancy shoes there at the start line, aren't they, Nathan? Oh, sure does. The brighter the colour, the faster they go. Something like that. There was one race where every single athlete had pink shoes. Identical. Here they go as they take their, take their blocks and their stances. Do you put the cones out at your school carnival like this? Oh, I hope I hope that the kids stay in their lane. There are there are a few lines going through those lanes, so it quite, could be quite confusing. Is there a way? Semi-final number one, a great start there by Sophie uh, Housen from Cronulla, but watch her fellow Sydney East counterparts start to chew them up here in the middle. Here she comes. Really striding out now, straight through the middle of them. Like you said, it's those, it's those starts that make the races. Jeez, you uh, called that well. If me, if me, it would get that start in the final. I think, I think that record's going to be a little bit of trouble. She's a very smooth mover and just so much power and strength through that core. We know how much core and functional strength is important in every single sport because it just alleviates the pressure off your lower body a bit and sprinters. Core and glute power is absolutely everything, and Mia Wood really strong in the back end of that race. Just looking out onto the track and field, there's so much still going on here. There is. Day two, we've got our shot put going, our discus going, our, our long jump over in the sand uh, out the back there near our hill. And it's amazing here to see the crowd really starting to jet jam packed, as we said before. You can cast your eyes over everything as our it, real it, ladies it, it, are has, starting to come. We said it before, it feels like you're at the footy. The kids have got the hot chips here, the chicken nuggets. It's. It's uh, the kids have already run their race, of course, or thrown their shot put. I think that's what half of them come for. It's I either think that so. Macca's, you do this, you get this distance, you can get that Macca's on the way home. <laughs> hey, that's what I look forward to. I still, oh, still I'm look sure forward you to. Do. <laughs> still look forward to it. As we look at semi-final number two, we have Eleanor McCann, Audrey Hessop, Layla Oliver, Sienna Valesa, Madison McWilliams, Jency Hicks, Sophie Keys, Matilda Sheedon, Malaya Peckham, and Katani Milligan. Round out our semi-final number two. Another, I another, another nervous moment there. We've had about four or five, at least, at least one in each age group. Mm. Be fantastic to see 
one of our regions get all three athletes into into that final, just showing the dominance between our athletes here. So remember, it is top three automatic. Limited other automatic qualifying positions. See what the start team decide. It's Barry walks out. Malaya Peckham there, our Western, our Western student. What do you reckon he's saying? Just trying to get every inch. I think he's just ring, reassuring her and saying, last chance. So Malaya really needs to calm those nerves down and just listen for that gun. And when it goes, that's when it's showtime. Semi-final number two, our 12-year-old girls. We have our 12-year-old boys, two semi-finals, and then we have our 13-year-old athletes as well, and that'll round out our 100-metre semi-finals before we jump straight back into our relay races where, where the crowd is going to be engaged for at least an hour of some great competition with all our schools coming together. I think we call it the hour of power, Curtis. Hour of power. Look out. So the girls are ready. There they are, nice clean start there, lane one. Eleanor McCann from Sydney West as our Sydney North student. I believe she was the winner of the 200 metres. Coming through the middle there, Sienna Valesa. Really pushed there from the south coast, Madison McWilliams, but it is Sienna Valesa there from St Ives. Our Sydney North student, the winner of the 200 metres earlier this morning, Nathan. So the legs are warmed up and she's ready to go, trying to make it the double going back from the 200 metres uh, into the 100 metres final this afternoon. So good luck to Sienna and the rest of the girls there that qualified for our 12-year-old girls as we jump into our 12-year-old boys now. Two semi-finals, as Nathan previously mentioned, the top three make their way straight to the final and then we look back at our fastest qualifying times to fill those other four positions. This is where the... The speed really starts to get to its top here. The 12-year-old boys looking at the record of 11.87 uh, in 2016 held by Brody Perry from Musselbrook. Does his name still ring a bell running running around now? It wasn't too long ago, seven years ago. He'd be around yeah, it's, that Well, it's, it's hard to tell now. sometimes because a lot of athletes at this age, because they are you know naturally quick, they'll be picked up by the sports as well. We hope they stay in athletics. Um, as well, but obviously there's so many things to choose from, so many opportunities and gradually every year as we see new sports added to the Olympic program, the Primary School Sports Association and Combined High Schools have modified those pathways and make sure that they stay contemporary with the sports they do offer and the pathways they provide as well. So how what I've, used to I've be enjoyed I've the, enjoyed my school carnival. How do I how do I get into athletics? Nathan? Well, there's a few. Well, there's obviously little athletics for this age, and there's also athletics, senior athletics clubs, and there's opportunities through both pathways to reach national level, as there is in school sport. Top three in this event, school sport Australia championships, as we get underway here. And very quick reaction here. It looks like the City West competitor, John Espinita, he has been so quick. Talk about dominance. Look how stacked and, and composed he is as he works towards the line. He's just so professional in the way he goes about it and really relaxed. It's sort of, it's he's got a unique style, but it's effective. 1267. Everything's moving, that's for sure, and it is moving yeah. quick. It is. It's pumping, and he's very linear in how he moves. Nothing, no wasted energy out to the side. It's very linear. Foot strike right underneath the hips where you can propel yourself forward. He's got best. that build, doesn't he, already? He's a 12-year-old. He does. Muscles on muscles. That's our second... Our first semi-final, sorry, for our 12-year-old boys. So we're heading into our second semi-final. But as previously mentioned, we have our record held in 2016 of 11.87. I think it's going to be tricky for these these competitors to beat that record today because that breeze is really settling in here. Still overcast uh, out at SOPAC for our 2023 New South Wales Athletics Championships for New South Wales School Sport. Like Nathan said, we have our competitors, our top three that'll go and represent New South Wales down in Tasmania, I believe. Yep. It's amazing to see so many of our competitors from all different regions undertaking all the different athletics 
components of our discus, our high jump, long jump, shot put, all our running distances of 100, 200, 400, 800 and 1500 here over a packed two days. Everyone coming together to show show their talents as we have our second semi ready to go. Few of our few of our competitors on blocks, few standing starts. So here we go, semi final number two. Let's see who's going to qualify for the final later on this afternoon. Another great start there by our CIS competitor, uh, Sebastian Duddle from Kings, but it is our holding competitor there in lane five. It's William Holden that crosses the line in 12.93. Another unusual running style. Yep. Again, you, there's been a lot of races where after the 50 metre mark, you've seen a few really start to come into their running. And because you've got such stiff, different stages of development, it's hard at this age as well because you've got kids who are half the height of others but somehow still manage to stay in contention. So when they hit their, when they hit their peak and, and grow and their, obviously their growth of rate of development they're hitting puberty at a later rate then they'll be forces to be reckoned with by the time they're mid-teenage years so watch out for them but it's all about trying to keep things into perspective and enjoy the moment here at New South Wales PWC and that's what we're seeing so many of our athletes doing on the track and field 2300 competitors in almost a thousand schools across this great state of New South Wales the best state of New South Wales here so Nathan, it's been a pleasure, but duty calls. I have to head off oh. to our multi-class discus for okay. our senior girls. So good to I'm have you, love mate. you and leave you. Good and to I have may you. May see you this afternoon. So I'm going to hand over. Thank you for your time. Love your work. Curtis. Enjoy it. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you to Curtis. So we are up to the girls' 13 years, 100 metres, semi-final number one. Kelsey Anderson in one, Katie Urine in two, Chloe Gregg three, Jasmine Young, Koisha Morris, Sonia Dewey, Sean Tornling, Joanna Hall, Cassidy Mason, Lucy Anderson. And underway here, South Coast athlete Jasmine Young from Beagie got the jump. The Berarina athlete Kosha Morris up alongside her. And it is Kosha Morris from Western Region, ladies and gentlemen, who is storming away. Look at the determination on her face. Well done, 14-2-1. And qualify through to the girls' 13 years, 100-metre state championship for New South Wales, Peter Lassay. How good was that? Well done, and a convincing win in the end. Two heats here, two semis, I should say, sorry. And we'll see what the girls can do as we go to another medal presentation. From Balgala North in Sydney North, our silver medalist, Jamison Sheetha. And our gold medalist, the New South Wales champion from 20, for 2023 from Lucas Heights. Please congratulate Elijah Duckworth. So underway here in semi-final number two. And the South Coast competitor, Honor Grout from Bomaderi Public School. She's got the edge at the moment, but Caglioa might say something different. Oh, that is the closest one we've seen so far, without a doubt. Girls, 13 years, 100 metres, semi-final number two, delivered. Let's have a look. Let's try and pick it, Grant. Who's your pick? Let's have a look. New South West. <laughs> oh, you're right. I reckon, yeah, I reckon she got there. Yeah, there you go. Just fantastic finish there. Very, very good. Sydney Southwest. What do you reckon? We've got the the Bar TV crew. Sydney Southwest, is it? 
Yep. We could almost have a photo finish up here as well. When they they can you can pause it, can't you? Can you? So this is the boys' four, 13 years, 100 metres semi-finals. Heat one. This must nearly be the end of our semis, Nathan. Yep, two to go. Two to go. So our start list for this first heat is in lane one, Kelsey Anderson from New Belong West. Lane two, Katie... No, that's not right. This is a boys' event, so... All right, we have Nate. Okay, we have Nate Withers in lane one, Ethan Lanska in lane two, Cabello Groves in lane three, Simon Rogan lane four, Javier Kama lane five, Dimitri Du lane six, Noah Cook lane seven, Martin Figaro lane eight, Haman Sebastian Sanjid Abbasan lane nine, and Brody Watman lane ten. So Sydney North away to the best of the starts here. Javier Kama. Uh, Sydney North on the inside. The St. Michael's Daniloquin athlete Simon Rogan holding down second. He's been chased hard though. Sydney North takes the win. Javier Kama. Sydney North getting one and three. With polling in the middle, Simon Rogan getting himself a spot in the final two. 13 22. And moving on to heat two, we have Jaden Westcombe from North Kellyville. In lane one, Cohen Schleibs. Lane two from Mullion. Lane three, Jake Berkner from Maria Park. Lane four, Tristan Darmy, Yandor College. Lane five, Dilwa Zagla, Naringa. Lane six, Tyler Davis, Point Queer. Lane seven, Tanner Ramsey, Kendall. Lane nine, Damien Coglin Berg, our lady the star C. Terrigal. And lane ten, Liam Belfield from Belair. Semi-final two, the last of the semis for the 100 metres. So holding till they're steady. Underway here and CIS athlete Tristan Daly away quite well. Here comes Dilwa Zagla of the North Coast and Zagla's got the lead. Pulls away even more, takes the win, dips towards the line, 13-6-9. Not quite as quick as the first, but that will put himself definitely in contention for a PWSA podium when it does come to the final. That round out our second of two semis. Pretty impressive here, Grant. Look at him go. A good win. Good and very close for second there between the boy from Sydney East. Oh, who do you reckon? Let's pick another one. CIS. Let's have a look. I don't think we'll have another look no, at it. Um, can we have another look, guys? We, we, I reckon CIS maybe. Mm, well, we'll see what happens. <laughs> see what happens. The photo finish team, very experienced. We've got some some of the best. We've got the photo finish operators who do the Australian Championships here. Rob Jones over there, in Athletics New South Wales, and very ably assisted. Daniel Warren, I believe, is in there as well. I'd also like to give a shout-out to Sue Stevens. Who yes, is the manager of the Meet Manager program, and Sue's job is to compile all these um, students into their races, and she does an absolutely magnificent job. So well done to Sue, and thank you for your help over many years. All right, so we have wrapped up the 100 metre semis. So next up, what do we got next up on the track? Yeah, four by one hundred meter relay semis. That's what we've got. How yeah, can you forget that? So, just a reminder: field event action stream number one and two, day two of the New South Wales PWSA Championships at Sydney Olympic Park.
Athletic Centre. It's been a great day so far. Looking forward to plenty more action still to come. And they're all finals, I think, after these 4x100 relay semis. I think we've got all finals from here on in. And over in the field, just for information of the field stream, we have the Junior Boys Multiclass Discus. And on your screen, you might see them heading over towards discus cage number two. And that's where the discus will be, well, the disc will be thrown. We have a bit of a lull in proceedings at the moment whilst the relays are being organised. It's a huge job, the relays, and if anyone's been up to the marshalling area or the call room, uh, you'll understand that uh, there's a fair bit of logistics that goes into getting the students under the track and particularly into their mains and also over to the change points. Our third place getter and bronze medalist from Chittaway Bay is Craig McDonald. Another presentation being made now. We'll be way down our next event on the track. From Stratfield North in Sydney East, Stephen Carrozza. Peter Carney, Championship Director, and New South Wales Peter Blissey, convener. Making the medal presentations here. And New South Wales Champion for 2023 from Carryong in Sydney North. Please congratulate Dylan Clark. Now for our final field event, Junior Boys Multiclass Discus. That is field event 37, Junior Boys Multiclass Discus. Okay, moving on now to the girls 8 to 10, 4 by 100 metres relay. This is semi final number one in lane one, St Anthony's Covelli. Lane two, Helensburg. Lane three, Shell Harbour. Lane four, Oran Park. Lane five, Jeringong. 
Main 6, Ellison. Main 7, Our Lady of the Sacred Heart. Randwick, Main 8, Avalon. And Main 9, St Matthews, Mudgee. Realize. Okay, so we're into heat one of the girls. Eight to ten years for the 100 meter relay. Semi final one, Nathan Breen to do the calling. Away in semi final number one, junior girls four by one. St. Anthony's Clavelli, Helensburg, Shell Harbour, Oren Park, Jeringong, Ellison, Our Lady of Sacred Heart, Avalon, St. Matthews at Mudgee on the outside. Pretty slick, the Sydney North team. Avalon at the moment, pretty good as well. Is on the outside of Sydney Southwest, we've got Jeringong in the south coast who've really started to move well along, and also Shell Harbour, both south coast teams into the second change quite quickly. And Sydney North on the outside, still moving well. A Lady of Sacred Heart of McKillop. Top three to automatically qualify through to the final here from the semi-final one, Junior Girls Championship. In the 4 by 100 into the anchor leg. Sydney Southwest is still up there with Oren Park. In fact, they're very much up there into the anchor leg now on the outside of the lane, looking very smooth here. We've got four or five in contention on the outside of Oren Park. We've got Jeringong pushing up, trying to challenge for this lead position. I reckon she'll get there. She does. So taking the win. In semi-final one is Jeringong from Oran Park, Sydney Southwest, 59-98. Wowza. It was a good one, 59-98. They've taken four one-hundredths off their time from the heat. And on the inside of them was Oran Park. They've definitely got under the, or better than their heat time as well. So moving on now to heat two of the semi-finals of the girls, eight to ten, four by one hundred metres relay. In lane one, Queenwood. Lane two, Woodport. Lane three, Orange. Lane four, Our Lady the Fatima Carringbar, which I believe is Nathan's old school, his Alban Mater. Lane five, Kalani Heights. Lane seven, six, Lily Pilly. Lane seven, St Patrick Swansea. Lane eight, Pimble Ladies College. And lane nine, Burrinier Bay. So change two is nearly ready. Change three, not far away from a start. Semi-final number two. It's girls junior four by 100 metre relay. 59.98 the winning time from Jeringong in semi-final number one. South Coast doing a great job there. All changes are ready. So John Morris has given the signal, Nathan, to the starters. They're ready to go. So 
Academy final two underway. Queenwood, Woodport, Orange, Our Lady Fatima, Kalani Heights, Lily Pilly, St. Patrick's, Pimble Ladies College, Barney Bay on the outside. Lady Fatima got it away pretty well and also on the outside holding nicely is Barney Bay Public School. The wider CIS Pimble Ladies College also in good contention here. Both the McKillop teams. Our Lady Fatima as well pushing through the outer lanes at the moment. So it's the Sydney East team, Barney Bay still up there. Also Lily Pilly Public School it is actually coming through, flying around the bend here. Pimble Ladies College in the white. The ones with the target on their back at the moment here. Creeping on the inside as well is Woodport Public School as well. From Sydney North Region. But it is a Lady of Fatima carrying bar level or just behind at the moment from Lily Pilly Public School who's got the lead. Kalani Heights charging up the middle. She might get into second. And maybe even into first, not quite. So Sydney East Lily Pilly Public School gets the win, 59.82. Slightly quicker than the first semi-final time of 59.98. Well done to all our teams. Semi-final two for the junior girls. The replay here. <laughs> I like the slow-mo replay. We're going now to the start list for the boys. 8 to 10, 4 by 100 metres relay in lane 1, St. Joseph's Wee War. Lane 2, Hamilton South. Lane 3, Benora Point. Lane 4, Harrington Park. Lane 5, Annandale North. Lane 6, Scots College. Lane 7, Our Lady of the Sacred Heart, Randwick. Lane 8, Holy Family, Menai. And lane, lane 9, Alambi Heights. So in terms of the times, the seed times coming in from the prelims, pretty even as you'd expect across both the semi-finals here. Fastest through, Balgola Heights were only a hundredth of a second quicker than Shaw Prep from the heats. We also had three other teams in the 59 second range as well. That's Camden South in lane 7, Griffith East in lane 8 and Beaumont Hills City West in lane 4. Moving on to, uh, let's have a look at the times here, Nathan. So our fastest qualifier on, from the heats looks like it will be possibly 15, uh, we're in heat one or heat two, heat two. Okay, so our fastest time in heat two will be, looks like 58.32, Belgar Heights. So on to the back straight now, and it's a pretty good start here by the Sydney East team in the centre lane. It could be Barney Bay moving up here as well as we push up. Well, heat one, sorry. St. Joseph's Weewa coming through. Pretty even across the board. McKillop on the outside. Holy Family at Menai moving well on the outside of them. We've got the Sydney North team. Lambie Heights as they work their way around for the junior boys. Four by one. Very even as they head into the top of the straight. The CIS team has got College coming through. And on the inside of them, it is Annandale North. And we've seen this man in action before plenty of times here today. McKillop on the outside as well. Holy Family coming through. And he will take the win here, 57-45. That's a quick run. And qualifying through for the final. And semi-finals top three automatically through. The standard is ridiculously high here in the junior boys. 4 by 100 similar to the girls. And so we see on the scoreboard, not on the scoreboard, the screen here, replay. Ooh. Sydney North getting through for second. And Sorry, I, I pointed you in the wrong direction. What was semi-final one? I was wrong. I was wrong. 
That was wrong, wrong, wrong. <laughs> we'll move on now to heat two of the semi finals. In lane one, Yowie Bay. Lane two, St Mary's Casino. Lane three, Baroneer Bay. Lane four, Bowman Hills. Lane five, Balgawa Heights. Lane six, Shaw Prep. Lane seven, Camden South. Lane eight, Griffith East. And in lane nine, Winona. Our fastest qualifier from the heats. It looks like it will be the team from Shaw Prep. Oh no, the team from Balgawa Heights. Very, very tight with the team from Shore Prep. So they're our two fastest qualifiers. Running in lane five, Balgoa Heights, and lane six, Shore Prep. Is there any advantage being on the inside, Nathan, in these events? Or Well, theoretically, they're out at a lot of... Like 200, 400 runners like to be towards the outside lanes, not right on the outside. Lane 6, lane 5, 6 is sort of a preferred lane, but obviously it doesn't make much of a difference. But for this age, it doesn't really make a difference. But the speed of Usain Bolt, for example, would like a lane 6 because it's not as tight a bend for him, for the big man. He doesn't have to lean into it as much. And with these um, semis, Nathan, is there a draw for lanes or is it a seeded lanes it's, or same yeah, as seeded, seeded based on the heats, yep. whereas I think the heats were seeded based on the regional times or the association championship times, <laughs> which you can do in these relays. Normally it's hard to get a relay time, but because it's a very clearly defined pathway through the school zone and regional, it's able to, you're able to draw that information accurately. Junior boys. Epping West's got the record. 55-1-5. Sydney North team back in 1995. There's a few, couple of relay records from that year. A couple of records overall from that, from that year. In the mid to late 90s. Golden era. <laughs> So underway here, semi-final two for the junior boys. Yowie Bay in one, St Mary's Casino, Barony Bay, Beaumont Hills, Balgola Heights, Shaw Prep, Camden South, Griffith East, and Winona on the outside. Pretty good start. Winona, South Coast on the outside, but it's the Riverina team. Griffith East are motoring along the back straight. Also pushing up their city southwest, Camden South moving well. Balgola Heights in the centre lane. Through the 200 metre mark, it's Riverina, or oh, just a little bit of a mm. mishap there, and CIS coming through there, so Shaw Prep doing a great job holding through. Balgola Heights in the red and black of Sydney North are probably going to have the upper hand here, but it's so close between them. Top three is all they need to do to progress through to the final. Balgola Heights, the narrow edge, Shaw Prep in the white in second. Very close for third, it's Camden South. And coming through is Beaumont Hills. Let's have a look here. Balgola Heights will take the win ahead of Shaw Prep. And it will be the Sydney West team of Beaumont Hills at third automatic qualifying position through to the final 57-7-7 the time. So well done to our semi-finalists. As we said, super quality racing with Balgola Heights just edging out Shaw Prep for the win in that one. There you go. Yeah, great win to Balgala Heights there, Nathan, and uh, they will probably be the fastest qualifiers for the final, possibly. They've got a pretty good team. I believe we're now moving on to the semi-finals of the Nigel Bagley relay for the small schools. And as Neil indicated before, I believe this one is an enrolment up to 54 students. That's a, that's a great effort by these kids. 54 students in a school, that's something we don't often see in the city. So we have in lane one, Gundagai South. Lane two, Dungowan. Lane three, Murrundundai. Murrun, Murrundai, my apologies. Lane four, Broadwater. Lane five, St Joseph's Barabar. Lane 6, Kenyaba. 
North Coast, Lane 7, Goolagong, Lane 7, St Joseph's, Colcan, and in Lane 9, St Peter's, Collie, Ambley. Well, we believe Lane 2 is vacant, and that was Dungowan from North West. Fifty-four. A lot of people during um, when collapse classes after COVID be teaching a class of fifty-four. Yes. Some schools certainly. All these schools have fifty-four and less in total. So. And most are rural and isolated. So it's um, these kids have come a long way to have travelled a long way to be part of this event. So. Well done to them and well done to their parents and teachers to get them here. Forty in your class, so we're dreaming. Tell him he's dreaming. Going through to check the changes are all good now. Eight to 13 years of age. So you can see a big age range. It looks like we've got a young man there. Late five for the St. Joseph's Barabar team. Shout out to all our people watching on the live stream. We've got interesting warm-up routine for the Murrurundi Hunter region. She's doing a bit of a dance here. Anything to get the muscles activated and ready to fire because you're going to need to to set your team up well for this prestigious trophy. How many years has it been going for? Is it a relatively new thing or is it it's been going quite a while? Sorry? 25 years, there you go, approximately. Great addition. Now we're just awaiting John Morris to give us the all clear here, Nathan. He's just walking back over to the start area. He never seems stressed, John. He always seems calm about things, even when things may get a little stressful. Yeah, no, he's in. I guess I guess that's what you need as an official. That's what you need as a principal, which some of these main officials are ex-principals, retired principals. Yeah, Barry Peckar and John Morris, ex-principals. Underway in semi-final one of the Nigel Bagley 4x100 relay. Gundagai south on the inside. Murrurundi, Broadwater, St. Joseph's, Kaniaba, Goolagong, St. Joseph's, Kalkan and St. Peter's as well. The outside to the North Coast team. Kaniaba is flying along the back straight. St. Joseph's as well. Plenty of crowd support here. 2.50 to go. Pretty even between those two teams at the moment. The two McKillop teams in a fairly decent position as well. St. Joseph's, Kalkan, St. Peter's on the outside, but it's the polling team, St. Joseph's, at the moment, who's got the lead, trying to creep up the inside. We've also got Broadwater into the final change now. Close battle between these two, top three, to guarantee themselves a place in the final. And St. Joseph's Barabar are absolutely flying here. Have a look at this young man home. Let's bring him home. On the outside, Murrurundi of Hunter region, as well as Broadwater in the North Coast, battling for this third automatic qualifying position. It's going to be close, and Joseph stakes the win. The third spot will go to Murrurundi, and the North Coast team of Kaniaba as well is qualifying through as well. Ladies and gentlemen, I'll draw your attention to the presentation area. Very, very good stuff. I'll tell you what, they've got plenty of support crews here. We felt it in here. We normally can't hear a hell of a lot in the commentary box from the crowd and the outside noise, but that was a noticeable difference. So thank you and well done to all our schools. 
They get through the top 18, the Nigel Bagley Trophy. See who claims that title for 2023. Later on this afternoon, another medal presentation. Our silver medalist from Redham House, Lucia Zagura. And the medal's being presented by Peter Banks, the manager of the school sport unit, the head honcho. Having thrown a distance of 10. Point zero nine meters from Talk to us a little bit about, Elizabeth just while we've got a little bit of time here, about the work of the school sport unit, because it's obviously representative sport is only one arm of the school sport unit. Yeah, so the other arms are obviously the school swimming scheme, which is one of a unique feature of education in New South Wales, where all students give the opportunity to learn to swim. We also have our multi-class or disabled program. Uh, we have professional development. And uh, we also house the, uh, the four metropolitan regions or associations at Arncliffe, located at Arncliffe now. And the Premier Sporting Challenge. And this year, as we happened last year, the Teacher I like the, Excellence um, Awards. I like the Race Around Australia component of the Premier Sporting Challenge as well. It's good, isn't it? Yeah, I like the... I think it's... When you, when you have... Um, couple of people in a school to implement it and definitely can be a, a motivator. Yeah, that's very good. OK, we'll move on now to Heat 2. And I believe we might have... OK, it looks like St Pius X might not be starting. So in Lane 2 we have Laguna Public School from Hunter. We have St Joseph's from... Meriwa, we have in lane four, Maringo from Riverina, in lane five, Karangi from North Coast, lane six, Gulgawi from Riverina, lane seven, Spring Hill from Western, lane eight, Barrington from Hunter, and in lane nine, Trundle from Western, and the fastest qualifier, what an excellent time, Nathan, under one minute, and that's Karangi from North Coast, and they'll be running out of lane five. There's only two that did under 60 seconds in the heats, along with some Josephs. They're about holding after that terrific performance in semi-final number one. So they'll try and get as close as possible, or maybe even crack the 59 second mark here. The boy from Karangi looks like he's got a very long start, but now he's off and running. So underway here from the inside, Laguna, St. Joseph's, Maringo, Karangi, Gilgawi, Spring Hill, Barrington and Trundle on the outside. Hunter Region team, Barrington off to a pretty quick start. Western Region also strong. That's Spring Hill pushing through his Riverina. Gilgawi as well, the other Riverina team. Both of their teams here in a great position. Maringo into the second change here as well. It's all about holding that momentum. There's a few teams who did so pretty well there. So we've got Western Region on the outside, Spring Hill. Both the Riverina teams in contention here, Maringo and Gilgawi, into the final change here. For semi-final two, top three automatically through to the final, and the lead at the moment belongs to Maringo. Riverina, not anymore though. Karangi of North Coast is powering through with 40 metres to run. This is impressive stuff. Not the best conditions, but you wouldn't know it the way Karangi just ran there. Both the Riverina teams will get through as well. Maringo and Gilgawi to the final of the Nigel Bagley Trophy. Mixed eight to 13 years as well. So that's another thing to consider as well. What sort of cohort, like there might be 25 to 54 students, but how many of them are in the lower end of that age or is it, or is it an even spread? So That's a good question, Nathan. I know, I just thought of it then. I was wondering. What, it could be 54 eight-year-olds. Hmm. That's true. Make a good point. So we'll now move on to the first heat of the, or sorry, the first semi-final of the Austin Relay. And we have in lane one, Elliston from Hunter. Lane two, Yurungili from Riverina. Lane three, Boomy from North West. Lane four, North Star from North West. Lane five, Kangaloon from North South Coast. Lane six, Corndale 
from North Coast. Lane 7, Gravesend from North West. Lane 8, Greenhill from North Coast. And in Lane 9, you belong from West from Western. Now, fastest qualifier here with a time of 10074 is Kangalong from the South Coast. So that's a terrific time. I think Neil was this student schools with 25 or less. Well, that's that's an unbelievable time. Just on a minute, selecting a team from a school of 25 or less students. So heat one, the norm, and Elizabeth Austin, small schools relay. About to get underway. I Sorry, semi final number one. I should have gone to one of these schools this year. A casual work here. I mean, a cool experience. Well, Tight knit believe- communities, aren't they? Well, I believe there's opportunities for the country. We've got a number of secondary teachers have gone out to the country schools on a one year or two year placement. Yeah, they do it a lot with, uh, I think they do it with nurses and physios as well. I know my cousin went out to Broken Hill for her placement. That's a, quite a common thing for physios and nurses as well. To experience life out there, and they quite enjoy it. And we can give a call out here to Paula Fisher, who was at um, working in Sydney, and she's gone to the country for two years. She was at Gardner's Road Public School. It's just gone out there for two years. Okay, just awaiting the starters. Commands here. John Morris, the referee, checking all the changes. And I think we've got a couple of withdrawals here, Nathan. Lane one is out, and lane eight, I believe, is vacant. So we're down to. We're now to seven for this event. So, Ellison from the Hunter and Greenhill from North Coast have withdrawn. So underway here in the first semi-final of the Austin Trophy for small schools under 25 pupils. Erin Gilly in two, Boomy in three, North Star in four, Cangaloo in five, Corndale in six, Raveson in seven, you belong in, in nine. And as we work our way down the back straight, it's the outer edge of schools coming through here. North Coast doing a pretty good job. North West it is, Gravesend. Also pushing through, so it's northwest and south coast Cangaloon. It is in the yellow there, the inside of their north star. Pushing through. So into the top of the straight now in the Austin Trophy. Semi-final number one, 8 to 13 years. So there's a big age range in this one. South coast Cangaloon is powering away from the field here. And she is motoring as they work their way through. Cornsdale as well, holding strong northwest in the blue. That's north star primary school but taking the win and booking themselves a spot in the final will be the South Coast team of Cangaloon followed by North Star of North West and North Coast team of Corndale Primary School semi-final number one wow well that's pretty impressive here as well so it's 101-3-4 as we look at the replay of the South Coast team and it's coming through lane four North Star 103-2-6 I reckon they might have dipped under that time from their prelim 
see how it goes through. A nervous wait, though, for those outside the top three. See if they can get themselves. Wouldn't that be an exciting thing to get your school into the final? And then chance for a New South Wales PWSA championship and have your name engraved on the Norm and Elizabeth Austin Trophy. Moving on now to heat two of the Norm and Elizabeth Austin Trophy. Main one, Tirana from South Coast. Main two, Mount George from Hunter. Main three, Hannon Vale from Hunter. Main four, Trunky from Western. Main five, Dinya from Riverina. Main six, Tharbo Gong from Riverina. Main seven, Herons Creek from North Coast. Main eight, St Columbus, Yeovil. And in lane nine, Ballymore from Western. Semi final two, just about set. Way here, semi final two, the Norman Elizabeth Austin trophy for small schools to runner in one. We have George in two, Haddon Vale three, Trunky four, Binion five, Tobogan six, Herons Creek seven, St. Columbus in eight, and Bellamore in nine on the outside. Again, we saw how strong the Riverina teams were in the previous race on the track. They're in a strong position here. Both River, River, Riverina teams, Binya and also the Bogan there as well. The Western team of Trunky moving pretty strongly here. Top three is what they're after. So it looks like it might be the Binya team. Maybe just got a narrow lead at the moment. So they worked their way around the 200 metre bend here. And on their inside, Trunky not too far off the pace. And also the Riverina, the Bogan as well in a good position. Look at this man go. Flying here, Binya. Absolutely tearing along the home straight here, looking to get his school, his team, into the final of the Norman Elizabeth Austin Trophy for schools with 25 or less students, 61-88. On the outside, Thabogang and also Trunky of Western Region. North Coast Herons Creek doing a great job. All the teams here, mixed ages and gender here, 8 to 13-year-olds for the Austin Trophy semi-final two. And looking at those uh, changes, Nathan, there's been a lot of work put into them. Fantastic changes exactly. so far. No baton has it been dropped, I don't think, this morning. So that's a terrific effort for all that's the pretty rare. relay teams. Yeah, it's pretty rare. Girls senior now. So the girls senior relay. Girls 11 to 13 years, 4 by 100 metres relay. We have in lane one, Lennox Head from North Coast. Lane two, Henchke Public School from Wagga. Sorry, Henchke from Wagga, and that's representing McKillop. Lane three, St Augustine's Coffs Harbour representing Polding. Lane four, St Ives North representing Sydney North. Lane five, St Catharines representing CIS. Lane six, Borkham Hills North representing Sydney West. Lane 7, the local school, Russell Lee, representing Sydney East. Lane 8, Our Lady of Sacred Heart, Randwick, representing McKillop. And in Lane 9, Manly West, representing Sydney North.
when we can get a good indication there. The teardrop New South Wales PWSA flags behind the podium, just how much the wind is having an impact on the track here. Oh, I believe, Nathan, the wind funnels through the tunnel that comes from the marshalling area. So they'll be running, I would assume, directly into it. Yes. They run down the 100 metre straight. There you go. Not many using blocks here. Very tactical to see where you put your fastest runner here. There's two semis. So senior girls, 4x100 relay underway. The first of two semi-finals. Lennox head of North Coast. Henshi Wagga, St. Augustine's Coffs Harvest. And Ives North, St. Catherine's. Borkham Hills North, Russell Lee, Our Lady of Sacred Heart, and Manly West on the outside there. As we see go through, Our Lady of Sacred Heart move their way up the inside shoulder of Manly West in the red of Sydney North on the outside. St. Catharines of CIS also in a good position here as they power around the bends, probably with the lead at the moment. Sydney West chasing, that's Borkham Hills North in the yellow. And on the inside of them, St. Ives North of Sydney North, but it's CIS, St. Catharines Leading the way into the straight. Top three is what they're after. St. Catharines, we know they've got a record in the junior events in the relay. This is the senior relay, though, and the team here is flying as they work towards the line. 20 metres ahead, very close for second and third, maybe just the Sydney West team, and then polling. So Balcom Hills and then I think St. Augustine's Coffs Harbour in the top three there in the first semi-final of the girls' senior 4 by 100 metre relay championship. Aladala has got the record as well, 1997-53-28. We've still got a bit of time to, to make up on that, but still St. Catherine's very strong, obviously, in these relay, relay events, and Balcom Hills in second. So moving on now to heat two of the girls' senior 100 metres relay. Lane one, Centaur Public School at North Coast. Lane two, St. Matthew's Mudgee, representing Paulding. Lane three, St. Mary's Manley, representing Paulding. Lane 4, Randwick Public School, representing Sydney East. Lane 5, Belmont Christian School, representing CIS. Lane 6, Milton Public School, representing South Coast. Lane 7, Queenwood, representing CIS. Lane 8, Warrington County Public School, representing Sydney West. And in Lane 9, Mudgee Public School, representing Western. Who's your pick here, Grant, to win this one? What do we reckon? Well, it's pretty tight, isn't it? So we've got three schools... All with 56 seconds as qualifying, or thereabouts. So, four scores, five scores. This will be a hot heat. Very, very close. I'm nervous for them. Bit of a wave to the crowd from the girl in lane two from Paulding. That's the girl from St Matthews at Mudgy. So, she's having a bit of a wave to the crowd. Very relaxed at the start. Beautiful spot in Mudgee. Used to do a few triathlon camps back there in the day. They're in lane two. So semi-final two. St Catherine's the dominant team from the first semi-final. CIS again with two teams here. Polding with two teams. We've got North, as far as the state school regions go, we've got North Coast, we've got... City East, South Coast, City West and Western. So, underway in semi-final two. The final semi here of the senior girls. Centaur in one. St Matthews, Mudgee in two. St Mary's, Manly three. Ramwick four. Belmont five. Milton six. Queenwood seven. Warrington County in eight. And Mudgee on the outside as we see. Incredible running here from the South Coast team. Milton doing a great job. Centre of the track. Belmont's right up there as well into this change. But it is Milton. Probably with a lead now as we say that though. The Sydney East School, Ramwick Public School is just starting to come into the picture. On the outside of them, Belmont. The CIS in the white. It'll be Belmont narrowly behind the Sydney East team of Ramwick and also... Milton, who were the early leaders, just starting to shift back to second. It's the Ramwick team who's taken the lead, and they will get the win here. 55-5-7. Milton in second. 
Belmont in third. Some great racing. Kid support coming for. It's all North Coast as well. Great job in semi-final number two of the girls. Senior four by one. So, the depth is here and is evident. Interesting to see the team dynamics as well because sometimes, because they are grouped age groups, sometimes you might have a gun school. It's like knockout teams, isn't it? When you have, all of a sudden you have a stacked with one age group and what is, could be a strong school might lose that strength and it sort of evens out. It's sort of its own draft system in a way. Uh, within the public school system. We're moving on now to the first semi-final with the boys senior 4x100 metres relay. In lane one, Tamworth Public School from North West. Lane two, Our Lady of Fatima Curringbar from McKillop. Lane three, Pumpton Public from Sydney West. Lane four, St Colum Kills, I think it is, from Coromel, representing McKillop. Main 5, St Ignatius from CIS. Main 6, Scots College representing CIS. Main 7, Newington Public School, the local school from Sydney East. Main 8, Illawoo Road Public School from South Coast. And in Main 9, Carilla Public from Sydney East. So our fastest qualifier, Nathan, I think is going to be possibly 53-58. And that's St Ignatius representing CIS and we also have a 54.83 and that's the Scots College so a couple of very fast times there certainly is so 53.58 St Ignatius with the fastest through out of these two semi-finals We've also got a 53.86 through from the heats from St Pius the 10th they will come in semi-final number two St Ignatius, they're a prominent high school as well. They've got their own athletics club, actually. They're school-based athletic club, similar to Westfields. They compete in club athletics competitions under their school banner too. Very famous school, Riverview College yeah. at Riverview. Uh, great rugby teams over the years. Part of the yeah, GPS system as well. The high school. So being called to stand up by Barry. I think he's our start referee here. Making sure it's a fair start. All these rules, similar to school rules, they're in place for a reason. And uh, our official's job is not just to enforce them, but to educate and make sure that they don't have the issue in the future so they can start the race without any further intervention. Is it true, Nathan, that the baton with the crowd start cannot be placed over the line it must be above the line uh, that's a good question oh no the baton it's just your hand yes of course just your fingers so underway here first of two semi-finals for the senior boys Tamworth on the inside Our Lady of Fatima Plumpton St Columkill St Ignatius Scots College Newington Illaro Road and Carilla on the outside. Carilla away pretty well here. The two CIS teams, St. Ignatius and Scots College, pretty much unscathed at the moment. Newington Public School putting a bit of a surge there. The second half of the back straight, the second leg, moves really well. He might even get the baton in hand first. Both the Sydney East teams going well. Carilla is on the outside of Newington in the Sydney East colours, but it's St. Ignatius on the inside of Scots College. They're the two CIS teams and will probably have the lead, both of them, into the straight here. St. Columb kills Coromel as well in third place. Three automatic qualifying positions through to the final here. And a St. Ignatius who are pulling away from the field. 
Doing a terrific job. 52-78. Demolishing their heat time. And booking themselves a spot in the final for the Senior Boys Championship in New South Wales later on in the day here at PWSA 2023. In uh, third place, yes, was St. Columkill's Coromel. And then it's back to the South Coast team. Ilru Road, then Karela, then Aladia Fatima. Carring butt after that. Moving on now to Heat 2, the final heat of the semis. Semi-final number two in lane one, Ellie Barna Public School, representing Hunter. Lane two, Winston Hills Public School, representing Sydney West. Lane three, Stanmore Public, representing Sydney East. Lane four, a lady of Angels, Rouse Hill, representing McKillop. Lane five, St Pius X, representing CIS. Lane six, St Augustine's Brookvale, representing Polding. Lane seven, St Matthew's Mudgee, representing Polding. Main 8, Baronia Park Public School, representing Sydney North. And in Main 9, St Catherine's Singleton, representing Polding. So they're our starters. Nine starters in this, the second semi-final of the Senior Boys 100, 4x100 metres relay. What do you think the best-looking regional uniform is, Grant? Do you have I, a favourite? I'd have to go Sydney North, Nathan. <laughs> Sydney North, the red and black. North Sydney Bears, eh? Bring them back, you reckon? Well, I don't know if that's biased, but I did have three Do you reckon boys they'll come back? Do you Sydney reckon the Bears North? will make a return? Maybe not in North Sydney. No. Who knows? Would you, will the North Sydney Bears crew get behind them if they're in Perth or something? Oh, that's a good question, Nathan. What do you reckon? Yeah, I'm probably more from a rugby background than a league background, so I would be very adverse to make any definitive comment about that. Well, it stands out from a mile away. You can spot them over at the stadium if you had to. No, very traditional, the colours, and I know that... Um, Sydney East has changed, hasn't it? Like, the colours haven't have stayed the same, but the actual uniform has changed, probably... Oh, it would have been a while ago now, actually. Mm. Let me see, bottle two. Second of two semi-finals underway here. Ilibana in the inside. Winston Hills, Stanmore, Our Lady of Angels, St. Pius X, St. Augustine's Brookvale, St. Matthews, Margie, Baronia Parks, St. Catherine Singleton on the outside. So it looks like holding the momentum really well there. St. Augustine's Brookvale, I think it is. The CIS team getting out to them. That's St. Pius the tenth here. But it will be the polling team on the inside. It's St. Augustine's Brookvale, St. Matthews, Margie also trying to make up the deficit here in St. Pius the 10th. They got the benefit of the stagger around and also moving well. The Hunter region team coming through on the inside. Well, it's the McKillop team, my apologies, but it's the CIS St. Pius the 10th who will lead into the straight. St. Augustine's in Brookvale in second. Now comes the Lady of the Angels of McKillop and also Sydney West, Winston Hills on the inside, but it's all St. Pius the 10th getting the win. St. Augustine's Brookvale on the outside getting the job done as well to qualify through to the final. Automatically 53 for 7 the time. I think it's time for a change of commentator, so I'll depart and uh, I'll hand over to our next commentator.
Could we have a polling team manager down to the presentation area, please? A polling team manager? Ladies and gentlemen, we are about to start the 100 metres finals. Our first event will be the girls' eight years final, where we'll have in lane one Amelia Oxley from Mary Immaculate, Quakers Hill. Lane two, Addison Galloway, Shoalhaven Head, South Coast. Lane three, Mia Brown, St. Francis Xavier, Wulgooga. <laughs> lane four, Ruby Hanley, Maitland. The Hunter. Lane 5, Faith Agilata, St George Christian School, CIS. Lane 6, Rachel Clark, now Anglican, uh, Anglican College, CIS. Lane 7, Lila Morris, Berkeley Vale, Sydney North. Lane 8, Darcy Hitchcock, Bonnet Bay, Sydney East. Lane 9, Thraya Curran, Graves Point, Sydney East. And Lane 10, Shreya Iyer, Darcy Road, Sydney West. The record is 13.96 and it was set last year by Harlow Pafty from Wilton, Sydney South West. Just doing the final check, we have the competitors in the correct lanes. This is for the eight-year-old championship for the New South Wales Primary School Sports Association for 2023. Ladies and gentlemen, I draw your attention to the presentation area where we are about to present medals to the place getters in the senior girls multi-class discus event. Medals will be presented today by Anthony Moyes, the Disability Inclusion Officer. In third position, our bronze medalist from Panania is Chloe Hunter. Our silver medalist from Nambucca, heads on the north coast, Lexi Brown. And our gold medalist, the New South Wales champion for 2023 from London, please congratulate Heidi Luichenko.
though not far away. The fastest eight-year-old girls in New South Wales. There's about 40,000 of them. These are the fastest nine. I think we're just waiting to make sure that our photo finish team is ready to get this accurate because no doubt it will be close. The witches hats are out. Stay in your lane. They're in good spirits though. High-fiving each other. Isn't that good? Before a state final. Could be very, very nervous, but some of them just being nice and relaxed. Focused but relaxed. Just about set. Girls 8 years, 100 championship of New South Wales. Underway, pretty quick start overall. Darcy Hitchcock on the outside here in the 8 years girls final. CIS, Faith Adelaja, maybe just got the edge here on Rachel Clark, also of CIS. She's tracking her though. She's trying to have another go at her, but I think maybe Faith will hold on. She does. She's the champion of New South Wales, 15-78. But Faith had a larger, she was strong through the rounds, the fastest qualifier going in, and she has backed it up with the gold medal here. The eight years girls final, so, so close between them, and I think maybe getting through for third was the Sydney East athlete there in lane eight, Darcy Hitchcock. We now move to the boys, 800, eight years, eight year old, 100 metres final. In lane one, Tao Stanley from McLean, North Coast. In lane two, Harry Watkins, Terry Hill, Sydney North. In lane three, Jack Russ, Hamilton, North, Hunter. Lane four, Oliver Lane, Birchgrove, Sydney East. Lane five, Louis Lee from Lethbridge Park, Sydney West. Lane six, Sam Ramadan from the Christ the, the Kingdom, North Rocks, McKillop. Lane seven, Adam Vesley, Manly Village, Sydney North. Lane eight, Thomas Leslie, Condoblin, Western. Lane 9, Ryan Wigand from Laguna Street, Sydney East. And Lane 10, in Brooklyn, Maker Maker from Ramsgate, Sydney East. Here we go. We do have a full field here. Boys, eight years final. D to who are the record? 1995, 13.99 the time. Eight years boys, 100 championship final. Very jumpy at the moment. Don't think we've got lane 10 by the look of it. No. All the other athletes are Let's present. No, no, Ryan Wigan from the Green Street. Underway here, the Sydney West competitor in the middle. Louis Lee off quickly up on his inside as well. Oliver Lane of Sydney East really trying to draw level between those two. And also oh, Wygun on the outside. This is a close finish. Super close on the line. If I had to pick it, I would say Oliver Lane, but I'm not 100% sure. Louis Lee, Sydney West, Lethbridge Park. It's a close one. We'll wait for the photo finish judge's decision. Oh, yeah, he's yes, got it. Yeah. I reckon he's got it. Yep. What do you reckon, clutch, clutch team? Ugh. Clutch team, oh my gosh, bar TV team. We are now up to the nine years girls, 100 metres final. In lane one, Josephine Hahn from Manly Vale, Sydney North. Lane two, Stephanie Lee, Norellan Vale, Sydney South West. Lane four, Molly Curry from 
Hawks at Columbia Assumption CIS Lane four. Sorry, Lane three, Lane four, Harlow Conning, Jerning on South Coast, Lane five, Harlow Putty, from Wilton Sydney Southwest, Lane six, Evie Rafal, Terry Hills Sydney North, Lane seven, Stacia Seraphin, Skeggs CIS, Lane eight, Desiree Adanyemi from Red Hill Riverina, Lane nine, Amali Tedesco, Thermal Sydney Southwest, Lane ten, we have Sierra Sill, Seal. From Winona, CIS. And this one will be uh, a, a good race. Um, well, if you have a look at the record. Yeah, 13.84, and it was set by... Oh, set by <laughs> Harlow Pat, Putty this morning. Uh, 13, or yesterday, 13.84. So Just about set here. Girls, nine years, 100 final. Underway, probably the quickest away was Harlow Conning at Jerringong South Coast region. Now Harlow Putty getting into a running. Other Sydney Southwest, Stephanie Lee moving quite well. And also Seraphin on the outside. But Harlow Putty, she set the record 13 8 4 in the previous rounds. Not quite as quick here. Not as good a conditions though. She's taken another gold medal in New South Wales PWSA title. Harlow Putty, your champion in the girls' nine years, 100 metre final. We have a look at the replay here. And she's striving towards the line here. And you can see a strong finish. The CIS athlete there. Mm. Stacia Seraphin coming through in second position there. They're running directly into a headwind, uh, though, uh, if we look at the flag. You can see, well, you can see on the, um, down on the official's poncho yeah. how strong it is in the opposite direction they're running. So it's yeah. a big headwind. Forget about times, everyone. Times mean nothing. Because the wind is too strong. The wind is strong, especially. We next come to the boys' nine years, one hundred metres uh, event, and we have in lane one Isaiah Campbell Davies from Walton, the Hunter. Lane two Sam Kelly St Mark's Tremoyne. Lane three Oliver Dennis from Crestwood City West. Lane four, Lenny Hayward, Mount St. Tom, oh, sorry, St. Thomas Moore, Roos. Lane five, Maximilian Yeo from Annandale North, Sydney East. Lane six, Hudson McGregor, Bagala Heights. Lane seven, Jack Jara Flack, Coromel. Lane eight, Tom Fisher, St. Pius X, Unandera. Lane nine, Caleb Luck, Camden South, Sydney Southwest. And lane ten, Zach Watson, Wycliffe. Christian School, CIS. Record is 13.58 and it was set by Jay Mulligan, Wyoming, Sydney North. And the times may, may not mean much going to the headwind, but this is going to be a very close run from the semi-final time. They're all around that 14.5. 14 we look to the start. Super quick reaction there from Oliver Dennis of Sydney West. He's got the jump at the moment up on the inside as well. Isaiah Campbell Davies really close as well. Hudson McGregor, McGregor and Jarrah Flack shadowing here. And the Sydney North man gets the win from Balgola Heights. We saw how impressive they were in the relay. One of them is one of their runners is this young man, Hudson McGregor, and he has come through 13.90, the title of fastest nine-year-old in New South Wales. Very, very quick stuff. It was. And the South Coast competitor, Jarrah Flack, on the outside. The Sydney East man as well, Maximilian Yao. We saw his uh, anchor leg before in the relay doing really well for Annandale North. And Hudson was not the fastest qualifier through. Yeo was. But only six one hundreds in it, so yeah. our next event will be the girls. Ten years, one hundred metre final of the New South Wales Primary School Sports Association Athletics Championships for twenty twenty three. In lane one, Lena Bozic from St Patrick Sutherland. Lane two, Lara Hooper, Calair Weston. Lane three, Brianna Black, Panania, Sydney Southwest. 
Lane four, Havana Gray, Terry Hill, Sydney North. Lane five, Ava Jupp, Miranda North, Sydney East. Lane six, Maya Tanko, Cane Bar North, Sydney East. In lane seven, Matilda Cantrell from Orange Western. Lane eight, Imogen Wynn from Shelley, Sydney West. Lane 9, Ruby Kete from TM Hunter. Lane 10, Makisha Williams, Miranda Riverina. And Lane 11, Chloe Putin from Lily Pilly. The Student Award of the Multi Class Most Outstanding Athlete Award for 2023 and deserving of a huge round of applause and congratulations is Sienna Compton from St. Aloysius Chisholm representing Bowling. Thank you. So the award for the outstanding multi-class of the meet being presented there. How good is that? Look at all the medals. Look at all the silverware. Lucky, don't know if she's catching a flight home or not, but I have to adjust the baggage allowance, I think. Incredible and very prestigious award for New South Wales PLSA Championships to outstanding multi-class competitor for 2023. And we're ready to go. Girls 10 years 100 metre final. What is it? Girls 10? Girls 10. So underway here in the girls 10 years final and the Sydney North athlete Havana Gray pushing through as well as Maya Tanko. Maya Tanko pushes ahead. She's going to be the state champion, the fastest in New South Wales for the girls 10 years age group. 14 to 8. Great job as well. Ava Jutt was right up there. And very close racing all around for the girls' 10 years race. And she did it in fine did style. Did it in fine style. She certainly did. So Sydney East go one, two, and I reckon... Sydney North. Sydney into. North. Havana Gray, who was the champion in this event last year, hanging tough for another podium performance in the 10 years championship. We now move to the boys' 10 years championship. And we have Cameron Falkner from McKillop Warnervale. And then that's uh, Polding School and Lane 1. And lane 2, Jack Jack Kane from Lindisfarne, CIS. Lane 3, Kravitz Fatality from Greywoods Hills, Sydney South West. Lane no, 4, Ethan Costa, Sacred Heart, Matraville. Lane 5, Lachlan Chapel, St Burns Botany. Lane 6, Oliver Skiuli from St Joseph's Merriweather. Lane 7, Edward Carlin from St Joseph's Wee War. Lane 8, Nate Russo, Point Clare, Sydney. Lane 9, Patrick Boafa, Bird Oldfield, Sydney West. And Lane 10, Benjamin Spadado, Our Lady of the Lord, Seven Hills. And the record in this is held by Alex Jallo and set in 2005, a time of 12.85. I think Lachlan Chapel might be the one to watch in this event. Been a very three, three tenths of a second quicker than anyone else through that semi final, and we know he's capable of going sub 13 seconds. Lachlan Chapel, keep an eye on them. the McKillop man in the middle of the track, closest to screen, the blue singlet in lane five. Ethan Costa as well, and also Oliver Sculey, your father's three qualifiers. Call to their marks here for the 10 years boys championship of New South Wales the 100 metres. Let's be called to stand up. It's Falconer from the top of screen. Kane, Theate, Costa, Chapel. Sciulli, Carolyn, Russo, Bofo and Spadaro. Come on, 
on, buddy. Concentrate. Go! Good start. Underway, Costa probably the quickest away here now. Chapel starts to move into his running. Pretty close at the moment. Chapel starts to push ahead. Close for second. Costa and also the polling athlete, Olivia Oliver Scully. Let's have a look at the time. 13.5. Nine for Lachlan Chapel. Pretty impressive run in these conditions. Good to see the sportsmanship from the boys here on the line as well. The boys, 10 years, 100 metre final. Chapel. Very powerful runner, isn't he? He is, and just got plenty of leverage. He uses those arms to really propel himself, and time's a dip right. Big, strong boy with uh, Oliver Skewley. I think getting through for second there, the polling representative, to put points on the board for the polling region and for his school. Remember, there are some point scores that we're going to be working out and making the tallies earlier on. Uh, sorry, later on. Yeah, progressively being updated as we go through here. We now move to the girls' 11 years, 100 metres uh, final. And we have in lane one, Olivia Toshak from North Sydney in North Sydney Public School, Sydney North. Lane two, Maggie Trainer, Cone Bar, Sydney East. Lane three, Molly Tom, Baronot, Benora Point, North Coast. Lane four, Chloe Anthony, St Catherine, CIS. Lanes five, Marnie Lawrence, Claremont, CIS. Lane six, Alice Burgess, St Catherine, CIS. Lane seven, Holly Braddock from Hook Norton, South Coast. Lane eight, Lindsay Jabanillo from McCallum's Hill, Sydney East. Lane 9, Essie Liang, Eastwood, Sydney North. Lane 10, Ella Robinson, from Joseph's Bulli, McKillop. <laughs> some standout performers in this group. We've got the two girls from St Catherine's. Uh, and this, they're from either side of Marnie Lawrence from Claremont, who's an exceptional meet up until this time point. The three of the finalists from last year. Contesting the 11 Years Girls Championship. Chelsea SEO can be the record. 2017, time at 12.72. Just about set. Underway, really quick reaction there by Marnie Lawrence, Claremont athlete. And also pushing up on the outside, South Coast. Holly Braddock in there as well. But Lawrence pulling away. Storms across the line. 13-4-9 to take the gold medal. The PWSA State Championship title here for CIS in Claremont. Look at the replay. It's pretty decisive. She was the fastest off the blocks, fastest through the 50, accelerated and pushed through with a close finish in the end. Oh, that was real close, actually. Mm. Like with Sydney North and also um, it was the other one, South Coast there as well, pushing through as well, the challenge for that podium position. You know how fickle it is. So we had second, fourth and sixth last year in that race. So things can change so much in 12 months 12 about months. who can actually make the final, stay injury free, that sort of thing. He's so fickle, getting through the three rounds, getting through school zone and regional competitions. And uh, Marnie not in the final last year. I'm not sure if she competed last year, but... Uh, South Coast competitor and the Sydney North competitor. Yeah, they're your top three. They're calling them out now. Uh -huh. So it's two CIS yeah. by the look of it. Then yeah. South Coast yeah. the podium. Top four go through to the... Uh, That's right, yeah. Top four for the 100. Yep. Top four. So South Wales relay. It's because of the relay, is that right? 4 by one yeah. I'll be losing my quick. That looks like a relay time. We now move to the boys' 11s. Your old 100 metre. Record here by, held by Robert Botang from Liverpool Public School and was set in 1998, 12 to, with 12.25. In lane one, we have William Bailey, St. Ignatius, CIS. Lane two, Ryan Jose, Lutheran Primary School, CIS. Lane three, Saxon Scott, Dubbo South Western. Lane four, Jack Spencer, Baronia Park, Sydney North. Lane five, 
George Lambusis from Ramsgate, Sydney East. Lane 6, Ariki Wahonga from Manly West. Lane 7, Ethan Warner, Avalon. Lane 8, Lucas Hill, Oxley College. Lane 9, Vic, I'll let it go. So underway here, the City East athlete, Lambusis away, the quickest here. He's got a couple of challenges. Jack Spencer trying to creep up. Lambusis accelerates again. Surges a couple of times. He was challenged, though. City North will get two on the podium. Either side of him, Jack Spencer and also Ariki Wahongi. Himself three there, George Lambusis is the PWSA champion, though, of New South Wales from Ramsgate Public School, City East, 13.53 the time. And you can see how close they got. They're big. They yeah, look bigger big, and stronger, aren't they? Yeah, they do. So City North gets second, third, and fourth. fourth yeah. So they get three from the one region in the state relay team. Yeah. We get thumbs up from Grand, a couple yeah. of individuals around here. <laughs> Our next event is the 12 years, 100 metres, and record held by Natasha Hall of Musselbrook in 12.69, and she set that in 2.11. In lane one, we're going to have Ava Pepper from Skeg CIS, Lane 2, Chloe Britton, Nara, Anglican College, CIS. Lane 3, Louisa Meta, C4, Sydney North. Lane 4, Sophie Halson, Cronulla, Sydney East. Lane 5, Mia Wood, Yowie Bay, Sydney East. Lane 6, Sienna Vazelli, St Ives North, Sydney North. Lane 7, Madison McWilliams, Flinders, South Coast. Lane 8, Lorraine Umar from Mary Immaculate, Eagle Vale. And Philip, Lane 9, Janice Hicks. Edgeworth Hunter, Lane 10, Sarah Meta, Seaforth, Sydney North. So Jenna Hicks, who starts in Lane 9, was second last year. Sophie Housen starts in 4, was third last year. And we're just going to wait. So Mia Wood, very interesting to see how she goes. She was ninth last year. But she is the fastest qualifier in 2023. So underway here in the girls' 12 years final. Really good start. Sophie Housen, Sydney East. And there would be the bit of work to do here. The other McKillop athlete, the uh, Lauren May, coming through as well. And super oh. close on the line. Your guess is as good as mine. Sophie House and Mia Woods, Sienna Vasella, Madison McWilliams, they're all there. How can you pick that? <laughs> no the photo way. finish judges will have their work cut out for them. 13 3 9. We can try and pick it here on the replay. Oh. Maybe McKillop. McKillop. No. Oh. oh South, Coast. Coast. <laughs> South Coast. South Coast. Madison McWilliams, I reckon. Madison McWilliams, I reckon. Do you reckon? I agree with that. I'm just so close. Oh. <laughs> well, Nail biting stuff in the girls' 12 years 100 state final. And would you expect anything less, Neil? I no, wouldn't. No. I wouldn't. And they're all anxious. They know how close it was, too. We might wait and see before we start talking about the next race. I reckon there'll be a couple of a couple of vehicles. South Coast, I reckon, has got it. Yeah, I think so. They are anxious. Madison <laughs> McWilliams. She was seventh last year, the 13-7-1. Here we go. We got the photo finished. And yeah, the results confirmed. Should be. Oh. Maybe in no particular order. No, it's equal. Is it equal? Yeah. Well, there. <laughs> this is very unofficial, by the way, for yeah. those listening. Yeah. We're just we're, we're just trying sure. to we're thinking out loud. They're the top four. Yeah. yeah. Second. second. She said second or yeah. two equal first. I don't it's know. Equal first. What does it mean? I don't. Can know. you read body language? I can't. Could, couldn't make peace. All right, here we go with twelve-year-old boys, one hundred meters in lane one. Aaron Vinity from St Catherine, Sienna Preston, yes. McKillop. Two, Leon Ladojo, Manly Village, Sydney North. In lane three, Callum Gilchrist, Barker, CIS. Lane four, Sebastian Duddle, the King School, CIS. Lane five, John Espinada, Kingswood South, Sydney West. Lane six, William Holden, St Matthews, Mudgee. Uh, 
Bolding, Lane 7, Xavier Curie, St. Patrick's CIS, CIS. Lane 8, Jake Wood, St. Augustine's Brookvale. Lane 9, Kobe Ryan, Nuglebar, Hunter. Lane 10, Luca Giametti, Wallaris in the east. Just about set here for the boys. 12 years, 100 metre final last year of primary school. Here we go. Just rocking forward there. CIS rock forward first and a polding. Do get a chance if it was a false start. So John Espinita, who starts in lane five as a defending champion, Gabriel Ali. Second last year, but not featuring in this field. Callum Gilchrist, who's in lane three, was the bronze medalist in 2022. And underway here, Sydney West going through to the early start here. John Espinita is absolutely flying. He's been so flawless through in the heats and coming through now. He's going to take a comfortable victory, 12.57, as they work their way through. Brilliant, brilliant running there. 12.57, 12.66 in the semi-final. So he's gone nine one-hundredths quicker here in the final for the boys. 12 years, 100 metres, the record. You know, Brody Perry's 2016 seems untouchable at the moment, considering the margin he's got. Just have a look at the power. You can see how much yeah. propulsion, how many metres he's getting with every single step, the Sydney West athlete. So it was Polding in second. William Holden. Some Matthews and Mudgee. A few Mudgee athletes who've been terrific at these championships. And the boys off to Tasmania yes. to represent their state. What an incredible honour. Top four in the 100, top three in every other event. In the, um, the next month, early next month, they're off to Tasmania to compete. And now we've got the girls' 13-year-old 100 metre. And we start with Taylor Jewell from St. Benedict's, Edgeworth, Polding in lane one. Lane two, Jimmy Solway, Wombrell, Sydney North. Lane three, Sienna Thorings and Phillips Primary School, CIS. Lane four, Jasmine Young, Bega, South Coast. Lane five, Koisha Morris, Barona, Western. Lane six, Liesa Cagliola, Lansavar East. Lane seven, Honor Out, Bomaderi, South Coast. Lane seven, Sonia Dewey from Deniston East, Sydney North. Lane nine, Elisa Munro, Bathurst West, Western. Lane ten, Elizabeth Carroll, St Mary's Tookley. Record of 1361 set in 2012 by Erin Higgins from Holy Trinity in the Realm. Pretty even across the semis here with two in the 14 second mark. Jasmine Young in four. Koesha Morris. Koesha Morris in five. They're the two fastest qualifiers through here as we get just about set and reacting very quickly. The South Coast competitor Jasmine Young. Also the Western region. We sure make up terrific ground in the semi final. Koesha Morris of Burina. 14 1 9 in the semi. She's going to be the state champion in the girls' 13s. 14 2 5. And South Coast, big up public school. Jasmine Young, I think, will get through for second place. Fantastic effort there for the girls' 13 years final. Alicia Morris is uh, congratulated by our co colleagues, and she's a proud representative of Warren, public school in Western. Well done. For those watching from Western Region, you should be proud of this one. Tenacious young athlete and doing a terrific job. Won it clearly, too, in the yeah. end. Jasmine Young is second, and South Coast... Honor Grouts from Bomberry Public School in third place for the South Coast. Well done. Our last uh, 100 metre final before we start the relays. And it will feature Tana Ramsey from Kendall, North Coast in lane one. In lane two, Cohen Schleeves from Wheelan, Western. Lane three, Damien Colenberg, our ladies star of the sea, Terrigal. Lane four, Simon Rogan, St Michael's Deniliquin. Lane 5, Javier Kama, Kama from Wyong, Sydney North. Lane 6, Dilwa Zagla, Moranga North Coast. Lane 7, Tristan Daly, Arndell Anglican College, CIS. Lane 8, 
Dimitri Dow, Putney, Sydney North. Lane, eight, uh, lane 10, we've got Liam Belford from Belair Hunter. Here we go. Just about set. The final 100 metre event. It's for the 13 years boys at the 2023 PWSA State Championships. Oh, have a look at that start from Tristan Daly. He was away so, so quickly. Javier oh. Kama as well powering through. See you later. Good night. It's done. It's run. It's won. It's done. Boys, 13 years, 100 metre champion of the state. And he knows it too. 13 2 2. Give you 13 2 0. Give yourself two claps. It goes, how good was that? It was pretty good. It was. It was pretty good. It was extremely powerful. <laughs> well done. Wyong Public School City North. Wyong Public School City North representative as we have a look at the dominance here. Holding coming through. St. Michael's Deniliquin, Simon Rogan. In second place, and in lane six, Dilwa Zagla of Naranga, North Coast, to round out the podium. The 13 years boys, 100 metre championship final at the 2023 New South Wales PWSA Championships. Next up, we've got the relays, ladies and gentlemen, and it is the finals. Don't miss a second of the action to finish off the program here on day two. And our gold of competition in here in the New South Wales PWSA Championships. We'll have the presentation of the Queen Elizabeth II Jubilee Trophy, I believe, first. And yes, that looks like um, that'll be our presentation in the presentation area prior to the commencement of the. 100, 4 by 100 metre relays, commencing with the junior girls and the junior boys. How good is this carnival? Unbelievable. This is for my first time here and I've honestly very much enjoyed seeing our juniors and the enthusiasm and the energy that they bring to the track and the field here. Not just for those who've achieved on the podium, but for those who are happy and happy with the personal best and trying to better how they did last year, and many of them competing their first time at the state-level competition. Plenty of happy family members and friends as well, wherever you're watching this live stream around New South Wales, Australia, or if you're overseas as well. Good thing about the live streaming, you can be anywhere and see every minute of the action. The New South Wales Pete State Championships and thank you to the crew from Bar TV for their awesome awesome uh, technology and expertise here in making sure we get clear vision and coverage of all the best primary school athletes we've got in New South Wales our bronze medalist from Cherry Hills, representing Sydney North, Havana Gray. From Miranda North, representing Sydney East, our silver medalist, Ava Jupp. So we do have some presentations in the presentation area. And I believe they and are And our gold medalist, a New South Thanks, Wales champion for 2023 from Caringbar North in Sydney East. Please congratulate Maya Tanko. And the presentations for the 100 metres event. Just here. So all these presentations are in progress. The relay teams are moving around to their respective stations for the commencement of the final events of the program 
which are the boys and girls. Four by 100 metres relay final, starting off with the junior girls. Ladies and gentlemen, I draw your attention to the presentation area for the presentation of medals for the boys 10 year old, boys, the boys 10 years 100 metre final. Medals today were presented by Andrew Smith, New South Wales PWSA Championship Manager. In third position are the bronze medalists from Bert Oldfield, Patrick Boapo. Our silver medalist from Merriweather, Oliver Shirley. And our gold medalist and New South Wales champion for 2023 from St Bernard's Botany, please congratulate Rutland Chapel. The finals now in the girls, 8 to 10, 4 by 100 metres relay. Lane 1, St Patrick Swansea. Lane 2, Pimble Ladies College. Lane 3, Avalon Public School. Lane 4, Kamani Heights Public School. Lane 5, Willow Pilly Public School. Lane 6, Jeringong Public School. Lane 7, Oran Park Public School. Lane 8, A Lady of Fatima. And in Lane 9, Ellison Public School. And we're off. And the uh, start, good start across the across the lanes. And we move into the first chain with it's going to be the girls from the Bronze Bay is Craig McDonald. That'll be our lady of carrying by. Thank you. He's probably got a slight lead here, Neil, yeah. over um, Sydney East is coming through. From Sydney East. Yeah, that'll be Lily Pilly. It's and coming through in lane five. So it's going to come on down to the, the last change. And it's uh, still Our Lady of Fatima carrying by. It's got a lead. And follow, being closely followed by Lily Pilly and Kalani Heights from Sydney North. And it's going to be at. Oh, this is going to be very, very close. Very close. I think Our Lady of Fatima carrying by has taken the title in 58-82 and they have come in ahead of Kalani Heights, Sydney North and Lily Pilly, Sydney East. So there are three place getters, Neil. Three place getters. And congratulations to Nathan, our co-commentator, who's uh, a mentor for students at the LA Fatima Coming Bar as an ex-student. And I might just hand over to Nathan to take you through these final relay teams. The premier commentator in public school and all schools in New South Wales. Ladies and gentlemen, I draw your attention to the presentation area where we're about to award medals to the place getters in the 12 to 13 years girls high jump event. Our bronze medalist from Russell Lee with a jump of 1.45 metres, Isla Scully. 
as we prepare for the boys' uh, Our eight to ten years. 104 by 100 meter relay. Oh, we'll go through the list. And in lane one, we have St. Joseph's and from Weewar. Lane two, Harrington Park, Sydney South West. Lane three, Holy Family Menai. Lane four, Shaw Preparatory College. CIS, Lane 5, Annandale North, Sydney East, Lane 6, Bargala Heights, Sydney North, Lane 7, Arambi Heights, Sydney North, Lane 8, Scots College, CIS, Lane 9, Beaumont Hills, Sydney West. Sorry about that, I've, apparently my chin was in the way. On the screen now, we've got the boys down the marshalling tent. At this point in time, we've got a number of presentations going on down on the podium. Ladies and gentlemen, I draw your attention to the presentation area where we are about to present medals to the place getters in the 11 year girls 100 metre final. In third position from Eastwood, representing Sydney North, Essie Lane. Our silver medalist was Holly Braddock from Milton, representing the South Coast, and our gold medalist. And New South Wales champion for 2023. So, so middle presentations continue here for the 100 metres. We've got so our junior boys relay. We've actually got Balgola boy, the Balgola Heights Sydney North, who are the Balgola Heights Sydney North, who were second fastest qualifiers through to this final, and they were third last year in this age group. So obviously, if I reckon a couple of them young, unless they just continue to bring quality sprinters through their ranks and the juniors 55 one five the record as well held by Epping West Sydney North back in 1995 very prestigious to get an individual state title in any sport but as a team it means so much more as we've seen as the athletes have been introduced by our stadium announcer here the cheers They've been loud and they're going to get even louder once the gun goes here. For the junior boys final, four by one. So underway from the inside, St. Joseph's Weewa, Harrington Park, Holy Family, Medi Shore Prep, Annandale North. And we've got Balgola, Balgola Heights, Alambi Heights, Scots College, Beaumont Hills on the outside. Looks to be a pretty good start by the City North team, Balgola Heights. We said they were bronze medalists last year. They're in a good position here as they head down close between Scots College and Blomont Hills as well as they battle it out on the outside of the track. Coming through as well. In fact, it's so close there between both City North, Balgola Heights and um, Scots College and Alambi Heights up there as well was the other Sydney North team into the final change now the junior boys state title on the line here and they're pretty much in sync the two Sydney North teams with just getting the edge here Balgola Heights here trying to be chased down by the Sydney East team Annandale North also short prep of CIS but the Sydney North team of Balgola Heights are the champions of New South Wales for the junior boys event 56 82, that's a quick time. That is quick. Quick time, he's taken half a second off his previous run from the semi-final in the 4 by 100 metre relay. In the Junior Boys Championship, as we have a look at the replay here, and Balgola Heights, strong running, close for second. And all the way, really. It's a very good race all, all round. And we now move to the... Uh, A mixed relay. Of course, we have the Nigel Bagley Trophy for the 8s to 13s, 4 by 100 So our next event is the final of the Nigel Bagley Trophy. And these are for the schools with a, a, 
enrolment of between 25 and 54. In lane one, we've got St. Joseph's of Merriwa. Lane two, Laguna Hunter. Lane three, Spring Hill Western. Lane four, Moringo Riverina. Lane five, Kalangi North Coast. Lane six, St. Joseph Barbara. Baraba, sorry. Uh, Polding. Lane seven, Canaba North Coast. Lane eight, Galgali Riverina. Lane nine, Marlinda Hunter. So they will move out and take the position from the track. And the record is held by Gerildery from the Riverina at a time of 54.48, set in 2009. Yeah, Matty McWilliams here. I think the one we picked as first, even with the slow motion replay, was actually seconds in this. Oh, right. With his 12 years girls. Oh, that was the one that was the... Uh, yep. We were wondering who they all finished, so that was a great race. Sophie Housen there. Yeah, she did. How close was that? Well done. So the mixed for one 100 metre Bagley Trophy. Four by 100, Nigel Bagley relay in lane one. See has been introduced to the crowd here at the Sydney Olympic Park Athletic Centre. The final for the mixed 8 to 13 years, 4 by 100 metre relay Bagley Trophy. The record, Gerildery of Riverina Region back in 2009 with a time of 54-48. Just about to go here for another gold medal opportunity for these small schools across the state. Underway here, just a little bit jumpy. Be called back. As we said, a lot of these athletes competing here for the first time at the Sydney Olympic Park Athletic Centre, so I understand they're a little bit nervous, but we'll have a go at a second attempt. So underway from the inside, St. Joseph's, Laguna, Spring Hill, Maringo, Karangi, St. Joseph's, Kaniaba, Gulgawi and Murrarindi on the outside. Gulgawi has moved their way up to the inside of Murrarindi there. It's a great start by the Riverina team. They've been strong in the semi-finals here and they are showing a very strong performance so far in the first two legs here. And on the inside as well, Maringo, Riverina, could they possibly go 1-2 here? The polling team, St. Joseph's. Barabra as well in the middle of them there. Probably the next of the challenges as well as coming up at the North Coast team in the green. Right in the mix here. But on the inside, Maringo of Riverina. They get out the upper hand here. If they can hold their momentum through this final change, they do. And they've got a good buffer zone at the moment. The North Coast team, Karangi, watch out for them as they try and storm home and Really close this gap. It's going to be tight on the line, I reckon, between Maringo and Karangi. Karangi, oh my gosh, he's done it. He's done it. And the man from the outside, Gilgawi, I thought it'd be the other Riverina team, get through. But Gilgawi will get second. Maringo, they held on for third there? Wow. 58, 21. I think they have. Well, that had a few changes in. Let's have a look at the replay. We need the Karangi. replay for that one, for sure. Karangi just getting oh. through. He held his form under pressure and delivered that gold medal for his school. Oh, and then got third. Which one, one, you reckon? The Riverina? Yeah, three. Number three. Wow. Very, very impressive. Next final will be the Norman, Norman and Elizabeth Austin Trophy for schools of a maximum of 25 students. 
Just doing a little bit of repairs to the podium down here because we've had that rain, as you know, during the day. Uh, and we've got a proud Tongan going up there. To receive his uh, uh, medal. Now, our next event will be the Norman Austin uh, Trophy. And we have in lane one, Boomai from Northwest. Lane two, Gravesend Northwest. Lane three, Herons Creek North Coast. Lane four, North Star Northwest. Lane five, Corndor, Corndale North Coast. Lane six, Binya Riverina. Lane seven, Tarabagan from Riverina. Lane eight, Kang Kangaloo Ladies South and Coast. And lane nine, Trunky Western. Where we are about to present medals to the place getters in the 12-13 boys discus. Our bronze medalist from Excelsior is Hayden Free. Our silver medalist with a throw of 41.69 from Maluri. New South Wales pit on the stage the championships continues to deliver. We've seen some fantastic performances. Stay with us till the end of the live stream as we broadcast to the rest of the action. It looks like the field is pretty much all wrapped up except one more long jump on the back straight here. Those events are done. State champions have been decided. The top three to make it through to the New South Wales team and the School Sport Australia Championships in Tasmania have been decided. These three boys will be on the plane as well. Could we have a golden team manager to the finish line, please? And the Austin... 4x100 metre relay trophy mixed 8 to 13 year olds bringing whole schools together fast qualifier through Binya Riverina Riverina have they always been strong in these small schools trophy events yep, yep. they have yeah, because of their uh, not remoteness but the, the number of little, little rural towns down there um, and they've always uh, competed very strongly at this event, in those events. North Coast predominantly in the small schools you get in the swimming. Yep. There you go, the athletes getting... Introduced to the crowd here, which is still quite strong in numbers, considering we are at the end of the program, but we do love relay time. Just about set. The Austin Trophy. Called up again. We'll reset a second time. In a way, so Boomy on the inside, then Graveson next out from them. Herons Creek, North Star, Corndale, Binya, Thabagang, Kangaloon, and Trunky on the outside. Pretty close to you, as expected. The South Coast team, Kangaloon, have got away pretty well. Western, a little bit of work to do there. The Trunky team, the Riverina team, and Northwest. It might be North Star here. It North is. Star. North Star absolutely flying here along the back straight. Their female competitor really turning the afterburners on here into the second change. They're pretty smooth. Riverina as well in Binya moving quite well. And the South Coast team, Kangaloon on the outside, is still holding a position here that might give themselves a chance for the Austin Trophy and the gold medal here. And they're into the final change in first position. Can the man from the Riverina run them down here into the straight? It's going to be a close one oh, between Kangaloon and also Binya here. Binya trying to close. Kangaloon, she's still going to push on. She is. She's held on brilliantly. North Star will get third. They set it up quite well in the first two legs. And uh, Corndale there, North Coast, right up in the mix for the Austin Trophy Championship of New South Wales here. The mixed 8-13, 4 by 100 metres. Great racing.
There'll be celebrations in Ka- at Kangaloon tomorrow, I'm sure. Where is Kangaloon? I need to know. I'm Googling it right now. South Coast, I believe it's in the... Um, I've learnt that's what's so great about this event as well and how truly statewide it is. There's a lot of geographical regions and places that I need to look up. It's a village in the Southern Highlands. Southern Highlands, of course. Population of 151. 151. 151 people. So yeah, there might be 151 people having a nice party. They might. They might recruit a few new people to the area after that yeah. incredible performance there. Hang it tough. It must be hard knowing that you're being charged down from behind. Yeah, but they did a great job. Held on beautifully. We now come to our penultimate track event for the 2023 New South Wales Primary School Sports Association. Athletics Championship, and that event will feature Russell Lee in Lane One from Sydney East, Lane Two Warrington County, Sydney Southwest, Lane Three Our Lady of the Sacred Heart, Ramwick, McKillop, Lane Four Milton, Lane Five St Catharines, Lane Six Ramwick Sydney East, Lane Seven Borkham Hills North, Lane nine, Eight St Augustine's Coffs Harbour, and Lane Nine Belmont. Christian School. The record is 53-28, was set in 1997, and it was held by Aladala on the south coast. While we're waiting for this, uh, the girls to be called to the start, could I take this opportunity to thank all the viewers? I hope you have enjoyed our coverage. We have two more races. We do have the long jump still going, and a number of presentations. But thank all the viewers for your attendance. I'd like to thank on behalf of the Department of Education and Training the teacher and officials who have worked out here for the last two days and those who have worked for quite a few months to put the event together. And I'd also like to congratulate all those students who have been selected in the New South Wales Primary School Sports Association team to go to uh, Tasmania in early next month. And most of all, I'd like to thank the competitors of the 2023 New South Wales Primary School Sports uh, Sports Association Athletic Championship. I'll hand you over to Nathan. So, most of these girls in their last year of high school, some of them will have one primary more opportunity school. next of primary school, and the next opportunity is here for the gold medal. So Russell Lee on the inside at Warrington County, a lady of sacred heart, Milton, St. Catharines, Ramwick, Balcom Hills, and also St. Augustine's, Coffs Harbour, Belmont on the outside as well. Belmont holding their stagger quite well at the present moment, and also Ramwick of Sydney East, pretty strong in the semi, St. Catharines of CIS, the inside Milton Public School. Milton just biding their time, I reckon they're waiting, and they're going to surge here to hold the momentum they do. Sydney East team just getting caught up a tiny bit there, Ramwick. Opening the door. St. Catharines are right there in the pole position on the outside as well. Balcom Hills North. Watch out for them. They've made up the stagger even though they're on the outside lane. So it's the CIS team, St. Catharines, as they push forward on the outside. Belmont, also of CIS, trying to come through here. St. Catharines, we know how strong they've been in the juniors. And they have put a dominant display here to win. Close to the second. Belmont maybe just edging out the Sydney West team there. Balcom Hills and also... South Coast team of Milton. They're happy with that. The Belmont team, but it's St. Catharines with the gold medal. 55-0-1 for the 4x100 metre relay championship of New South Wales here for the PWC state titles. What a very, very good event. That was... And we come to our last event. And before I do uh, read out the list, I'd like to thank my co-commentators, Mr Grant Parker Ladies and Mr and Nathan Breen, and the guest spot the commentator, area, Curtis Stone. Curtis Smith, with my apologies. <laughs> Curtis Smith. Curtis Stone was coming, but Curtis Smith came in his place. Uh, for their work over the last two days, it's been an absolute pleasure to, again to work with them. And we hope 
do hope you continue to support New South Wales PWSA through the live streaming. In the last event of the day, we've got the boys senior 4x100 metre relay. We have St Matthews from Mudgee in lane one, Winston Hills lane two, Newington lane three, four Scots College, five St Ignatius, six St Pius X, seven St Augustine Brook Park, and eight St Columbia Hills, Coromel, and Our Lady of the Angel, Rouse Hill. So we wish them all the very best. Who knows, uh, out of this event in 10 years' time, we may see some Australian athletes performing at the very highest level. Uh, let's hope so. And at the very least, some fond memories to continue their school career, their sporting career, whatever their ambitions may be in the sporting, academic, cultural, whatever pursue, whatever they decide to pursue throughout their the rest of their primary and high school career. New South Wales PWSA Championships has been a memorable one for all involved in 2023 and has been for many, many years. And here we go, not far away from the final event of the track to conclude the PWSA State Championships for 2023. 2019, the records in Edwards Tamworth in Polding Region, 51 45. Three CIS teams right next to each other here. Lanes four, five, and six. Scott, St. Ignatius, and St. Pius the Tenth in four, five, and six. Our Catholic Regents on the outside as well. St. Matthews in Mudgee in lane one. St. Columbikes in Coromel in lane eight. And our Lady of Angels, Rouse Hill, I think, there in McKillop on the outside. And we've got Sydney West represented by Winston Hills in two. Newington in three for Sydney East. Passes through the heats with St Ignatius. CIS, they were very, oh, through the semis, my apologies, and they were very quick, 52-77. Next fastest with about half a second behind with the Scots College. St Pius X, third fastest, I believe, through with 53-79. And they're called to their marks here in the final event, the New South Wales PWSA Championships, the Senior Boys 4x100 metre relay final. So underway, pretty quick reaction there by a lady of Angels, Rouse Hill on the outside. McKillop probably just jumped the best. The CIS team, St. Pius X, was moving quite well as well, trying to chase down our two McKillop teams and make up the stack of St. Augustine's Brookvale in polding colours are motoring along the back straight with precision into this second change. Can they hold this speed that they've set so relentlessly in the first two legs? They can at the moment. Can they still hold it here? All the CIS teams are in contention. Scott St. Ignatius and St. Pius X. And the McKillop team not far out of the picture. But it's a battle between Polding and CIS here. St. Augustine's Brookvale. They weren't the fastest qualifier in. They're holding the position. Now on the inside comes Scott's College. Even quicker St. Ignatius here as they power through to the line. Taking the win is St. Ignatius College. St. Ignatius 52-66 the time. Quicker than their semi by 11 one hundredths of a second. And they will be the final state champions on the track at PWSA for 2023. Neil, what a way to finish the program. What a way to finish the program. Great race and a great, uh, a great event. And thank you again, Nathan, for your expertise, your knowledge and your calling. To Peter Carty and Andrew Smith, congratulations on a, a terrific event. Uh, let's have created a lot of memories for a lot of people thank you once again for joining us on the live stream I believe they're going to keep recording or showing you the presentations but from myself 
thank you for your viewing and attendance and we wish you well and I hope if you're all seeing your, one of your children, one of your classmates or one of your grandchildren compete, make sure you congratulate them. Thank you. Goodbye. Ladies and gentlemen, I draw your attention to the presentation area where we are about to award medals to the place getters in the Nigel Bagby Trophy 4x100 metre relay final. We'd also like to thank once again Cathy Sample, gold and silver Commonwealth Games medalist and Olympian in the 4x100 metre relay for making the presentations. Our silver medalists, our bronze medalists representing the Riverina is the team from Maringo. Our silver medalists, also from the Riverina, is the team representing Gugawi. And our PWSA champions for 2023, representing the North Coast, please congratulate the team from Karangi. Ladies and gentlemen, I draw your attention to the presentation area where we are about to award medals to the place getters in the Norm and Elizabeth Austin Small Schools Trophy for a 100 metre relay final. Our bronze medalists, our bronze medalists representing the North West, please congratulate the team from North Star.
our silver medalists from the Riverina. More congratulations for the team representing from Binya. And our three WSA champions for 2023, representing the South Coast and gold medalists. Please, a huge congratulations for the team from Kangaroo. In the presentation area, we are about to award medals for the place getters in the senior girls 4x100 metre relay final. Our bronze medalists representing Sydney West is the team from Berkham Hills North. Our silver medalists representing CIS is the team from Belmont Christian College. And our PWSA champions for 2023, the team representing CIS, please congratulate our gold medalist, St Catherine. Just a message for all, any 100 metre runners that are still in the venue that haven't been to the sizing room. It is vitally important that you get there before you leave today. So if you are still at the venue and you haven't been to that sizing room, please make it a priority to get there straight away. Thank you.
In the presentation area, we have the medal winners for the Junior Girls Long Jump. Our bronze medalist from Lake Mamora with a jump of 4.01 is Rain Ross. Our silver medalist from Barawa with a jump of 4.20 metres is Evie Moore Mulcahy. And our gold medalist from Wilton and PWSA champion with a winning distance of 4.25. Please congratulate Harlow Party. In the presentation area, we have the medal winners for the senior boys four by 100 metre relay final. And we want the medals to be presented by Cathy Samble. We thank her very much for her attendance this afternoon. Our bronze medalists from St. are from St. Augustine's Brookvale. Silver medalists representing CIS are from Scots College. And our gold medalists and New South Wales champions for 2023 representing CIS, please congratulate the team from St. Ignatius.
We need a Sydney North team manager to the finish line immediately, please. In the presentation area we've got a couple of special presentations to make so we appreciate for all those people that have hung around to see these presentations the first one is the colgate cup the colgate cup is given for the outstanding school of the meet and in 2023 the outstanding school from sydney north is the school from carrying carry on Carry on, and it is being accepted by the Sydney North Sea managers who will pass that on to Carry On. Carry On scored 72 points and were four points clear of St Aloysius Chisholm. And our final presentation and a very, very important and special one is the presentation to the athlete of the meet. So we would um, ask Harlo Pati to make the to make her way to the dais. Harlow is the recipient of the Queen Elizabeth II trophy for the champion athlete of the meets. Huge round of applause for Harlow. Thank you. 